45 seconds. Thirty seconds. The show will start in fifteen seconds, and this is your last audible warning. There's a lot of people speculating that indeed the interpreter might be falling on the sword right now because it really is Otani. And if that's the case, I think Major League Baseball will get down. They'll they'll drill down and be able to find it. Oh, no, 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 Bubba. It'll be like the Michael Jordan thing yep. from back in the day. We went to play baseball. For real. Otani's going to go to the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening, You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. <laughs> Broadcast rights for the Bubba the Love Sponge Show have been granted to this station by the Bubba Radio Network and is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this production without the express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. I feel like we need something a little more high energy than this. This royalty free? Yeah, this really sucks, but... If I quickly get rid of it and we're like, here, hey, how are you? Oh, my hydrogen, my hydrogen water. My is water it, is, is it now hydrogen. My, my water is now hydrogenated. And I, I know the merch creek is upstairs and I left something in my truck that I'm trying to get a hold of her, but she doesn't have her phone on herself. I know that she's doing some stuff around here. I wish she would check her text. She's out in the rain <laughs> moving boxes and stuff. Well, she just ran out to uh, get the second trash can out there in time. Right. She was talking to the trash guy. Jesus, yeah. everybody's levels are crazy. <clears throat> uh, Lummy, do you have a... Anyway, Merch Crick, if you got your headphones on, you're... can you look at can you look at your text? Because uh, there's something that I, ha- that I have left... Uh, that I need very and and I don't want you to bring it into the studio. Just I'll do it between breaks. I might do a quick break. Let me hear like at fifteen. Oh, okay. Or something like that because uh, there's something that I'm I, I need that I forgot and she can get for me. But it would all start and stop with her, you know, having her phone on her. She's the flightiest bitch ever. She like just put her phone down like you know how many times in a day. <laughs> I mean seriously, at, at least five times a day. She's looking for her phone. Oh, no. She's like, can you call my phone? I lost it again. I'm like, oh, that pisses me off. I think it's because she's doing a million things for you at once, isn't it? Why? Well, well, oh, sorry. No, she's to have eight arms, but that's all well, right. No, she, you're right. She is. But fundamentally, I mean, don't, don't do, are you detached from your phone for long periods of time? Me? Yeah. Um, Not really, but sometimes I don't know where it is, but that's mostly because of my poor eyesight. <laughs> or 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 some some other some other situation. I'm surprised she doesn't do it like a lot of girls do. Uh, they put it between their cleavage. She's got plenty of room. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, it'll hold it. That's what some, I mean, that's what, lot of, that's what a lot of girls are doing these days. Right. Even I can do that. You yeah, can. You really? Well, I mean, well, I mean, I put it like in the bra. My boobs uh, just happen to be in there with it. Yeah, so. I mean, it's, 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 your, it's your bra. It's like two peas in a gallon jug. <laughs> like a sports bra, I can just dump a lot of things in there. Right, there's plenty of space. Let me, do, you, do you have the official roster? Uh, uh, yes, I do. For Bubba 199? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Little Wilbur's Afterbirth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big Red, not a fan. Susan Poitras, Tease, Fish on Jay. Cracker Chris, Mitch the Mark, Mushroom Mitch, Maria Guatemala, no name Willie. Now is Maria Guatemala showing the under under boob? Oh yeah. Okay, she's bringing the under boob. Oh, of course. Okay. Uh, uh, Bob Cook. Right. The Nashes, and Big Country. Big Country. Who yes. else? I was going to think. Who else? Oh, and Crete and Travis is. I, I think it's still fifty fifty. Still fifty yep. fifty. All right. I think Thanks. your lady has arrived. Well, no, I told. Uh, she didn't even hear what I said. Oh, you want me to? I keep it in the kitchen, and I'll get it. I'll get it in, in between breaks. 
<laughs> now, Dan, does that frustrate you when you directly tell somebody to do something and then they do it, but they don't do it the way you, like, I don't know. You, I get it. You I were spared. It. Yeah. What I'm saying okay. is like, I didn't want her coming into the studio and disrupting the show. I think that I did say, I think I did. You did. Early put break? It, put it in the kitchen. I'll get it in an early break. Did I think? Yeah, you did. You're going to break it at 6.15. So... Then you started calling her a flighty bitch, so maybe she missed, like, maybe she forgot what you said. Shut and up, like, Seth. I gotta get this in the studio. Talking about ASAP. flighty bitches. ASAP. Talking about flighty bitches, way to pop in. Uh, let me, were there any upsets uh, on March Madness yesterday? Yes, yes. yes. So, yeah, it was really exciting. Oakland, uh, Oakland beat Kentucky. Brigham Young lost. Uh, Brigham Young lost to uh, Duquesne, I think it is. Yeah, the Dukes. But Oakland, I mean, Oakland was a 14 seed. Kentucky was a three seed, and uh, Oakland uh, beat him 80 to 76, which puts Calipari's job. Uh, he's he's on the hot seat. I think this is uh, his. It's like the second or third year in a row that they've lost in like the first one or two rounds. And, and since 2019, they've only won one NCAA tournament game. But wow. prior to that, though, oh yeah, well, I mean, he won. He'd, he'd won what like three championships. Yeah, he was he was dominating. Calamari Cal- or whatever the hell his name is. Calipari, Calipari. Yeah, he takes on all the one and done guys though. That's you know, that's his problem. All the guys that just are going to go to college for one year and then go pro, he takes them on, and sometimes it works. And, and, but it's yeah. not. But it's not his fault, right? Well, it's pro- the problem is the culture in college basketball is just like Seth's talking about. You know, there's a lot of guys that plan on pay- playing only one or two years, and it's hard to build. Do a they team. T- do they tell you that when you, when you're recruiting them? <sighs> yeah, they do. I mean, they know if uh, like, hey, you know, my plan is just like I have to play a year. What's the rule? One year, and and for no for football. Oh, two. Two. Yeah. Is that really the, the rule? Yeah. You have to be uh, in for two years. Well, I think they should. Don't you think that uniformly, since you're sanctioned under the same governing body, the NCAA, right? They sanction football and basketball, right? There's not a different sanctioning body for basketball than there is for football. I want to say it's an NFL rule. Well, okay. But what? A, well, yeah, it is an NFL. You're yeah. right, Lummy. They did the NFL said you have to at least have, I think, two years of college. But, All right. But and so you, the and so and so the NBA has said we don't care. Well, the NBA says you got to have a for a college, you got to have one year instead of getting them out of high school now. They have it's to have one year. Kobe and, Kobe came out of high school. Yeah. Daryl Dawkins came out of here high school. The LeBron, LeBron yeah. Kevin Garnett. Kevin Gart, yeah, yeah. There was like there was there's been like maybe ten total. I don't know. Well, there was a run for a while on a high school. Right. Can you imagine help. going right out of high school to the Lakers? Wow. I mean, yeah, that's crazy. what Kobe did. Did he not? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, LeBron did. I mean, LeBron was a, a superstar. Right they out were high televising his yeah. They were televising his high school games for several years. Well, um, Boston, when they knew they were going to have Larry Bird, because remember, they drafted Larry Bird, and then there was a rule back then mm-hmm. that you couldn't come out early. And so Larry went on and played. So the the Celtics actually dr- drafted Larry Bird like sixth overall in the 78 draft. And then he, knowing they had a, he had to play one more year at Indiana State, so Boston, all the Boston bars and all the, you know, they would actually play the Indiana State games you know, uh, at at their at Boston, you know, various sports bars and stuff to see what they had coming. So, you know, that was that that that's kind of the same thing of of the people of them televising Kobe's basketball games. I don't know if it's specifically in L. A. or not, but knowing that he's going to be the guy that's you know, well, I don't know well, that no, L- no, I, don't know the, I don't know that L. A. knew they were getting him. Did they? No, no, because he was, I think, a. F- well, wasn't he? he got drafted by Charlotte? He did, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. And, and they he traded the... Vladi. Didn't they trade Vladi? Yeah. Yep. Good now, LeBron. I, did you know, Seth? I met Vladi Divac. I really? met him. No. <laughs> when I was hanging out with Tony Smith, the the guard for uh, from Marquette that played for the the Lakers, I spoke about uh, you know knowing him and hanging out with him. I, I did that a few months ago. Well, Vladi was on the team at the time, and he was so co- he was so cool when I would go to the you know five or six practices that I went to. At the time, I think it was either Randy Fun or Dell. <clears throat> Dell some, Shrimpliff? I know. I forget. I think it was Randy Fun was the was the. And they sucked. They su- the Lakers sucked like ninety two, ninety three. They had James Worthy on the team. You I know, got, I got a picture with James Worthy. Nice. I think Vladi Divas used to like smoke cigarettes during halftime. And yeah, stuff. He, yeah. In the in the locker room. He did really? Yeah, I think yeah, so. he was just yeah, a little Serbian. Uh, well, not little. He's seven one, but. <laughs> 
he, yeah, that, he really didn't. Was he that good? Yeah, he was good. Yeah, he actually was. Was he good enough to trade the number one pick in Kobe for him? I don't mean. Well, well no, I think I, they flopped their first round. But whoever Charlotte took in the first round, I think they 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 swapped it. Yeah, they did. But it was like yeah, the sixth pick or the eighth pick. LeBron now, LeBron was different. He was the number one pick to Cleveland. He's from Ohio, so they used to watch the uh, his high school games. Oh yeah, because they knew they were going to take him number one. Now the who came in, who arguably from the NBA came in from out of high school and was the most successful. Would it be either Kobe or LeBron? Probably LeBron. No, LeBron, because uh, Kobe, Kobe's first two years, he was kind of just the little guy behind Shaq. Yeah, well, I mean, I, even Kevin Garnett was. Uh, Kevin Garnett had a huge impact back then too. Didn't the guy from? Um, from Day- Daytona, there's a school over in Daytona. Yeah, uh, and, Vince Carter. Yeah, Vince Carter. Yeah. Did he come out of he high school? He went to Carolina. Oh, he yeah. went to Carolina. Okay. Did you see where? I don't know. This was if this was news a few weeks ago. No, I'm, I think I'm thinking about a week ago, where Michigan finally uh, fired Jawan Howard. Yeah. You know, uh, he. I guess. I guess the team had just pretty much. Get, he came in to Michigan. Well, he was part of the Fab Five, right? They yeah. won, didn't they win back to backs? Uh, no, they lost. Uh, they lost uh, the one because of the timeout. Yeah, Chris Webber's uh, technical timeout. All right, yes. but they but they yes, did win two, uh, two out of the four years or five years. The Fab Five were there. I think they won. They picked off two. Did they not? Mm, did they, well, win, they were dominating. They, they were a great team. Did yeah. they win one or two national championships? I believe they only won one. Oh, okay. But they, they, anyway, Jawan yeah. jo- and jo- Jawan Howard didn't he go on to have a pretty good NBA career? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then Michigan, I don't know that, was Michigan his head, and that, of course, that's where he played, part of the Fab Five. Was he? Was that his first uh, head coaching experience, or did he, you know, go, a lot of times they won't, you know, just hire you in a Power Five school based on what you did for them, you know, back in the day. You, right, you, just you, like Dion. Like, they didn't just hire him at Florida. You no, know what no, I mean? Yeah, you had to like, earn some, ch- earn some chops. Yeah, you had to go, you had to, go to Jackson, Jackson State. For a couple years, and, uh, Jawan pretty much was like a BS a sh- coach on uh, the Miami Heat. Oh, okay. And then uh, they hired him at Michigan in 2019. And, and, then, and then he went on and had a couple 20 year, 20 win seasons. And then he went on and, and I think the last, <clears throat> I think since he beat, he hit the University of Wisconsin uh, coach. Yeah, I think it's been all downhill since then. It has. They gave him a contract extension uh, in 2021 for five years. And then that altercation in 2022 with the Wisconsin uh, coach, it was pretty much downhill after that. Yeah, he's done. Does Indiana have much of a – that's, of course, my favorite. I don't keep up on, on college basketball near like I should, but does Indiana – have they turned their program around at no, all? No. And, and, for, and for years I couldn't understand why they didn't ever bring in Steve Alford. You know, Alford went from playing to his first very, 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 very first uh, coaching job, Steve Alford. The great, you know, point guard that played for Bob Knight. I don't know that Steve Alford had much of an NBA career. I don't think he did. I, I think he played like three or four years. Was kind of a little bit of a journeyman. Didn't really have much of an impact. But he was, you know, he was all world in college and from from Indiana. Former Indiana Mister Basketball. And his first job as a coach was a, a, a little you know, like NAIA Division, you know, three. A school called Manchester, which is only like 20 miles from Warsaw, and he came in there, formerly from you know just just got out of the NBA and came there, and I think won like three or four national championships. Really, just with fundamental, you know, old school Indiana Indiana basketball, and then let me from there, I think he went to Southwest Missouri State. Yes, yeah, he did. God, I'm about to. I know. I'm Seth, are you a little, are you little impressed about the, my knowledge uh, here? Steve Alford? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Once, what, we got, are we trying to find a Steve uh, Alford rookie card? Um, we are now, absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, from there, let me. I think he went to New Mexico. Uh, no, no, Iowa first. Oh, he, he, he was went, at Iowa for a while. So he went to from Manchester to Southwest Missouri State to yep. Iowa yep. to I think I think that's when he went to New Mexico. Correct. Then from there he got his big opportunity at UCLA. Yep. And, and didn't do that well at UCLA. No. And then from there, I think he, I don't know where he went from UCLA. He's, he, he went to uh, Nevada, which he's still at Nevada. University, hold on. Is it UNLV or is it UNLV Reno? I think it's UNLV Reno. It is, yes. You it's are not correct. even UNLV. It's UN, it's UNLV Reno. Jobber. Yeah, Reno. So, you know, 
I don't I don't know why I, I for the life of me I don't know why Indiana never brought him back. He's from the Bob Knight era. You know, he was, you know, one of arguably I don't know if he's on the Mount Rushmore of Indiana basketball, but he's certainly up there. Is he old school? They're looking for woke coaches. I I mean, is that the problem that you get a guy that's like you're used to like really like accountability? And do you got to coach woke now? I mean, do you got? Oh yeah. I mean, do you? Uh, I don't, but most people have to because ain't nobody paying me. uh, Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I mean, you you got? Do you got it? I don't think Dion coaches woke, does he? Um, I think he's one of the few that's creating away with it still because again. I, I think there's a different dynamic with an African American healthy young coach versus like an old fat white guy. And so I think a Bruce Arians versus a Dion to a college kid has to coach differently. Yeah, you know what I agree. Well, I don't know though, Nick but Saban. Bruce Arians in particular I think was a bad example to use there for the point you're trying to yeah. make. Well Nick Nick Saban Nick Saban went in front of a uh, Congress and one reason why he no longer coaches is because the NIL deals. And he said pretty much kids don't care about winning or losing. You know, yeah, they just I, care about I, where they're getting paid the most. Yep. Yeah, I saw that. I saw his testimony. It's like the game has changed and it's not the game that I can coach anymore. Something like that. Like, you know, yeah. like you can't. I don't, I don't know if you can get on a guy and say, hey, I don't know if you can grab a guy by the face mask at practice and tell him that he's a no good piece of shiz no, it's for, jumping off, for jumping off line, yeah. offside uh, during a you know a seven on seven drill, and everybody now has to do push ups. I, I don't know that you can do that anymore. <laughs> no, you know, but that's, well, that's one reason that the NCAA, the tournament's so fun because it's these smaller schools with the upsets against these big schools because the, the guys are, you know, they, they're working harder, and they've been uh, together for four years, and they got that team chemistry where, like, Kentucky, the one and dones. I mean, they're just all guys that are just looking to get out of here in one year. I, I really think the NBA needs to come up come up with a – I think the NBA and the NFL needs to be kind of on the same page with regards to how many years – you have to spend in college because then, because then it helps the coaches determine. I mean, if you're the guy from Kentucky and you're the king of one and dones, when you're, and you know, it, it, it changes your dynamic of coaching, knowing that okay, I at least get two years out of this guy, not one, right? I mean, you know, yeah, but should they have to go to college at all? I mean, should that be a mandate? I mean, seriously, if you want the best athletes in the NBA or the NFL, why should they have to go to college? They don't in baseball. I mean, they don't in some a lot of other sports. I mean, why, why make it mandated? I, I mean, I think I mean I think you make some some good sense in the fact that I mean, if we're just the product was really bad when they were letting people come in right out of high school. Yeah, th- in the early two thousands, it was like everybody and those kids were pretty much getting what five, six, seven million, and then just flaming out after a couple years. So was it more Seth of the the, the NBA was kind of on, on, on spiraling down and they're like, listen, we need some fresh face superstars in here. One of one or two of these kids might hit, which could maybe put some more enthusiasm back into our league. You I just know? I just think going to a year of whether they're doing it international, whether they're playing in the G League, whether they're playing in college, I just think the extra year. Really, I don't. I, I think it gives them just a, a little bit more maturity, a little bit more development, and helps the NBA. A lot of these, still, a lot of these rookies, unless you're like Wemby or like Chet Holmgren, like a lot of these guys don't come in right away and make a huge impact. Some of them have to work up to it. So. Yeah, it allows you to level out just the, I guess, the expectations for these kids. You talked earlier about the history of like guys straight out of high school coming into the league and playing beyond expectations. I don't know if Kobe Bryant had expectations like that headed into the league. I was not alive. But I think LeBron James is the only player in modern history to face the expectations that he did coming out of high school and, and then exceed it. all of them. And nail it. Right. Yeah. Like, he's still doing great. Yeah, they knew he was special. Yeah. I mean, it's Howard Dupree. And poor Kobe Bryant. Poor guy. I know. It's, it's, okay. Uh, well, I know. But <laughs> okay. just, Got caught. It's even, it's even just, it's like you can't even wrap your head around the fact that he's not here. He's gone. Mm. Right? Yeah. Complete pilot air, too. I think I think uh, didn't didn't I think we have an article from a few days ago that his parents are eBaying or or I think maybe a professional auction house uh, one of his championship rings and a bunch of people are mad about it saying that you know maybe his wife should I think his wife is so set up that that you know I don't know what that ring would bring the wife or, and his parents don't get along yeah they, yeah, they, they never would, have which is a shame because you know I'm sure Kobe had he known this would happen would have set up something a little differently so that the estate specifically included his parents you don't think about your parents in your estate because most kids don't die before the parents yeah so you're right he so, didn't have it set up correctly and had he known that his wife was going to be a bitch to his oh. own mom 
Um, and I don't he would have given her a lot of money in the estate. I don't think it's a situation of his wife being a bitch. I think his parents hated Vanessa, from what I understand. That's kind of the what happened, well, uh, Brian, and that's what caused them to fall out with each other. Well, Vanessa didn't include the parents in the memorial speech they did for Kobe. And a couple of years ago, there was a similar story where they had a big dust up because his parents have previously tried to auction off his stuff. Yeah, in 2013. So Kobe knew that they were try- they were trying to sell this they ring. Yeah, I think yeah, they I think Kobe along was for a very I, very long. I think time. Kobe was alive and and kind of caught him s- selling some of his stuff back yeah. in the day. It, it's also. Just to clarify, the ring that is being listed by his parents is not the actual championship ring. It's one that he had made for his dad. All right. So it's like one of those, like, Dan, you know that, like, when the Bucks won the Super Bowl yeah. a couple different times, they make X amount for players and immediate, you know, immediate Staff. faculty of, this, of the team. The people that travel. Do- doctors. Mostly. You know, uh, assistant coaches. Right. People uh, on the sidelines and the people that travel. Head trainer, strength and conditioning coach, you know, the doctor, which is your dad. Those guys, those people, would call those player rings. There is a certain amount of those. And then they have, then they downstep it a little bit, and the ring's not quite as big. Well, he just ordered an extra coffee, so it's the same exact ring as his ring. Oh, it is? He just got an extra coffee for his dad, who, who did play in the NBA. Yep. His dad played in the NBA? Yeah, yeah, from 1975 to 1983. Joe Jellybean yeah. Bryant. He yeah. averaged 8.7 per game. <laughs> Who'd he play Why with? Jelly Bean? Who'd he play with? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Wow. I, I, I never, I never, I, I never knew that. Nice nickname, Jelly Bean. <laughs> yeah, why is that? No. Because he, like, he, he played jump. for the 76ers, for, uh, like okay. the yeah. 76ers, San Diego Clippers, and the Houston Rockets. And when you when somebody calls you a jelly bean, what 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 are they saying? Yeah. yeah I'm mean, like, really you know, sure you're colorful. Like if, when, they, when, they, when they called Kobe Black Mamba, you knew that that was because the you're black- like a deadly the, snake. Well, the Black Mamba is yeah. arguably one of the most, you're right, one of the most deadly snakes there is. So when the <laughs> Kobe, the Black Mamba, got the ball, bitch, you know, it, they had some problems. Yeah. You know, that I, chambermaid you, knew about you, the Black Mamba. You can understand what the black mama meant. It meant meant trouble. This guy's good. But when they call you jelly bean. Uh, Jelly bean on the court. You're like, what? What what do you mean I'm a jelly bean? You don't think it's just a name he got in the locker room? I I don't know. It's a play on his initials, JB, Joe Bryant. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, probably is. Wow. They're really hurting for names back then. <laughs> I mean, and I would be like, man. The name pool and was who, And who am I to sit here and say, now my name's got hit bubble the love sponge. I know. I mean, what does that mean? Am I a walking contraceptive? What? What? Stupidest name in the history of radio, for real. It probably really is. It's probably the dumbest name in the history of radio. You absorb the most. love. I mean, I can't. Can you think of anything dumber? Mm. I can't. Cowhead. <laughs> oh. Well, he retired that one. <laughs> if you want to deep dive into the Bubba the Love Sponge show from the past, go to bubbaarmyhq.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge show. We'll be back after these words. No, I'm good. I appreciate it. Thank you for including me, Lummy. I just thought With you'd... Dan's order? <laughs> well, Chet did say Dan said he would get one. I, I know, I know, I know. Idea that wanted one. No, I appreciate it. What is up, chat? What's up, Mindy's Mork? Yeah, the the mat. It looks good. What's up, Trickest of Knees? How are you doing? How is Sober Life treating you? Especially if you have a glute, if you have a glute machine to tie in your glutes. Very 
makes sense. It was funny, yesterday after physical therapy, my right shoulder was like jacked up, and my left shoulder had, had no exercise, and so it would have, it would have disturbed uh, Macho. My right shoulder was twice the size of my left shoulder. <laughs> your, symmetri your, your symmetry cream was messed up? Well, yeah, I just exercised my right shoulder for an hour at physical therapy with like th fucking two pound weights. <laughs> like such a cunt. It's getting better. It absolutely feels getting better. Good. I have hope. Really, I was, I was really depressed because I was like, I need fucking pressure. What's up, Gary Control? Big buck. Yinzer. Long with balls, divorce lawyer. Lummy. He's, He's not, not here, here, buddy. Is there anything I can do? No. Can I do it? No. It doesn't work. That's the ring I want to do, Jerry. The one he got after he blasted that chick in the ass. Oh, With his black mama. The one at the, where was hotel, it, Denver? Some hotel, oh, yeah, Colorado. Colorado, I think. Yeah. I remember looking that up. What's up, Doug? See you tonight, Fish on Jay. You will. Yes, you will. Yins are in Florida. Thank you. Oh, Yins are in Florida. Oh, my God. I showed my dad that ukulele, and he was fucking playing it. I got kind of an aggressive, um, just out of the nowhere blue message from Nava yesterday. What, I, I wasn't even asking her to, for any favors like I always do. What'd she, What'd she say? say? I thought she was straight into your back. Yeah, just a very aggressive. Yesterday at... 8.54, so she doesn't know my schedule, obviously. And she said, hey, bitch, I never knew your your sister was way cooler than you. <laughs> oh, my God. Just out of nowhere, like unsolicited. She must have called that or something like that. Yeah. She must have seen her. Seen it. We all went to brunch together. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, the brunch. And we had the best time. I don't know, Minnie's more. What's up, Dark Mask? Get the shots, the PRP shots. What? We seen tears. I was fucking, I got her what? Her, her pack. No, it's right. up. Giant. That's fine. Chop it up, Spice. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to take my other That ain't right. Oh, my God. Very much cat, right? Dude, you can't. There's ramps everywhere in the house. You can't. Really? Why would they fat up a cat like that? Or, I don't know. Or she just skinny. Or she gets her cat. Tara got mad so, at me. I'm just like, that cat ain't right. No, that cat ain't right. But it does. <laughs> that cat ain't right. That cat ain't right. That cat ain't right. It's got thyroid problems. Dude, like, dude, I've never seen a cat. That's like the fattest cat I've ever dude, seen. Dude, like, it is so, and that's like not even. Job of the cat. Good. Isn't it just lying yeah. down? Oh my God. That's like my, my, my six, 60 pound cat. It's so I'll, I'll be here early. So, okay. And it's not right. just a I don't need any, like, special treatment. I'll park anywhere. I just want to make sure. I'll put the caution tape all around it. What's going on? Man, man, man security. <laughs> I just I just was asking Lummy if there were to park tonight. He just said don't park across the street. You can park wherever you want. I was gonna turn off that? his spot. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I'm ready to have some F U fucking N, baby. Oh, wow. oh dear. No, I actually big time to bring this card to me. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Were you sleeping in and missed the first hour of the show? Don't worry. It's all at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Uh, tonight, Bubba 199, that'll be at 8 o'clock. That'll be visually seen on two different places. Rumble, 
And uh, is it Rumble and Twitch? Lovey? Rumble and Twitch. Yes. yes, Rumble and Twitch audibly. I'm sorry, visually, then audibly on Bubble Army HQ. Yep. And Seth is going to be here, and he's already uh, lined up some card trades. So I don't know. If, I think Little Purple Jersey or Marky Mark or Big Country. Know, Big Country. He's bringing his card collection and. Uh, it looks like Seth's li- using Bubba 199 as a card collection deal. Well, there's a there's a card show actually at the hotel over on, on the corner here. So I think we're going to hit that and then come to 199. Oh, nice. I mean, that is a rowdy night for me. So are you, uh, I'm working on that caution tape for you, boss. I was just, I asked, I just asked Lummy if they're, you know, where to park because I haven't come to a lot of these. And he's like, uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I put caution tape around an area so you can park. I was like, I don't need any special treatment. I just wanted to know if I'm going to get towed across the street. He's like, no, I'll make no, sure that I put the tape across, across the for you. street are super cool and we can find something for you. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, that big, the big, I well, know the big trailer out front stays Lummy. So, because we got to do something with it on Saturday. So yeah. we'll find a place for you. You're already getting anxiety on where to, where to park. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I mean, the fam. I mean, no, no, nobody that's attending 199 is worried about that at all. I know, except for you, right? Yes, that's yes, that's what makes me special, though. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, right. Um, Dan, uh, did I don't? I think that you may have seen video, but did you see? I I don't think you saw when we inflated the uh, Diaco Law Tarpon Mark ten thousand dollar cash cube. I don't think that you saw us inflate it. Did you? I didn't see you inflate it. I saw Merch Crick in there, you know, chasing dollars. Yeah, exactly. It looked fun. It looked fun. I was surprised. I didn't. I was expecting to see it. Yeah. So we're um, let me. We're you know we're fine. We're fine tuning it and yes. and fine tuning the. Uh, Diacolol Tarpon Mark uh, $10,000 cash cube. Uh, one, Dan, we're going to have to get some literature from Diacolol, you know, and maybe some literature from, Di- uh, you know, Diaco Plastic Surgery Center USA mm. uh, so that when we are, take this out in public, uh, since you guys are a major sponsor of it, we have something to hand to people right. so they can contact you. The other thing is, have you looked into the legalities or are we able to to throw a boob job in there or not? I think so, but you and I have to talk off air about the details of it. Okay, perfect. Can we get him a, like a cardboard cutout uh, for his for his uh, like handouts? What do you mean? Like get Doctor Dan as a cardboard cutout like sitting next there? to next to the cash machine? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think we should get actually get a cardboard cutout. Yes, perhaps of Dan, but maybe of you know a really. Hot well, like from Dan maybe, from 1989. No, no, no. I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking. Today's I was, I was yeah, thinking. Sucks. I was thinking about more Broken. of you know one of the most attractive females that he may have done a boob job on, maybe having her as a cardboard cutout like in a tank top. But I think that she may not want that. Like that girl may not want a cardboard cutout. It could be violating a HIPAA violation. Yeah, it would be you know without permission. But we maybe, maybe hey maybe we'll have the merch crick there working the in the booth you know wherever I go With she no goes bra. and so I can say hey listen you want to see you want to yes there is an eight thousand dollar boob job inside that the, uh, all those uh, those dollar bills and uh, it is the the boob job golden ticket and if you want to look at his work just look at those look at those knockers right there that's that's some of his work Uncle Eric two hundred dollars on the couch. <laughs> Thank you so much, Uncle Ari. Eric. Uh, Lummy, do we know if Venmo's working this morning? I have not got any anything I, from Venmo. I really don't know if I need to get lawyers involved with Venmo or what, because like they, I, I jumped through all the hoops. Uh, Lummy, uh, big buck. Uh, of course, you know, the big buck. $100 on the uh, PayPal. So right now we know that PayPal and Cash App do work uh, at the Bubba Army. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Big Buck. I don't know. We don't know that Venmo works. Venmo seems to be sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now, we are not, we don't have the ability to withdraw the cash yet. And, and I've been going around and around with these people, and they completely lie. And you like have they, a number now to call? No, you just I have. Let me, you found a number. Yeah, but it's like it's like a f- AI voice number. BS number. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no one to yell out? No, no there's so nobody to yell out, Dan. So let me, a couple things uh, that have really, really um, excited me, and that is as we are getting the Diacolol Tarpon Mark $10,000 cash cube ready to take out on the on the streets. Tarpon Mark? Uh, yeah, Tarpon Mark uh, threw in 5000 5, So, I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, unless you want to me give his money back and you guys give me all the ten, I, I thought maybe you guys didn't mind, wouldn't mind co-sponsoring it okay. with Tarpon Mark if it's fifty percent save, you know, value. I mean, mm -hmm. right? Or did did Tarpon giving away a ten thousand dollar fish fry? <laughs> what? Just curious. Because the, the the boob cube, you know. Uh, no, I don't think so at all. I don't, I don't think. I think that's a legitimate question. The C morning zoo. On I'll take it, but I'm just figuring out what would be a comparable, you know, golden ticket, a golden trout. You're, just, you're, you're further furthering, by, but to burying yourself. Three in a row. Tookie, 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 tookies are not disputable. Don't fight. When you get okay. one, just just right. just wear it. But I was actually asking a legitimate question. The Diaco, the Diaco Law, Tarpon Mark. I mean, like, what? What? What, what do you matter? I'm not mad. You got about top anything. billing. I'm playing. I'm you got playing. top billing. Ta just, Diaco Law. It's okay. The, the Diaco Law, Tarpon Mark, ten thousand dollar cash cube. Now, here's a couple of things that have happened since. Here's some things that have transpired since we blew that thing up here in the studio. People saw how cool it was, and when we do take it out for the first time, it's just not going to have ten thousand dollars cash in it. It might very well. Dan thinks that he might be able to throw a, a, a free boob job in there. for, And I'm sure that, that there's going to be some potentially qualifying factors for that. Yeah, be a girl. <laughs> you gotta, well, be kind of hot. I don't think you have to be a girl. Well, Dan. in this case, you do. Okay. I guess it's your, it's your, it's boob, my rules. It's your boob job, <laughs> right? So yeah. you can make it however you want it. Got to be, I would prefer, I, I'm thinking 18, 18 and over. No, a female. Or parental per permission. Right, all right. A female mm. with parental per permission or uh, over 18. Uh, now, Lummy, we've had a couple people step up. Mike's Lawnmower from Ocala. Yeah. They want to throw in like a $300 weed whacker. Nice. Ooh. So there'll be a weed whacker coupon in there, courtesy of Mike's Lawnmower. That's cool. And then, Lummy, we're trying to get a hold of the generator guys and throw in like a $2,000, one of those Generac quiet running generators in there. Yeah. Exactly. And so in the cash cube, the, a, a, the way it sits right now is. Ten thousand cash, uh, Dan. What does the average boob job retail? Eight grand. Eight ish. Yeah, an eight thousand dollar boob job. A two hundred dollar. What's a let me? What's a nice, really, really nice weed whacker? Or it's it's your choice, weed whacker or chainsaw. I mean, probably yeah, two three hundred bucks. Yeah, that, yeah, the three hundred bucks nowadays. Yeah. So your choice of weed whacker and or chainsaw. And then what's what's those generators cost? You know, twenty five hundred. Yeah, about that. Twenty five hundred uh, soft running generator, and anybody else that's got anything that they want to throw in there. I mean, if you're a dude and you're going to the Bucks game, Lummy, or you're let's say you're going to the USF Miami game, and you get uh, you know you stand in line at the uh, at at our little display there, uh, and you uh, you spin the prize. Well, first of all, you open up your phone and we're like, hey. Listen, in order to spin the prize wheel, you have to follow us on YouTube. So open up your YouTube. There you go. Search the Bub Army. There you go. Now hit subscribe and get a notification. Let me see it. Verify. Okay, perfect. And uh, and by the way, all this is being streamed live. So that's content in itself. All right, sir, sp spin, spin the prize wheel. Well, even if he does not get the opportunity where it lands on, you get to go inside the cash cube. You could get it. I mean, you know what? You don't walk away with any. You have we're giving out koozies, Bubba Army koozies, Bubba Army keychains, uh, and Bubba Army sunglasses. So I mean, you get something, you know, right? Yeah, well, but there's, you know, when you see on YouTube these guys that go up to people and like give them money and do stuff like that to them, they often have a prerequisite that they've already been a subscriber or a liker of their channel. So do you have any kind of mechanism for people that are already in there? Because if you, because what if someone comes in big or Bubba Army fan, he's been a, a subscriber to all your things. He's Bubba Army HQ and he rolls You're up. You're throwing me a wrench, buddy. Well, but there's people going to show up at the games. There's a bunch of Bubba Army people that already follow you in the show. That are going to show up and they're they not so going to be allowed to spin because they don't have because they already are subscribed. Well, they, they can they can they can they can show it. I feel like that's a pre. I feel like that's a requirement to spin. So if they meet the requirements before they get to the tent, then I personally think they should be okay. Okay. Right? Okay. I just something what, to be on the clear. If we're making well, it a if we're making it a requirement to subscribe to participate, if they're already subscribed, then by logic they can already participate. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. They, I mean, they just got to show. Yeah, I already follow you. We'll show us. Okay. Boom. Okay. Okay. 
Are you are you trying to say that since they like if Mitch Mark wants to just come in and try it, like he can do it, right? Well, yes, of Should course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's no, no, saying. of course. Like I thought army. Dan was insinuating that if you already are subscribing, that automatically gets you in the cube. Meaning, like, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's, that's there's, where you were kind of headed with this. I wasn't I know sure. You. If, was there a bonus or a, or is there a bonus or a penalty if you're already subscribed? That's just one. I mean, of the how about Why this? There be either? How about this? How about this? How about if you're already following us on on one of our various platforms, preferably YouTube? That instead of one spin, two spins. you get two. That's a good idea. I thought that right how, as you said that, Bob, that? but that came to my mind. I think that's a how, good idea. That's, I mean, Seth, that's like not a really, really big, like, throw you in the cube, but it gives you another chance to get in the cube. Damn right. You can get sunglasses and a koozie. Yeah, you can. True. You get two. You, you're going to get two prizes, right? We finna lace you up. Yeah, we finna, finna lace you up. Michael Costoletto, five on the Venmo, so Venmo is working. All right. Go, th- oh, my God. Thank you Yay. again, big buck uh, on the uh, on the on the PayPal at the Bubba Army. Thank you so very much. So here's the official rules, uh, not the official because we're going to have them printed up and posted. And I'm sure we'll change them two or three more times. Oh, a hundred more times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to change them two or three more hundred because let me. You know, there's going to be some people that are listening to the show that that have some type of business that could offer us something super cool. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like maybe we could get like, you know, Tom Bean to throw in like a $100 a Domino gift card. Oh, yeah. That'd be right? Good. Right? Yeah. Right. And maybe we could get, you know, I mean, for maybe we could get, you know, for Beachy uh, or, you know, or Union or something like that mm-hmm. to throw in like a $100 you know, gift card. And so if you go in the cash cube and you're and you're going and grabbing all this money, let's say you grab forty dollars of cash, but you also grabbed a hundred dollar, you know, domino gift card. That's pretty cool. It is it's good cash. And you were just going to the game. Some stupid radio personality. All you had to do is follow his stupid YouTube channel. You may never watch one of my channels. never may not watch one of my videos ever. But and you know what? Fifteen steps as you walk away from my booth, you could unfollow me. I hope not. Let's though. not give them ideas. No, but I'm thinking like they're going to be like, man, why am I going to unfollow this guy? This guy's cool as hell. He just gave me. I got. I got. I got a pair of sun. I got a pair of sunglasses. Or you know what? I got to go in the cash cube. I got a hundred dollars uh, and uh, a brand new chainsaw. I mean, please, can you get any cooler than that? So what are you going to do if someone tries to rob it? Oh Jesus! Hold on. Like if there's you four Venezuelans oh. in a truck with AK. <laughs> You didn't. You weren't listening to yesterday's show. Obviously. I can't listen to the entire show. I know you can't surgery. love her. I, to I know. I know. He has a fantasy about this. So Dan, I have. I have. We have. We we we, <laughs> we, we, we actually <laughs> we actually waded through this particular problem yesterday, oh, and we. I have. Here's my remedies, and you and you being, you know, as I guess as far as IQ. I I would say that Dan probably has the highest IQ amongst us. Which I mean, right. There's an argument for that, yes. Yeah. Certainly more than me and Lummy. Oh, yeah. I mean, me and Lummy, we're, you Combined and I added together. Yeah. Lummy, you know what? And Lummy very well might be smarter than me. I mean, you know no, what? I could no. be the dumbest one Lummy, here. have you had your IQ tested? No. Not that if, that's if I the did one against Bob, I'd fail it. I so. have. Fail it? Lummy, <laughs> Lummy, Bob Lummy, on purpose. Lummy would say, Bubba scored a 109, so I'm going to absolutely just miss some obvious questions so that <laughs> I could be like a 90. Yep. And Bubba can continue to make fun of me because that's my job security. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm dumb. I'm I'm dumb. I'm just 109 dumb. isn't dumb. It's a, a, it's, like, it's a little above average. Yeah. It's well, just yeah, a, t- average. a tad mm-hmm. above average. Mm-hmm. Which, you know what, I think probably is fairly accurate. I think if you've been given an IQ test by a psychiatrist or one, a prof- a, by a professional, um, not just one you took online, <laughs> but one, the one I did was actually they sat across from you and they would ask you questions and then you would fill out portions of the test. And then you'd have some interaction with them. Well, that's kind of I mean, cool. Yeah, it's, it, it's not it's, it's not cool at all. It sucks. Yeah. This was for the parental things you yeah, were going through? Yeah, this is for the parental thing. Yeah, and, uh, So, yeah, I scored. I looked like a genius in that deal. Uh, so anyway, Dan. So I thought of, I thought of this. Okay, if you got ten thousand dollars of real money mm-hmm. laying in, you know, because after because when we get done, when some person goes in the cash cube, we then turn the blower off. It has two blowers: one blower mm-hmm. to keep it afloat, to keep it inflated, and then another blower. You know what, Lummy? You didn't bring in your blower. It's today, in my did truck. You? It's just because it's raining outside. <laughs> Sorry, it's raining outside. So it's, well, it's, it's in my truck. It's in my truck. I know, but it's not 
It's in your truck or it's in the back of your truck? No, no, it's <laughs> in, in my truck. I moved it. I didn't bring it in because it was raining. Sorry. All right. Yep. Maybe next break you can go get it? Yep. So, Dan, there's two fans. There's a fan that keeps it just inflated, and then there's the blower fan that swirls the, the money around like a cyclone. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, if you have $10,000 just laying on the bottom of that, you know, pe- $10,000. Listen, people do bad things. People rob convenience stores for 400 For four, yep. Far less, yeah. Yep. It, right? Exactly. I mean, uh-huh. people literally roll into a convenience store with a 9 millimeter sideways and says, bitch, give me everything in the cash register or I'm going to blow your face off. And they're happy if they walk out with four or 500 bucks. Right. Happy. So I got $10,000 laying on the bottom of this thing. What would stop, listen, what would stop somebody, okay, a pickup truck. I'll be the driver. Lummy, you jump out. Yep. And then what you do, Dan, is you you have an AK-47 and you fire some warning shots on the up in the air like this. Ah! Well, everybody's going to absolutely scatter. Are they right. not? Yep. You're mm-hmm. not trying to shoot anybody. You're just firing warning shots. Mm-hmm. Two guys jump out of the back of the pickup truck. They literally just take, you know, mach- like they just literally throw the machine in the back of the truck because as he accelerates it away, it's going to tear the blower off and tear, you know, the, the generator plug in off. Like he doesn't care. So he throws the back of the inflated thing in the back of his truck. Somebody jumps on that inflated thing so it doesn't come tearing out of the back of the truck. And in 15 or 20 seconds, you've ripped off the cube. And the ten thousand dollars that are in it, right? Mm-hmm. So you roll up, two boys jump out of the back. They put that in the air. Both of them grab the cube, throw it in the back of the truck. They both jump on the back of the cube so it won't rip out of the truck, and they're out of there. I and, envision that on, scene. Unless the ten thousand dollars I have in there is I I just ordered twenty thousand dollars of movie prop money which looks just like regular money okay so we're gonna get shot over fake money so no we're not gonna get okay so they're gonna yeah iggy mcgillicuddy 30 32 half of 62 third uh venmo let me can you go ahead and say that one again uh iggy mcgillicuddy 30 32 which is half of 62 venmo oh 30 30 30 dollars and 32 cents correct thank you very much iggy love you buddy and so anyway, Dan, they go in there and they grab all the prop money they can. Mm-hmm. And then at when they get done, they come around the side. I have the real money along. I'm strapped. And then, by the way, I'm licensed to carry uh, a concealed handgun. Mm-hmm. And I have my 40 or my 45 with me or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I have, you know, a wad of like a thousand or two dollars, you know, a couple thousand in my pocket. Mm-hmm. And I exchange their fake money out for real money. So the real money is with me and I got my gun and maybe even we hire a, an off-duty police officer just to oversee things. So the, the crowd doesn't get too Well, just I mean just cray-cray. just for all kinds of different reasons. Mm-hmm. While I'm handing out this person some money that, you know, their big brother doesn't come and hit me over the head with a steel pipe and, a and, and, people there. and take it. Plus, there's going to be a lot of, you know, there's going to be a right. lot of people there. And I'll have a secure area. Like, if they win, I, I envision having the cream machine. So, let me, I could literally say, hey, follow me. You know, the cream machine has those two slider doors, right? Yep, exactly. Like, here, just come back here with me. Take them and shut the door uh, and count out their money and give it to them. Thank you. Appreciate it. Come again. Tell so, your friends. So, meanwhile, Dan, the money in the cash cube is not real. Right. So that nobody could do a snatch and grab on the cube. And so you don't lose hundreds into the corners. You know, I mean, that's the other thing. It, there's a lot of reasons for that. Right. Don't you agree, though? That's yeah, the way you do it? Now, probably. Dan, I was going to do this, but I think it would really be kind of a dick move. Uh, but that was be I was going to write them a check for their money. And that way I could, you know, deduct it from my, you know, as a business expense. But I think that I, that it loses a lot of its luster when the guy's walking then down to his seats and he has, you know, a $310 check that he has to, can't you know, cash the next day. Uh, or, or, that That's not just nearly as sexy and create the, the oh, wow moment it's of cash. having 310 cash. Right. And then other people are like, well, why don't you Venmo it? Well, at that point now, we're getting the government involved, and they know how much. You know what I'm saying? Right. We want to keep it a little outlaw, mm-hmm. right? You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they, they, want, they want 310 cash clean. They don't want 310 that they got to put in the, the bank. Strings. They don't want 310 that it's electronically t- you know, uh, cash apt. They want 310 hard dollars. And maybe, maybe, maybe an, 
Can you imagine, Lummy, when we finally get that girl that does oh. get that eight thousand dollar boob job? That's where she's hot. Oh. oh, or the dude that gets the twenty five hundred dollar generator. Hey, Lummy, maybe we could get with some uh, with well, Mike. fencing. Uh, twenty five dollar super chat. He wants to put up a free fence. <laughs> I guess his girlfriend's out of jail, so he's all right. Uh, wait, no, wait, hold on. Moments before he gets. Now hold on. Gig. She's out of jail again. Yeah. No, hold on, because. The whole story with Adam from Wolf, I mean uh, Austin from Wolf Fencing, was that his girl was in jail. Yes, and they got back together, and 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 they've it's been very volatile. But now has she been put back in jail again? Yes. What was this? the The first time she went in jail was from him get her stabbing him. Yeah, holding a gun to his head and breaking uh, all his stuff. Right now, yeah. good crazy. What was the second? I think it was when she was trying to burn down his house. Why is he still with her? I know. I, I think she broke. I think she broke in when it's he was crazy good sex. Oh, he, Can you imagine she, the sex on that wild thing? Oh, my, oh god. my god! If you, I mean, you might get killed. You might get stabbed. She might go to jail. But when she comes, I mean, she's she's probably a wild cat. She probably takes all kinds of control. Oh, he, so, He's blo- he blocked her number and everything, and I guess that made her lose her mind, and he she tried to burn down his house. That's hot. <laughs> she broke in. She broke a window when he was at work and uh, tried to burn down his house. Bubba, what's the craziest girl you've ever dated? Um, mm, oh, that's a great question. I don't question. know if I should probably answer that. I mean, oh, I mean, come on. I don't know if I should probably. I don't think anyone knows that. Yeah, the, I don't. The, I don't cra- think the, cra- the craziest girl I ever dated. Might have been Nikki. Oh. Or worth it. Or, or Rebecca. One of the two. Yeah, probably. Like in, in bed or just psychotic all around? No, psychotic. Psycho- well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know this is about me. This is more towards... It's your show. Hand hand. I mean, I've never been with a girl that stabbed me, and I've never been with a girl that tried to burn my house down, and I've never been... You know, like I've never had any of that. Really? No, the the crazy the craziest moment I ever had was this. And Dan, you're involved in this, by the way. Oh, I don't, Jesus. Don't, I don't you know that you know this story. So I love being involved in a story. Oh, I have no it's, idea about. It's, 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 <laughs> you're involved. Until this, you don't. This is one of the this is one of the craziest moments of of my dating life. And so I'm dating. I guess I, I guess I'm engaged to Rebecca. Hmm. I, yes, we were engaged. I guess. And um, but I was seeing. Remember that Bucks cheerleader Crystal that I was seeing. Mm-hmm. Well, you do know Dan because she's a patient okay. ears. Yeah. So, so, so the echoes and run. She yeah. So <laughs> great song. She uh, I'm dating her, and Rebecca's in L. A. Because Rebecca went back and forth L. A. to here. Her dad bought her this really fancy. Her dad was a zillionaire. Her dad made all of his money for. S- selling water meters to municipalities. Really? Yes. It's a bizarre. So niche. he would he would go and buy these reconditioned water meters. Now, town municipalities and cities that ha- that you have, they all have water meters, and they ought to buy. They got to buy their water meters from somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. So he would buy these water meters, and he was like a multi. His, his name was Bill, and he was so cool. He loved me, by the way. Probably the only thing that kept me alive is how much she probably couldn't call him and say I killed Bubba because he would have cut her off. Now Rebecca didn't have a job; she completely lived off of Daddy Bill's. That's that's what his name was, Daddy Bill, and she completely lived off of Daddy Bill's money, including like they had a four million dollar house in Tierra Verde, not too far from mine, and then they had. I mean, Daddy Bill had like a three or four million dollar house, and and now Anna, you may know this more than I do. Like I think it was like. Waterford, Clark, Clarkston, Waterford area mm-hmm. in, in Detroit, something yep, like that. I lived right by there. Kind of in that area. Yeah, it's Metro Detroit for sur- for sure. Right, Oakland County. I think kind of kind of affluent too. Yes, yeah, it's right near Bloomfield Wa- Hills. A lot of old money there. Clark, Clarkston, Water, Clarkston, Waterville, yeah. Watertown, Waterf- Waterford, Waterford, mm-hmm. Waterford. Waterford. Mm-hmm. So he had like a five million dollar crib there. Becky had like a four million dollar crib back in the day in T.R. Verde, not too far from me. And then she had like a two and a half million dollar condo in uh, in L.A. because she, you know, wanted to go hang out there and be an L.A. bitch. So I kind of got tired of her going to L.A. all the time. So I started dating this really hot former buck cheerleader named Crystal. 
And of course, you know, we, like we're you know we're we're pretty hot, heavy, and everything. And she's like, uh, you know, I need some boobs, and you're you know your best friend's a doctor and everything. So I blew a call into Dan. Of course, got some big nice jugs put on her. They look, I mean, they were they were amazing. I only got to enjoy them one time. So um, Rebecca gets back into town, and somehow, way, shape, or form, she gets uh, some type of. Of of inkling or I don't know that I'm dating this crystal girl and bought her brand new Diaco. She heard she, somehow I don't know. So, I didn't tell her. No, you your secretary did. But hold on, <laughs> Dan. Now this is also circa like '99. Okay, right. this is like you know statute of limitations for everything's ran out on this deal. Mm-hmm. This is like 1998, 99. Okay, I just moved in my big house out in Tierra Verde. So she drives her Porsche over to her, my house. That's awesome. Yeah, she drives her little Porsche uh, over to my uh, Porsche Boxster. She had a Porsche Boxster. It's a perfect girl car. For, exactly, that she drove around here. So she comes pulling up, and now I'm in my game room watching, it was a Sunday, watching the Packers play on satellite or direct TV or whatever it was. Actually, I think it was back in the day when we had to have those illegal jailbreak cards to be able to get the Sunday ticket. Remember that? On the direct TV? We never meant to. None of, I mean, none of us had any of them. But. So she comes up, she walks up, and she goes, I- I'm watching the game, and if you were in my movie, if you're in my little game, like man cave where I watched the game, the, the door was kind of behind you. So you'd have to live physically kind of look around to see who came in. Mm-hmm. And I, did, she, I knew it was her because she said she was coming over. So the door opens and I just I don't really say anything. And next thing I know, I get hit in the back of the head. <laughs> oh my word! Yeah, I do. I get hit in the back of the head, and she starts cussing me out. You no good mother effer. You're dating a bitch named Crystal. She used to be a Bucks cheerleader, and I know for a fact that you just got her a new set of Diacos. You no good piece. I mean, like every. You sold you out. Well, hold on. Every name in the book and i go she takes her ring off she goes it's over you're done you're a cheater you're an a- a-hole and she throws the and this was like you know like a ten thousand fifteen thousand dollar engagement ring or something right. it was bad, whatever yeah but money's nothing to her yeah, well i mean exact money's nothing to the bitch because she's ever worked a day in her life right she has no idea exactly spoiled bitch so she takes the <laughs> ring and she throws it into the pool Oh, oh, did you die? So, no, no. And then she left. She's float. like, I'm out of here. You no good mother. Every word. And she takes, she goes, I don't want this piece of crap. Fake. You know, and it really was. It fake. was yeah, she's just Come everything. On, yeah, Bubba. T- takes it. And it wasn't. It wasn't of fake. Of course not. So she throws it into the pool. So and leaves. So I run out to the pool and I can <laughs> see it. I can visually see where it's at. Right. So I turn the pool pump off. Right. So my creepy crawler wouldn't suck it up. Right. So I'm like, okay, I know that if the pool pump is closed and the skimmer is not working and the creepy crawler is not working, that that ring isn't going to really move anywhere. Right. I could see it down at the bottom. I knew where it was. It's kind of over by the jacuzzi. I'm like, okay, I'll deal with that later. I got to go deal with this crazy bitch. So I follow her uh, over to her to her house and I'm pounding on the door. Finally, she comes out and I'm like, how in the hell do you know? You don't know nothing. I don't know any. Of course, what do we do? Deny, 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 deny. I mean, right? Let me. Deny, yeah, deny. Deny, 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 deny. Then when they even got you dead in the right, still deny it. R. Kelly. Wait a minute. How is she <laughs> even surprised? your lying eyes. How is she even surprised? Because didn't you get with her? Wasn't she, weren't you cheating on Holly with her? Yeah. So exactly. why is she surprised that you're cheating on her? That's kind of like what you do. Exactly. I, I, could, I couldn't see to see her get her to understand that rationale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't. I'm a serial. Che- Listen, I'm a serial cheater back then, bitch. Okay. Not anymore. He's you, a changed you man. You, you I am. I, I am. A, I, I am a changed man when it comes to that. So anyway, she says, "I'll tell you how I found out." I called Diaco's uh, office and pretend she knew this girl's name, date of birth, and uh, like she knew everything. She knew all the girl's information. And she called in and said, I called in Dr. Dan's front office and said I was Crystal and that I wanted to know when my next appointment was. I had forgotten. And, of course, the woman at the front desk just said, oh, hey, Crystal, let me see here. Um, yep, you're due in here uh, next Tuesday uh, for a post-op you know, deal. You know, like you do, Dan, right? That's oh, how wow. she found out. Bitch! Oh, my God. So, Who was hotter, Rebecca or the cheerleader? Cheerleader. 
Really? Oh, yeah, yeah way. Pretty. But then, uh, you know, I never saw her again. Huh. Because of all that deal. I had a request from Dr. Van. I, I sent you a uh, a song that he would like to have you play. Uh, where's it at? It's in your messenger. Oh, it's in my messenger. Yes. You didn't put it up on the button? I uh, know, because it was just quicker to do I, it that I think, way. isn't this taken, isn't this mm-hmm. about her? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just seemed appropriate. Oh, I think, I think, I think it's very appropriate. Let me, let me see if I can. If I can. Is it that Buck Cherry song? Oh, yeah. Silk and Milk is. Man, have we have we checked? Have we checked? No, for language. No. You don't want like those big titties. Silk and Milk is. Nothing's worse. I put a brand new set of Diaco's on a chick, and three, four days later, I'm out the door. She blows me out. This is a story about Bubba Clay. I'm a big fat dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is, oh yeah, and by the way, this is an this is from the Todd Clem project, one of my mini albums, which is my first. This, the, the album was oh, my, that was my cute the, kid. My album was the first, mm. my first grade. School, that was. Do, do we all remember when we had school pictures and your mom would do your hair the best she could, uh-huh. and then sent you with your best clothes? Oh yeah. And then like they wouldn't let they actually cancel the first recess, so you weren't outside playing in your first Sweating. clothes. But my mom, man, she must have been dealing with her her Doral cigarette or something because she clearly didn't do my bangs correctly. No, and like, how no. did Janie Cakes miss? Like, look at that. She drinking? I don't know. She wasn't drinking. She, she probably she was probably mowing down a red when she <laughs> when she, when she I was like, so this is my that this is my first grade Madison School Elementary. I don't know. It looks like a pretty pretty cool top. Like I had to wide I had to wide Bill going out there on the deal. Yeah, yeah there we go. Good. Straight from the Beatles cut though. Is that hair not an absolute Beatles oh, cut? They, they had straight bangs right. though. So. Once his lovers to have big giant fake boobs He paid big bucks to have their chest size improved Then they dump his ass and poor Bubba is screwed he bought a path for his new girlfriend, Chris Estelle. And, and we thought our our mentality was that we did we couldn't get in trouble at like a HIPAA violation if we carnied her name. Well, Chris Estelle <laughs> is about as easy to determine what you're saying uh, as I mean, like you know, there's some words that I could say to you that you would in in carny that you couldn't understand. But Chris Estelle isn't one of them, right? Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. Under the armpit and through the muscle She left his ass, so oh yeah, poor Bubba was hustled Chris Estelle took the Diablos and ran <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Go on, take the Diablos and run And actually, all of my exes Even though they stayed for longer periods than Crystal I was only with Crystal for like three months that was the shortest take the Diacos and run. But at the end of the day, every one of them took the Diacos and ran. Oh, yeah. Every one of them. What's the Not every on one of them. Yeah, Heather. Yeah. At the well. end of the day, we didn't end up together. Nikki, we didn't end up together. Well, here's your girlfriend now. Well, yes, this is the, but I mean, we're not, our, 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 our the history of our relationship hasn't been determined yet. I, I think we'll be together forever until I die. But what if she gets a hair up her ass one day and wants to leave because I do something stupid? Does that really stupid? scare you a lot? You're like no, a, I'm not scared at all about any of it. That's you, what I mean. You're like a Taylor Swift when it comes to relationships. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look, is, all that, is all that weather going to be out of here by tomorrow? I hope. Uh, well, it's, it's a 50% chance now uh, for tomorrow morning. Actually, Go on, take the apples and run. Big f- Tennis. Oh, oh. Go on, take the apples and run. See, I, I, Seth, you know the most about radio. I don't think that that word should be <laughs> a a word. And and all and all the years in radio, okay, haven't you like seen like you'd like to have been able to use that word a word a few times? Has great applications. I don't know why that word's. It's a fun word. I think you can say that word. I've heard some radio per- personalities say that. I, I was allowed to say that back in the day. I just don't think anybody's going to get fined if they say that. I don't think so either. We should say it earlier. Enough, they sex of love. No. And, and, and I think if it's just in fleeting, it might be okay. Now, if you just keep going on, you'd be like, hey, how about your teas? Hey, how about your teas? Anna, how about your teas? Hey, well, hey, I mean, Seth, tell me about your mom's teas. Or uh, let me. Oh, oh, <laughs> great examples. I, I think, you know, in a parody fashion versus in a like titillating fashion. Oh. Jesus. Right. I mean, I think if you got a girl on the phone, you're like, hey, listen, I'm tell me about your teas. She's like, I'm going to tell you about my teas. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll take out your teas. Yeah, I just took out my teas. Yeah, that's different. Take, now take out your, take the phone and start jamming them against your teas. Motorboat, motorboat the phone on your teas. I'm motorboating the phone on my teas. Man, do you got the banana hanger? Yes, I got the banana hanger teas. See, like there's 
10 mentions of tees. But if you just mention it in a fleeting parody, I think it's okay. I'm going to let it fly from this point forward. On, take the apples and run. Woo, woo, woo. Met a girl. Oh, yeah. And he kind of dug her. With augmentation, he thought he might even love her. <laughs> I like you, but with big boobs, I love Mommy, you. We, need to, we, 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 we released this three years ago, and it didn't really do much because, you know, we only, I mean, three years ago, what, Rhett, what do we have, like 18,000 subscribers back then? And when people yeah. and when people go to our YouTube channel, they don't dig really deep. They probably just see like the the top stuff that we've done in the last, you know, f- you know, however long. Or, or they may go to most popular and just see our most popular videos. But people don't drill down. This is an actually th- on to, our to, oh, page. This is it's our page, but it's on our main page. This is our SoundCloud page. Oh, everything we put up on SoundCloud goes here. Oh, okay. Yeah, Maybe but we, we can <laughs> put it up on our ours. Or we could um, we could do a link to our SoundCloud. Yeah, do both, right? Yeah, something like that. Yep. Okay, thanks. Oh, as you can see down here. Yeah, this is the the, the Bubba the Love Sponge. Uh, was this the is this the actual channel right here? Yep, you got Bubba all the, the Love Sponge. Yeah, all the classics. How many? How many are all the classics? It looks like there's f- no. If you hit view all, there's there's a lot more. Let me see where view all. Yep. Let me see. Oh, lots. It's every album. Yep. E- every album. Wow. Yep. You could really, really, really circumvent the system. Yeah. If we knew that little link. Maybe we should have oh, wow. Man, you know what I like go. Oh, here we go. Took the Diapos and ran. Woo, woo, woo. Go on. Take the Diapos and run. Now, 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 Seth, would you, you know, as as Phoebe gets a, a little bit older and, you know, might be say, hey, uh, maybe I need to, you know, maybe hike these up a little bit. Would you ever be uh, interested in the services of, of your co-host? Of your co- I'm sorry, of your co-worker? Uh, yeah, abs- yeah, I mean, yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, now see, like Anna, she is completely like Dan said. Hey, babe, I mean, I'll jack you up with some two seventy fives or some really, really mild three fifteens. I've begged her. I mean, I like he and said. And I have like the perfect. What do you call it? The gaping envelope. What is it you called? Have an empty, empty, skin envelope. empty skin envelope. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I'll, I'm, I'm going to even. I'm even going to impress you guys more, and Dan's going to be so proud of me. Because I pay so much attention and I have been in so many procedures with him and just know his business probably better than any other person that's not an employee of his. But a lot of times Dan calls what he calls the golden triangle and he'll measure from your clavicle bone to your nipple. And he's looking for about 21 to 23 inches. I mean, I'm sorry, centimeters. 20 to 21. Am I not right? 21 inches. 21 is the perfect breast, supposedly. So between 20 and 23 centimeters Mm -hmm. is what you're looking for to, to, to increase the candidacy of a potential boob job. Mm. Am I not, am I not right? Yep. Is there anybody of did, did, did Jimmy Clevis didn't know that? Nope. Bubba Lust Punch knows it. Sure do. So Anna, even if Dan was to take your clavicle, which is very prominent. Wait, so the, you take it's the external notch to the nipple to yeah. the other nipples. You go like right here, look. From here from here, triangle. from here to yeah. here. Yeah. And then here to here. Yeah. And if it's between twenty and twenty two it better your chances of having a really nice looking boob job on huh. how they hang yeah. and everything. It'd yeah, be interesting. You know tape? what, Dan? It'd be it'd be interesting to see where, in a where on in and, and and you could tell Anna what to measure so you didn't have to do it and she can go in the bathroom and measure them herself. I'll do it right now. Measure himself. But Seth, oh, let me do it. He's actually, no, no, no. he's actually, he's actually <laughs> offered her, not, not the kind of jugs that the, that the merch cricks roll oh around. Oh my God, with. could you imagine? I would love no. to do that to Anna. She wakes up with 650 yeah. cc's yeah. of love. Now, and for, all of a sudden, people stop looking now, at her in let the me, face. Let me, let me ask you a question, Dan. For, for the merch cricks weight, which is, it fluctuates between 108 and 111. So call it 110. For being five one one ten, she's a she's a shorty. You know that. She's a shorty. Does she have some of the biggest, highest volume CCs that you've put on somebody that little, um, that petite? She's, they Whoa. look really big on her. Well, Davis. The biggest, oh, but. well, Davis. Four hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Super chat. <laughs> That's what you don't realize. Wow. On, on on YouTube, there's a thing called Super Chat where you can throw us money, and that goes right to your BARP total. Yes, it does. Thank you. How, what is it again? Will, Will Davis. Yeah, Will Davis. Thank you. Will Thanks. Davis on the Super Chat. Yes, he likes, thank, thank you so much. Yes, he likes talking about nipples. So, 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 Seth, Dan has offered 
you know, a, 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 literally a, a full blown gummy, not saline. Do you still do saline, Dan? Sometimes, rarely. But it's you like, like to go two percent, right? Full blown gummy. You know, very, very, very mild. Not very, very conservative boob job on Anna, You're like two fifty, where, where people would look at her and say, "My Damn. God, she either has." the best plastic surgeon in the world or the nicest natural boobs I have ever seen. Like, that's when, like, because there's people that, like, there's women sometimes that I'll say, man, that's either the best boob job I've ever seen or she's just been very blessed with having very nice natural boobs. I mean, she'd be so popping that she'd definitely be a hostage right now. I mean, I'm telling... <laughs> I, I don't know if I want to... kept her as a hostage. <laughs> 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 did somebody bail him? Did somebody give him his own bail? Sorry, get out of no, here. No, I, yeah, well, I bailed because we're we're late. And, and you know what, and Seth, Dan, and Seth, Dan, Seth, Dan. Seth, Seth, she says no. I know he had she offered says, it back, no. back when I was on the show the first time. It, it was an offer. Can so. you imagine, story. Phoebe's a year from now comes to you and be like, "Hey, hon, you know, I'm uh, how old I am, you know." I've had some. I've had a chill. I've had a child, and you know, ch children sometimes will you know kind of tear up your breast a little. You know, just kind of do some, do some, uh, do a little damage to your to your to your tatas. And, and so you at that point, she and and Dan goes, yeah, no problem. I got I got you, Seth. Yeah, I, I got you, bud. You, there's no way you would say no to that. No, you, I mean you, I, Phoebe would be in there Monday at well he's he's on the air Monday 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 at eleven o'clock she'd be in there for an inspection. Uh, yes, I mean she, it's something that she's been talking to me about for uh, quite some time yeah. actually. Anna, hard headed. Anna, don't you know how much it would make you pop? It would just pop you. God, is that what you want to do to me? I want you to pop, oh. yeah. I mean, for the show. I thought that was a gun shot. If you no, if you, if, uh, it, it was one of Macho Man's. He lives oh. in his, he lives in his own sound effect world. Okay. I've learned not he's like to even Fred. like. I, yeah, he's like Fred. He really is. He, and, and, and sometimes it makes sense, and sometimes it's dumber in hell. But I don't tell him to stop because it's it's his it's own. Kind of it's it's on his own little. He lives in his own little sound effect world. Well, I think he was. That was his way of hitting the bell too. Oh, I know. We're very late. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Very, we're not that late, are we? Our first our break one. Hold on, that's where you're wrong. We're only ten minutes late. We no, the first we, one was early. Yeah, we're only ten minutes I, late. I, I so don't. everybody say you're sorry, because usually sorry. you don't start getting on me till I'm about twenty minutes late, bitches. <laughs> that's again finishing music. <laughs> I think he was just trying to keep us I think, on he, time. I think he was trying to yes, cover Scott. his ass, knowing that he erroneously threw the tank shot that we were that late and didn't realize that we really are, have had really burned a break, and we're only about 9 to 11 minutes late. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Go on, take the apples and run. Big fake tennis. <laughs> Anna, I just don't understand. I know what? How you just you oh, wear a tank top I, every day? You just be popping. I do wear tank tops often. Do you see Maria Guatemala, how her boobs just pop? They're not done yeah. too big. They're just perfect. Yeah. Can you imagine if you had that type of under boob? Oh, my God. Yeah, I You'd could. You'd be beating guys off you with a stick. Go on, take the apples and run. The, and it would, it, would show, it would change the show dynamic. They'd be like, man, do you see that chick? You want me to do it for the show? Yeah. yeah. I want to do Hold on. <laughs> What's wrong hold with on, that? Hold no, on. Let me, let, let, let me make this official ruling. What? benefits you personally also benefits the show if you look better if we all look better sure. if seth got on a big bodybuilding kick and he came in here at 165 jacked on deca he, he would not he not only would seth feel better about himself but the, somebody would be like did you see that jacked up jew on the, on the show seth kushner damn he's, he's a jack he's, that guy's a jacked up jew yeah you know, it, would, it would take away a lot of material from chat, but it would make me feel better about my life. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> it's the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Want to listen to the show on demand and on the go? Enlist today at BubbaArmyHQ.com and sign up and start listening. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. Probably need a vaginal rejuvenation surgery before you can get a blue job. No, she doesn't. Thank you, Willow Davis.
Don't forget the egg, Will Davis. Don't forget, looks like our Venmo is back to working. But uh, give Cash App and PayPal. Thank you, Uncle Eric, $200. Eugene Rutherford, 20 on the Cash App. Thank you. So Gary Cantrell. Lager. Good morning, Kendall Hill. Ringo Valentino. It's all on the Twitch with the cable dog. What's up, Ned? This is our piece. George Gilletti. Gilletti. Sister Girl Tees, good morning. Thanks again, Will. So, T shirt, Will. What's that page called, Lummy? Um, it's the Boba. Uh, let me get the exact name. Hold on. Sorry. Never mind. Don't worry about it. I got it. These streets of St. Pete right now with the pollen. God, it is bad. Every day, just, just the car, the car, on my okay. on my truck, you know. Yeah. That sits underneath the overhang. Perfect. Even it has like I it, every day. I got to, I got to take a. It's the it's the worst yeah. I've ever seen it. It really is. It gets it gets worse. Do they have here. a do they they have a don't they have a pollen count? Yeah. yeah. It's high. It's high shit. Yeah, like that the meteorologist will tell you. Yeah. It was like eleven the other day. Out of 10? Yeah. They literally called it 11. What's up, Gary? What up, Iggy? <clears throat> Let's see what it is. Oh, 
Yeah, that's how you know it's bad when you've ever had allergies before. What up, sister girl? So quick, I'm getting a clear bra. The guy said no. What up, JC? Keep it out of the rain and don't wash it. Yeah, that's right. I called you by your government Yesterday name. Yesterday was a 9.7. Say, what's your problem? Saco. <laughs> what? Tell me you're about to get yours. Oh, it's raining. Me? Do I tell caviar? Yeah, I'm about to get mine. I'm about to get mine, JC. Did you notice how... The, uh, how... Uh, I heard the pond. Uh, Rio and is it Carl? That's not the pond. Craig. Craig, when I would when yeah. I was go, going going to my about to get mines, they completely understood about it. Like they got it. Yeah. Alpha man that wears women's deodorant. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Coming soon, uh, I got a notification that it's in or out. Bubba Army. Alpha. Alpha. Volume 24. It is uh, volume 24. It's uh, going to be an exclusive uh, cologne. Uh, man. I, I guess, you know, potentially unisex. It is a very, it's very similar uh, to like a $500 bottle of Creed. That's what Dan wears. That's what I used to wear when I could afford it. And uh, and so instead of being able to afford a $500 bottle of Creed nowadays, I'm just going to make my own bottle a knockoff for 49 There you go, right? I like that. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's like, let me, it's, it's kind of, I don't know if it's as p- 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 pathetic as, remember back in the, 80s and 90s when you if you'd have like one of those for uh, what was it ferrero f- f- ferrari yeah the no, cars the, the cars what fiero? Were they, fiero. fiero and they had these fieros and the they pontiac. were they're pontiac fieros but you'd have like a, they had like for 400 or 500 dollars or maybe 600 dollars you could buy like a lamborghini kit for it and it could literally you could almost get it to look like a lamborghini mm-hmm. do you remember that yeah there and now there were good kits there were some real good ones that were like, you know, 15, 16, 1800. And then there were the real jobber ones that, you know, the Latin guys tend to put on. Well, they were all kind of quick, weren't they? I, no, they were not. No, I think, Dan, but I, I, see you, uh, I think, picture, they, I think they did, Dan, have one. That they, my, they, 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 they started off with a four cylinder. It was very slow. They put a six cylinder in it for like a year. I thought there was another one. They I, had a 2.7 liter four cylinder. So let me. Is this ever went to a six? Yeah. I thought they went to a six. Hold on. So this is an example of the way people rolled around in '86 with a Fiero that, that that they tried to Lambo or Ferrari out. Look at that. Yeah, Pontiac, cool car. Fi- Pontiac Fiero with a Lambo vertical uh, a do- do- <laughs> doors. They had these kits uh, that you could buy. Uh, oh, now let me look at this. This one actually is pretty damn good. So they had the inline oh, four wow. Pontiac Fiero, which made 92 horse, and then the Fiero GT with a V6, which made 140. So okay, yeah, yeah pretty slow. Yeah. My boss. Now look at that. That's a real one, though, isn't it, Dan? No, I mean, I don't know. Lamborghini uh, Mercilano. Uh, that's, El- oh, that's the SV kit. So it's like the tail and the different sliders. It's an upgrade kit for a Lamborghini, I'm trying right? to think of this. Yeah. My, my boss, Beth Surrett. My first, this is very odd, Seth. My first uh, program director in radio was a woman. No, oh. this, this is in 1986. Really, top 40 radio station. We were 103 PFR, Power 103, and she, her name was Beth Surrett. This is 1986, and you know, women and women, women in management and programming, top 40 was kind of rare back then in 80 in 86. I mean, you had to, yeah, you really right? had to Women do a lot of nasty things to get to where you're at. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. She was hot as hell, and she came from the legendary Q95 in, in Indy. So she's like, okay, I can do. She was a regular midday jock in Indianapolis, making like 40. <clears throat> and my boss, Tony Clark, who was best friends with Larry Bird, that's how I got to, to meet Larry Bird, set, called her up and said, hey, how about you do afternoon drive? And, but it, now, Living in Indianapolis is like living in, you know, uh, Miami with regards to, to to Indiana. And living in Terre Haute would be the same as living like in Newport Ritchie. <laughs> so, so she was moving from Miami to Newport Ritchie. But my boss, Tony Clark's like, listen, you sound great on the air. 
and he, he was paying her eighty grand back in nineteen eighty six. For so Seth, think about this: eighty grand. And then she moved herself to middays because that's when my buddy Carrie Gray came in, and he was a stronger personality, and she could tend to more do more radio station stuff by just. So she just did a little three hour midday show, was making eighty grand, and was the program director. You take that hoe around the farm. Oh, and she was hot. No, I didn't. Mm. But she gave me my opportunity. Nice. She's one. She's the one. She was one. She believed. Looked, yes. She, I I was horrible on the radio. I mean, have you looked her up on Facebook to see how she held up over the years? N- you know what? I think she went through a tough period of time. I think that Who her hasn't. I think her husband um, maybe died of cancer. Oh. And yeah, I I I was in contact with her uh, back in the in the in the in the Sirius XM days. And she was really, really down and out. She did some voiceover work for me because she just had the most incredible voice. I mean, the most. You know how Tara has an incredible voice? Incredible voice. I was just yeah. thinking that. She, her voice is better than 99% of the women's voices I, don't know, I hear. I, I know that she makes, I know, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I think my sister makes about a million a year. Okay, oh, my God. She, hmm. Okay. I mean, she, I she know. She hates when you talk I know about that, that. But you know what? I'm, I, you know what? I'm truthful. And you're proud of her. And I'm, you know what? If I was saying that in a dick way, I'd be like, God, my sister is such a bitch. And she makes a million a year. That's not fair. It should be me. I used to, that used to be me. And she and, just comply with her no, wishes, in, though? Instead, it's, you know, no, inst- <laughs> no. My show's not compliant. And my, my, and my family knows that sometimes, you know, I'll probably say things that I shouldn't say. I mean, not a lot of moms, Dan, if they had a. 15 year old cyst on their on their back would let their 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 son come in and and tape it on for his youtube channel and and you know, by the way that's one of our best performing videos it's of awesome. all time it's so good in a hard pop not a lot of families have like seth i don't think you could go to elise and say hey elise um, I know you got this little growth on your back. Can I pop it for Bubba's YouTube channel? I mean, she, I think Elise. I mean, I think she would really cuss you out. I mean, she's all about show business, Bubba. So she is. Yeah. Oh yeah. So if she said, "Hey, if I get twenty-two points of that much, pop away, bitch." Oh yeah. There's no doubt. I, <laughs> nah, oh, yeah. I feel like next time I see her, I'm gonna scan her back. My, Mom, I can get you twenty-five percent of anything your back garners on our on our on all types of. Type. I mean, you want me to rip some skin tags off? I, I mean, know. I don't know. Just, okay. I mean, if you're if you're making, I know. <laughs> you don't. Dan, why do skin tabs bleed so much? Because it's skin. Skin bleeds. But well, will there it, nerves but, in there too? But, mm, sometimes. But will it, it just... will it eventually? Because I've taken like a fishing line. Bef- I've had a I've had a skin tab or something on my neck before. I don't have any now. I don't have any. But like I'll ta- I'll rip I'll just rip them off. Oh, oh yeah, no. they'll stop Ooh. eventually. I, I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll put on. You know what I'll do is I'll put on a work shirt. Like I was gonna go like. Work on the car, or mo- like you know, like let me when I go to the track, I have all these work shirts because yeah. I just get filthy on, of course, you know, wallowing around in the dirt and checking oil and I'm filling it- up hydraulic fluids and just I get filthy. So what I'll do is I'll rip a skin tab off and oh. then put on one of my work shirts, so it'll just the collar just <laughs> naturally absorbs, you know, whatever you the skin. blood, yeah. So and, I've and, noticed. And so it- when you walk when you walk around, you got this whole collar full of blood, but it's just your work shirt. I'm not trying to make it my my the shirt. That I'm wearing on the air or not? If you squeeze the hell out of them and they die beforehand, they bleed a lot less. You mean squeeze the life out of them? Yeah, you I've take seen your yeah. fingernails and squeeze it, not rip it off. But if you just squeeze it and you I cut just, it off, it'll get all discolored and then it won't bleed when you take it it'll off. It'll fall off. Yeah. What, what causes them? What does cause them? Being Friction, ugly. I think. Like so usually they show up where like ask. the edge of your clothes are if it's rubbing on your skin. I think fat uh, causes it too because well, fat people out. have skin tabs. They can just happen the, spontaneously. Uh, but all I mean, over the there's got to be there's got to be some type of of diagnosis as to why they happen and what are they? I mean, I mean it could be micro trauma, like you say. It could be you know just fat. locations, genetics. They tend to develop when skin rubs together, such as armpits. Anus, thighs, eyelids, and neck. A- 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 anal. I've never and seen. And are it. more common in people living with uh, anal skin tags. Overweight and obesity oh. who have folds of skin. So anyway, <laughs> so the more the skin rubs, the more you get skin tags. So, so here's the deal. So here's the deal. My sister doesn't like my when I when I talk about my si- my sister. She makes a million bucks. Oh my god! And when, and when I say when I say that, I don't say that with anything other than absolute love. love and like I'm so Are proud of her. Are you a little her. jealous? Like a, just a no, a little... no, because I had my run. I had my run. It doesn't sound like you're over it. I, I've, have I? 
What do you mean I'm over? I'm not over what? Well, you like to reminisce, let's say. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Everybody reminisces. Sure. What, Bubba? He doesn't bring up old stuff. <laughs> I mean, I think that's what makes that's what makes me me is the fact that I had don't all, let anything go. <laughs> no, it's the fact that I mean, I think people I think people that are in media that have had you know lost it all and at one time are riding high, yeah. and don't sit here and try to bury their hand in the head in the sand and instead make fun of themselves for how stupid they were and not in a boastful manner, but more in the you know hey I'm still in here grinding away trying to make a living. Well, most guys <laughs> give up too, and you haven't. That's yeah, very I mean, true. I won't, you have a lot but, of grit, but, here, but here's the deal: as you know, maybe potentially cash broke, I am. I am very content rich, and as I continue to refine content, and I continue to distribute content, and contribute, continue to find people like Rhett that can take audible content and make it visual, I feel as if I'm, you know, I'm gaining momentum. I mean, I'm not just regulated on down to, you know, just, you know, I'm the I'm I, the the Bubba Radio Network as a business, you know, is sustainable to be able to support, you know, five or six salaries, a built a mortgage, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, rent, you know, insurance, taxes, you know, uh, uh, all the things that you need. Uh, to have a successful business, Dan, I can only imagine. I can only imagine what your rent is at That's your. A lot. I mean, is it yeah. over ten thousand? Yes. Yes. So I mean, it's you know, and, and so to do to just to do a regular radio show, yeah, and whatever the topics I speak about, to be able to garner the type of audience, loyal audience. Now, not only do we ask our audience to listen or watch or follow, but we also it's a constant telethon. Like, you know, buck, 99 bucks, love me on the PayPal. Right out of Charleston. PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, at the Bubba Army. Like, there's nobody in radio that's figured out how to toggle between a telethon, visual, and or terrestrial content. And so I feel like, like we genuinely, as broke as I am in comparison to when I had a, you know, Made four million a year. There was there was a few years that I made four million a year. That's so cool. And I blew it. I blew it on bitches and federal lawsuits and getting in trouble. And guess what? I think people like when I talk about it because I'm talking about it. And I'm not sitting here trying to act like I'm all that. And like I, all, all I own vehicle wise that's even decent is I have a 2019 F150 uh, Ford. Uh, crew cab that by the way my sister had to co-sign on for me so like you know i think as much as you guys may think people or i'm i'm not letting it go or i'm living in the past i think that's part of the people are enamored by the fact that i do talk about it very transparently and don't you know try to bury my head in the sand and act like it didn't happen like you know, I'm I'm what, what, very self-deprecating. I I'm mm-hmm. I think I think a, a lot of the show's success is based on how self self-deprecating I am True. and how much I allow you guys to self-deprecate me. I mean, Howard <laughs> how, Howard wouldn't allow his people to take as many shots at him as I allow you guys. You I mean, fifty percent of the show are you guys taking hacks at me. Right? You are a good sport about that, Bubba. And with the beautiful thing about this last two or three years is that you have again b- found yourself to be correct because you had a gold mine sitting in safes and warehouses and storage trailers. And now you're able to finally, with the right audience and the right technique and the right, you know, staff, monetize this old content because you're i got old content it's good it's worth money and people are like that's not worth nothing and you're like no it is worth something and well, you and won that and, argument and remember it, a couple years ago someone yeah. tried to like lowball you on all the value yeah. of it and oh i was so think about how how screwed you would have been then i'm just gonna tell some i'm just gonna tell the story hmm. i'm just gonna I'm, and i'm not gonna mention any names no names mentioned at all but i was at my very lowest in 2017 the very, very lowest. I had just gotten through a federal lawsuit. So I, I had just I was in the middle of a federal lawsuit. So I'm writing. I mean, I'm draining my 401k. When was your divorce? Um, 2011, October. Uh, and so, and but that didn't help. My divorce was one of the best financial things I ever did in my life. 
Was that a hard time emotionally? I mean, emotionally, yeah, but not financially. It was a walk in the park. <laughs> I mean, I had the. I mean, I had Dan spent like I don't know how many fifty thousand dollars years ago to get this super really good ironclad prenup, and then everybody that got married, part of our clique, you know, uh, J- Jimmy, me, H- Hogan, Hogan has a version of Diaco's. Pre law, uh, pre yeah, I spent so much money on it. Everyone got it and then spent literally a tenth of what I spent. So Dan gave it in good faith to a few of his brothers. Gina got a hold of it in, in the right way. I mean, you know, legally and made mine. Now everything's now kind of a spinoff on mine because mine took Dan's and just made it stiff. I mean, stiff. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I walked away. I, I, I probably can't get into that. <clears throat> I can't get into that. But, but you know, my prenup w- was stiff. And so I think people appreciate the fact. Here's, so I'm going to tell you the story. Okay. 2017, I wasn't at my low point. I mean, 2011 when I was divorced. My divorce was not my low point, by all means, no. I'd already met Nikki, and I was partying with her. I mean, like, please. It's like, man, what an upgrade. Yeah, you're, you're <clears> right. So, that free, was, free at last. Upgrade? Yeah, so just you know, really having a good time. Really living living large. It was that 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 ratings federal lawsuit that actually brought me to my knees. So I'm surviving the sex tape. I get fired from bees uh, from Cox, but I got Beasley there to pay me more money than Cox did. And uh, you know I'm killing it on on Beasley. I, I, I another brain fart of mine. Uh, you know again I'm not going to make any excuses, but another brain fart of mine gets me into this federal lawsuit, which literally drained everything that I it drained my. Ha- I mean to be in a federal lawsuit. That was the straw when, that broke the camel's when back. A, when a major corporation that has unlimited funds mm-hmm. takes you as a personal individual. To federal law, to to a federal in a federal lawsuit, and they know, hey, listen, we're going to go ahead and make we're going to string this out three or four years because two or three million dollars to us as Cox uh, is nothing, is nothing compared to what two or three million dollars is personally to him. Two or three million to him will ruin him. So that's another way they tried to get me out of the market mm-hmm. is to, and they damn near did. Mm-hmm. So when I was at my very low, and I'm talking about, listen, I need to find a guy like Rhett and video guy, and I need to try to wrap my head around this, all these, I don't know, I mean. You went, mach- through, a, you mach- went through some pretty bad uh, guys before that. Yeah, macho, like what do we have, terabyte, wa- or, or Rhett, oh, wow, either yeah. one. Like with, Audio wise, no, no, thousands and thousands of if hours. If you were, if oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get it in technical terms here, either Rhett, Macho, or Lummy. If you if you were to take all of what we got, including what we just found in the safe, in, huh. including the video, would you say we're at? And I'm just gonna give a guess, fifty terabyte. Uh, I'd say closer to probably seven or eight. But that's still significant if we're talking about audio files that are each about no. five to ten megabytes. But what about but what about all the video too? I mean, well, the like, video is a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, if you were to take all the video, yeah, no, you're right. If you do take like all of our media, all yeah. of our video that we have, all of our audio, it, it's about seven eight terabytes in audio, and that's what we know for a fact we and have accounted for on the website and everything. And doesn't audio take less, far less terabyte space than video? Well, yeah. Right, so would you, you say Rutherford, we... $100 on the cash app? Thank you. Thank you. I think 50 is probably accurate. You know, we got <coughs> so I had we got Nest on a tapes over there. And, oh, yeah. and, we have a, we have a, we, and we have a lot of audio from back in the day that we even got to. Well, I mean, don't even, not even including the two-track phone calls. Exactly. Like, I think if, the, if that tape... If those, if that tape that I've stored, that two-track phone call tape, if it hasn't deteriorated because those type of tapes, car, Seth, were you ever in the business when you used cart machines? No, okay. no. You were never. So you never, you never were in the tape business, huh? Am I the only guy that? We, am I the only guy in this building that used a cart machine? I mean, oh, I would rat carts all the time. Right. Okay. So me and Mach. Yeah. So, but Mach, those things left stored, even in air conditioning, can sometimes completely like erase themselves and like. Yeah, because the uh, the film degrades over time, the magnetic film. So we, we haven't we haven't even gone through all that. But let's okay. Let's no. say I got forty terabytes of content, which I think is just an unbelievable amount. 
And I had a guy come to me at my very lowest and off. <laughs> He, he offered me $36,000 for my entire library. And then if I was to do, and then like, I think three grand a month, he was gonna give me three grand a month operating expenses. Give me, give me, give me $36,000 to own half of my library for all of time and three grand a month, unless I would happen to have a good month and then that three grand would go away. So, and I, and, and, and you know, uh, Dan, because, you know, you helped me navigate through this and told me it wasn't such a good deal. But Tom Bean flipped out as soon as I showed. I, I couldn't even show. I was so desperate that I couldn't even tell Tom Bean how bad I was doing because I didn't want to tell him I was thinking about selling the library, you know, for $36,000 for half of it. Yeah, he Tom, crazy. He would have killed me. That guy's in jail, by the way. Oh, yeah. The guy the guy that offered me that is yeah, in jail. Yeah, he went to federal jail. So what, federal was his, prison. what was his plan? What did he want to do his, with your content? His plan is he was going to take it. He's trying it. to monetize no, it. No, he was going to take it to, you know, like five or six rats, build, build a little company uh, that did nothing but just go th- rip my content and get it up. But, ha- but you know, hire a company of like pro rats, oh. you know, like five, six, seven pro rats. And then they're just like a little, like a little, like a little Jamaican uh, a little farm little sweatshop. And they're just cutting shorts and cutting longs and putting in this and putting that. And I almost, I almost signed the deal. Yeah. Well, now he's just dropping the soap all day. So you won on that one. Well, yeah. So anyway, Anna. <laughs> yeah. When I say, when I talk about the time trials and tribulations of of what I've been through, I think people appreciate it because I've always bet on myself. Yep, I agree with I've that. I've always been on myself, and I've never been, I've been really, 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 really close to having nothing, but I've always, always gotten back on my feet, and I've always built momentum, and I had that one hiccup uh, when I got fired from Beasley, and I didn't have hardly anything. Let me, I think we were only being heard in, I think, Charleston. Yeah. And. Kind of in Tampa. In Tampa. Charleston and Tampa, we had like two affiliates terrestrially. We had like 10,000 people following us on on YouTube, which is donkey dick. Didn't have Twitter. Didn't have, our Twitter was canceled. You know, didn't have um, any, uh, you know, Twitch, didn't have Twitch. This is before we, you know, Twitch kind of saved us. Twitch kind of got us into the digital world where we had to participate and produce something digitally every day and have it visually watched. And we didn't start that until October of 17 was when we finally started. And I remember when we, our first month was like $366. And then our second month was like 1500. And then like by January, we were up to like $4,000. And then like by, you know, July by like October of eighteen, within a year, you know, now this now the site's doing like ten grand, you know, and like you know, just kept building and building and building and. I'll tell you this: ever since two thousand and seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. I don't know about twenty four yet. I've had at least. A 15 to 25 percent increased every year. That's awesome. It, which shows you that we're building something. Yes. Yeah, you're almost catching up to inflation. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm almost catching, <laughs> catching up to inflation. So, Anna, when I say my sister's a millionaire, I millionaire. Do, I do, I do, oh, yeah. I don't say it in a jealous, disrespectful, wishing it was me, none of that. I genuinely are just I'm, I'm so proud of her and what she's over and what she's overcame and what she has built yeah she's amazing i mean oh, she's she's the she's the bomb she overcame you firing her well, he and didn't not fire, going to your, Seth, her wedding Seth, he didn't fire her tom bean fired her yeah because i used to let tom bean do the firings now i do the firings it's more fun yeah I, I didn't Especially want to fire family. my own. It's tough to fire your own sister. It's easier to let somebody else do it. I mean, as much as you guys want to make me look bad, it might be. I mean, Jay, if you, I mean, Dan, if if Steve, if if 
if Steve worked for you at at the plastic surgery center, would you fire him or would you let Jay fire? Oh, you'd fire. I think him. I'd, he'd rather me fire him than pee on him. So I think I'd be what, good with it. What, what, hold on, what, what, where's where's the pee in coming from? Hey, when you were kids peeing in the bathtub? You talking yeah. about when we were when me and uh, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> More than anything, it, it just gets so I, obscure. That I thought it was it, a strong callback. I got it. You, really? Yeah, yeah. You really do? You're, I knew that I you mean, and your sister gonna... used to pee pee on each other and try to make out. Well, D- and Dan used to pee in the tub, so when yeah, Jay got so in. There's a couple back back, back uh, references. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, I stand well, corrected. I'll roll that one back. By the way, an update on the uh, the terabytes, uh, 34 terabytes of video and Jesus. 7 terabytes of audio. That's what? 41 terabytes. That's a massive, massive amount and, of audio. And we, we probably have more Data. with some of the new stuff, too. So. Wow. so we probably have 50 terabytes. Jesus, yeah, that that's doesn't a lot. include all the tape sitting on the wall and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Guy tried to offer me 36000 and I almost took it. It could cost more than $36,000 just to store that much information. Yeah, well, he would have cheated you. He I was mean, trying he to. Made, yeah, he was. He, he, and by, the way, and, uh, by the way, he's noted for doing that. Yeah. Is he not? Uh-huh. And yeah. that's why he's in jail. Because so we're cheating. So, so, the, so the last conversation I have with him when I tell him no, and by the way, nobody ever tells this dude no. So I call him up and I'm like, hey, but, hey, uh, you know, Jim. Did you feel like you could negotiate or you didn't even, mm-hmm. you're so low? No, it was, they I were, know. They were, they were giving him a desperation so offer. They were trying to, they were trying to take, he was trying to take advantage, in my opinion, in Jay's opinion at the time, of, of, of Bubba's desperateness. Right. And it, so it would have gone down like the Denver Seattle rest trade. Oh, oh, it would have been. Yeah. It would have been even. It might have been a Ryan Leaf deal. I don't even know. No, it was a Mike Ditka with the Saints. Yeah, Williams. it was a fleecing. All these references. It was a fleecing. <laughs> it was. It was a Mike Ditka Miami Dolphins trade. Was yeah, it? Oh no, got work, kid. Saints, I mean, Saints. 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 In, Saints. Who did he trade all the draft picks to? Washington Redskins. Washington Redskins. Yeah, yeah. Commanders. And whatever. Thirty-six thousand dollars. He said, right? Yeah. Full transparency. I think I can say we make more on YouTube in a year. Yeah. Than Thirty-six thousand. Oh my 000. god. We, oh, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. By far. Yeah. And so I, he, no, it was a, he, you he, did the right thing. He Bubba. calls me up. He calls me up because I didn't. I, I I didn't. I didn't sign a contract. And I kind of blew him off. And he calls me back and he goes, "Hey, are you know what's up? Are you going to sign that deal?" And I go, "You know, I got to tell you, I just don't feel. I just don't feel comfortable with with giving you fifty percent ownership." And I said, "I think the forensic accounting of it all." And I just you know I just I, I'm, I'm right now I'm building building it and and he and he starts giving me this shuck and jive deal saying listen and and i tell him i tell him i think it's a bad deal and he tells me listen i only cut bad deals bad deals for the other guys that's why i've become a and and dan would you not agree that i don't know if he is now but at one time he was considered close to a billionaire Oh, he was a billionaire. Yeah, he's a billionaire. He's a billionaire, and that's why he's in jail because he got there by 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 cutting corners, cheating, being dishonest, fraud. He's a scumbag. I hate him. Stephen still likes him. I can't stand the guy. I think I always thought he was a scumbag. The first moment I met him, and I still do. And he was taking advantage of you. He's taking advantage of a lot of other people. He tried to take advantage of me and Jay in a different context. I don't like the guy. I think he sucks. So good for you, Bubba. F him. Yeah. Well. No, thank oh, good. Wow. Good for us. Yeah, because I mean, you know, we're, here we are humming along, kicking ass, and half of it, anything that we would put old stuff, you know, what he would own, he would own yeah, half of it. It's yours, dude, and it's yours to do with as you choose. And I hope you make millions and millions of dollars with it over the years. Oh, I think I'm gonna. I, I, I think we've just begun. Mm-hmm. I mean, I Rhett's just can you know, like we're just continually. Tr- drilling down and dialing it in and making it more efficient from Seth's handling of the podcast uh, to, you know, uh, now we're a little more aggressive on X. We're going to get at, we're going to get Twitter to be uh, mo- we're going to we're going to monetize our Twitter here soon. Throw all- us a follow. Th- yeah. Throw us a Twitter follow uh, at the Bubba Army. But we're close to monetizing that. We already have Facebook monetized. We already got YouTube monetized. We already got. Rumble monetized. We got Bubba Army HQ monetized. Let me. We get song cast checks. Yep. Uh, you know, we get yet yeah, locals. We get. You know, we got several, several streams of monetization for our content. I, I have a message from your sister. Oh, great. Uh, she wanted to say uh, she loves Dan. Mm-hmm. She really loves Dan, mm-hmm. and said that she never peed on Bubba. No, she never peed on me. I peed on her. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She wanted I, to correct that. I'm sorry, Tara, but I, I did not mean that whatsoever. 
I had to take yeah, it back. I would never, and that's creepier. Her peeing on me at yeah. four. I'm four, and she's I'm I'm sorry. I'm eight, and she's four. And why is it creepier if she peed on you? Because that four a four year old having the mentality of peeing on your brother's back at is eight? far more with great aim. Yeah, a four year old doesn't that's even that's know. Cool. A four year old only knows that that's a TT. That's all that is. Yeah. And just, and like, well, I wasn't yeah. saying you guys compare what your private parts. I was just saying she could just take a leak on you. Well, no, I did, I don't know that she, girls can. Four year old girls know how to direct. I don't know if they can. Oh, lean yeah. back. If they have, lean back. If, if, I don't know if they have the. <laughs> yeah, they know the, bl- the bladder aim. The bladder I didn't aim. Out. Oh God! So anyway, Tara, I'm sorry for saying that you're a millionaire. I'm sorry for being proud of you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for, for being. Proud I'm sorry of you. for loving you. I'm sorry for not being jealous of what you've obtained. I'm sorry for just not genu- going to your wedding. Uh, oh, jeez! Is that something to be sorry for? Yeah, Very. He is being sarcastic yeah. about his sorry. I know. Yeah, well, Maybe wait, you be way, to cut, way, to, way to cut me to the bone. Jeez. You know, I'm talking about cool stuff, and then you cut me right to the bone, bitch. Bring I'm the sorry. Bone. To the bone, Dan. She doesn't like Dan, you. Dan, you have a new. Here's a new. Here's a new rule. If 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 Anna would ever, because it could be there, there could be an oper- a time and soon, or I mean, within her being on the show, that she could just change her mind, mm-hmm. and she'd like, you know what? I'd like those two seventy fives. I really would. I've thought long and hard about it, and this small tea energy has gotten me so far. I think having some really hot tea energy might really be what I need. And Dan, you know what? Now, because she cuts your best friend, your boyfriend, your mm-hmm. lover, if you will, to the, right to the bone anytime she can, and it's always she cuts me to the bone, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd like to reset, like, we, like it's no longer on the table. See what my response? You want my response to be, F off. Yeah, it's not available anymore. No you're, soup for you. You're free. You know, <laughs> oh, now I get j- it. Just because you're Naba, just because you're Naba's friend, yeah, you mm-hmm. might be able to sneak some free Botox here and there, but you ain't getting a free boob job, bitch. I'm telling you that oh, right no. now. Yeah. yeah. I'll still fix your vagina. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes, this is a daily telethon. We got to keep the lights on somehow. So don't forget PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. All at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Bubba the Love Sponge. We'll be back after this. Tell her we got a one ninety nine tonight to drop three hundred on us. Oh, we'll give her the train horn. Try to bring. I want you to bring that up during the show, okay? And then be prepared for my wrath. And then be prepared for my. Wrath. I don't expect full payment as if I showed up. I'm just. I'm just. I, hey, stop. Stop. It's not that hard. Stop. Okay. stop. Ask me it on air, okay? Zip it up there, big boy. And, and don't don't break our, our friendship line. No, I'm not. I don't. This. I don't go past that fucking whatever like, that is. Like, let's consider like this paper towel as like the. The, the the boy the, the boundary the boundary the now, I have the ability the border no What's see now, hold on from? I have the ability to go through no, wait, well, I don't have the ability to well, well I have the ability to do whatever fuck I want right so let's just sit down I mean I can literally go up in here and just fucking sit right on your chair ball it all up oh my god is the power cord the line no that's too way too close way too close yes right there so you cannot go past if you if you go past there I get shocked if you go past there if you go past there I can't. You can't. I can't ensure your safety. Whoa. So I'm just what's saying, up, like, Helen yeah. Close. Oh my word! What's going on? Are you me? I wish I had connected. I wish I had my <laughs> nice eye <thigh> shot. <laughs> you you, you, know, the you, thigh shot. you used my T-Rexes against me. <laughs> Reach four inches. Yeah, if, I, if I could have gotten, if I, I, I swung on you. I know. I just couldn't. Did make, you arm drag him? No, he tried to hit him in the thigh. He jumped. I tried to hit him in the arm, but just you know, that's that's the area right I there. I say I just wanted to just see, make a real you know experiment out of it. All right, it. so we gotta get we gotta we gotta get some notes here. Okay. Oh, no. okay. So, oh. Seth, 
um, Zoom. So make sure you bring that up, okay? All right. And I got boundaries. No, he knows that we don't need to talk about. And that. I got Dandy Tukey. You, you, you said two, you said Tukey's are not up for uh, for debate, but no, you got a reversal. Yeah, I got a reversal. Yeah, that's it's pretty good. I was dancing. Right. I'm the I'm the Tukey Tukey Council. <laughs> <laughs> what up, LM Clothes? Sorry, uh, sorry. What's up, Chris? What's up, Jay Bowler? Sorry, I wasn't trying to give anything away. I was just trying to ask a legitimate question as I sit here and think about 12 hours from now. But Bubba might be tuned up, so, you know, it could be good. What up, Spencer Squared Organic Gene? Guys, I don't know what you're talking about. My camera's crystal clear. You guys got to get, you guys got to get your uh, vision checked, man. What's up, Storage Shed, Grouper Lips, Elway Rookie, 69. Thanks, Danny G. I appreciate it, buddy. I, I heard from enough people to where I don't feel uh, so bad about myself anymore. Got to get a few good compliments on it. I'll take that. I'll take the momentum and run. You know, Jay Buller, the best part about what, what 199 is that Bubba told me is I have an actual place to sit. So I'm kind of excited about that. What's up, Berto? I'm getting your uh, your cards out today, man. Actually, yeah, they're uh, they're ready to go. I just got to go put them in the mailbox. WrestleMania one, Gary. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for looking out. Thank. You. John, I want us to get one of those wide receivers. If not, I'd like them just to trade down or get it or get a offensive lineman. I don't know if the edge rushers are, are worth top ten right now. Jared Verse, Chop Robinson, we got to see. <clears throat> I will. Uh, I'll do a show with Stein any day. I just think Bubba would probably have to pay him a few shekels. I don't know what's going rate is right now. What a beach metal! I appreciate it, man. I don't. I've been. Are the Oilers doing good? I've only just been seeing, watching the Panthers of the Lightning and stuff. I think the Bills were over the cap. I think they had to cut a lot. There's a lot on Josh Allen right now. I appreciate that dark match. You know, oh, thanks, the one, one thing, though, I feel like the NFL has really got, like, they've just really stumbled upon through cap. You know, the cap has really done the NFL what what the cap is intended to do to most sanctioning bodies, which is to try to level competition. The NFL cap is Okay. Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Miss part of the show? We got you covered at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to Bubba Live Worldwide. Uh, pay, we're, we're worth far more than $36,000 and $3,000 a month. Please, bitch. Well, well on our way. And with the, with the new... Diaco Law, Tarpon Mark, $10,000 cash cube that we're going to take to big functions, functions that have, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people tailgating and have this big, you know, display that has a cash cube, a cream machine, a prize wheel. Uh, and then the, and the, only, and the only thing you got to do, people that don't even know who we are, I mean, if we can get three or four thousand people a, a a month 
uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is at the Bubba Army. If we can get, we are, you know, we just, I think our averages, Seth, I mean, uh, Rhett, you would be the guy. I think we average, you know, anywhere between three to 5,000 a month in uh, new subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. And, on a good month. And four just, or five on an average month, two and a half, three and a half. I haven't even seen anything less than three in the last six months. Like you're always at 3,400, 4,200. And that's just, you know, from the stuff that we're doing in our world. You yeah. know, putting up good videos that that are that are listening audience by whatever means you listen or watch the show, you organically go and f- watch our, uh, our 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 YouTube channel. That's where we kind of put cool stuff, including how's my uh, how's my food review doing? I, did, uh, I, did. I think it's a little over twelve hundred. Nice. Last I that's saw not, one point three. I mean, Ooh. that's not good. There's a lot of comments, you and know, upset about the merch. Critic, but but, but people don't realize this. Okay, listen. Here's the deal. Do I do the do I do the food review and don't miss one? Let me your Warsaw signs crooked. Fix it, please. That really is one of my biggest pet peeves. I, I think it's I think the it's, angle. Yeah, I think it's just the perspective yeah. of the camera. It's oh, level on the okay. wall. It's really straight. I'm, I'm so sorry. Lana. Sorry. It's okay. It just looks like it's. Oh, headed, it looks really it, bad on it camera. Looks headed down yeah. slow. Yes, I'm sorry. So, I'm so sorry too. Because <laughs> I'm looking at it, I go, Let's I don't know how to fix it. Each other. I think yes, it's, I'm sorry. I think it's that I'm tripod. Sorry. It's not quite level. It's sitting on a bunch of notepads. I think. I'm sorry. You're sorry. Where else? Yes, I'm sorry, brother. So sorry. I'm sorry. Your food, your food review is so, great. So listen, so okay, if I do the food review and it sucks, like the one I did, because I don't have the merch crick. And you ordered the wrong thing. And I ordered the wrong thing. <laughs> but, 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 but hold on. But I. Had, but you know what? Rather than just take the lazy approach and say, you know what? I'm just not going to do one this week because I don't have. You know, you I know, offered I help. That's okay. I don't. I don't. But I. I please. I know. It, I, but I did though. You, uh, Seth, uh, Seth's swim membership, a hundred bucks from. Uh, <laughs> Awesome. From Scott at Scout and Big Gulp. Nice. Oh. Seth, Seth Frederick bringing in hundred dollar bills. Thank you, Seth. Nice. Can I actually get thirty five of that? We talked about it on this no, show. No, we, we, no. <laughs> I think they're being serious. No, though. no. Okay, all right. No, please. Okay. Please. I only, okay. You always make me feel so uncomfortable about money. <laughs> I'm not trying to make you. I, I you think do. they were. You're not do. doing our people any favor, no, Seth. No, I think they're the, being genuine. Not your, pe- not, not your people, but just you. I think you can go further in life if you start stop trying to shake people down all the time. No, no, I'm not trying to shake anybody down. I'm just. I'm, you shake me down daily, buddy. No, I've given you a rest for at least a few days. I yeah, think. Yeah, no. Usually it's uh, hey, let me let me go ahead and get fifteen percent of that, or hey, listen, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I haven't asked for a percentage of Twitter or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just. Uh, I right, think j- Scout, Scout and Big Oprah being genuine because we had a you know conversation about how I'm trying to get back into moving my body on two live Jew. Yeah. Check it out. Mean by yeah. moving your body, like if you activity. Send it, yes. Listen, if you like send, if, the, if 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 anybody in the Bubba Army sends money via our various sources, you know, Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, at the Bubba Army, or a super chat, or a or a, a you know, bit on Twitch, or just you know, money on rum, just uh, Rumble by by whatever means you send. If you're sending it to the show. Don't expect me. It's because you want it to be for Seth's swim classes. For me to take, for me to be uh, the, bro- like the, the that, I, that I'm the, that I'm the broker of your of your ch- of your charitable donations to my people. That uh, listen, this, it's it, you know what the, your money is being used to help the show, which employs your favorite person that you're trying to give some money Mitch to. Mitch the Mark's dad, ten dollars on the Venmo. Love the food review. Uh, Gooch. Gooch, oh, yeah. uh, fifty bucks in the PayPal. Thank you. Thanks, Gooch. So, so, uh, so, so, Seth, how much do you want to lose? Um, I don't, I don't have like, uh, I don't have a number in mind. Man, I just, if you, I'll tell you right now, you, if you lost twenty, just twenty pounds, tw- 15, fifteen. Come on, dude, fifteen, fifteen or twenty, he'd look good, way better. You got a number of what? What do you want to lose? lose? You don't have to tell me what you weigh now. I don't want to hear that number. But what, what you like want to lose? Do you have an idea in your head? Um, I I twenty probably like uh probably like twenty or thirty pounds. 30, probably like thirty. 30. Man, your pee, your wiener would be your wiener would look. You know they say you get like an extra inch for every thirty pounds on your wean. Or it's so what's the difference between three and four inches, Bubba? I mean at that point, a lot. I it mean, depends yeah. if you talk about a penis or a waistline. I mean it's a big difference. Or, I mean yeah. yeah. But I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean if you, and listen, if you eight, got an so. inch on your penis, Nine. if you got a full inch, yeah, dude, uh, dude. I mean if you got a full inch, no one's turned down an inch on your penis. I mean, it's just that much more satisfying right. to the person that you're giving it to. Mm-hmm. And you'll get it about really two-thirds is. of that to three-quarters of that up well, to me, maybe an inch with that so, penis pump. So let me let me ask you this, Seth. <laughs> what if your wife's vagina oh, was, wow. you know, uh, a half-inch tighter? 
Would you not be like, wow, that feels that feels good? Well, no, but you would say, I mean, listen, I'm not trying to say anything, but I'm sure it's perfect. I'm sure Phoebe's vagina is perfect. Okay, let me let me let me make sure I qualify that. But if she could make it, you know, a little bit tighter by, you know, losing weight or going to a a vaginal rejuve that Dan has, you would, as her lover, that 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 you know it, it. it, it enters that world, it would probably feel good for you, don't you think? I, I guess so, yes. Of course yeah, it so, would. Of course it would. So if she's getting an extra, you know, inch of what of the of the of the or of the, of the of the sexual organ she craves or likes or makes her feel good, then you don't think that that's a that's a a, a win? No, do you get the bigger Unit by losing weight or gaining weight? Lo- losing. Oh, losing. Okay, yeah, I'm all when for you, it. Because when you gain weight, it makes your pubic pad a little bit fatter, which <laughs> which then go that that go that direct. It's like that's a like barrier. The, okay, kind of. mm-hmm. that's the shed mm-hmm. over over the penis. That's mm-hmm. the you know that's the roof over the over the penis. Oh, and, and Dr. Dan said so when he, you take half that roof can't off, go deep. when the, when when the hurricane comes in and takes half that roof roof off, well, I mean you you got that much more exposure. Yeah, I thought it was the other way around. I'm, I'm all for it. It's a great it. analogy. It really is. And, and, well, Dr. Dan Dan will tell you as a doctor, if you lose weight, there is, mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a certain like half inch for every 30 pounds, but, but there is, your penis does get bigger mm-hmm. when you lose weight. And, and he said he gained a half an inch on the penis pump. Now, have you used the penis pump at all? Did we ever get you one? He didn't Seth? want it. Um, you said you ordered it, but I never got. I never got I, it. I don't think I ordered it. Because oh, okay. I didn't think, no, because I didn't think that you were being honest about it. it. Needs to be your next best friend. And honest to God, I, listen, I'm your friend. We talk as friends, and um, I, I got to tell you, every one of us, even even Rhett. I don't know if Macho Man's got a penis pump or not. I think he's got some at the gym that he does. Tries with to it, use but, it on his biceps. Right. Rhett's I never. Rhett doesn't have one. <laughs> yeah, I never got one. It's just me, you, and Doctor Dan. Now, Rhett, do, did you want one? Uh, and, and, I wasn't and, asked and, at and, the and, time. And, and if I got okay, I know Debbie Downer, you weren't asked at the time. <laughs> and I'm trying to make now. I'm trying. This is God, Eeyore. I'm trying. I'm trying. Eeyore. I'm trying to. You know, I'm trying to write. I'm trying to write my wrong, bitch, by saying, so, Rhett, sorry for forgetting about you. I think that you know. I think that you've also progressively came became a more prominent co-host than then too. I think that. I think back then. Right now, you got an open mic. That's the way I like it. That's the way I want it. The only, the only time it frustrates me is when you go over to Macho Man and you don't tell me that you're on his mic, but we always work through those situations. That being said, you've increased your co-hostness, if you will, gr- greatly. Like, if I didn't think I liked your chime-ins and what you were doing, I would, you know I'm, you know how I am. I'd say, hey, Seth, we're not, I mean, uh, Rhett, I'm, I'm not going to have, I mean, your mic's not going to be live anymore. If you want, if you want something, just uh, you know, get a hold of me. But I think you've been doing a great job. But I think I don't know that you were as strong and as prominent of a co-host when we were doing the initial ordering of said penis pump. Would you agree on that? Yeah. That you've, you know, you're, you're chiming in more and participating more now. So it, now you're more top of mindness with regards to my uh, to my lineup. And I'm going to now retro offer you a penis pump now. Lummy got one. Yes. I got one. Dan got one. And we're all man enough to say that they're pre- they that they pretty much kick ass. They work. Yes, they that do. They, I mean, they, if, they, if you, and then if you tie it off with with the little rub with the little uh, oh, yeah. rubber gasket thing they give you, and then you can just maintain that rigidness and thickness and and hardness. Whoo! That's good. Yeah. So um, we're not, you know, we're not going to sit here and act like we don't use penis pumps, put our heads in the sand and act like it's shameful. We're going to say that, listen, us and and, and us men come in three different shapes and sizes. You got a doctor and a lawyer who drives a Lamborghini. You got a guy that drives a a 97 Chevy pickup truck uh, and is a slumlord and a husband uh, and a dad and just a mountain of a man and just, again, a heart of gold. Uh, and doesn't really, you know, like like people knowing he's c- kind of shy. Let me, you're kind of shy. Yeah, of course. Dan's not shy. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm I'm kind of shy. Uh, you know, but on the air, I'm Superman, and I say things I shouldn't, and that's probably why the show has worked over the years. Is because I said, you know, I probably say things that most radio hosts wouldn't talk about, 
And one is, I used a penis pump. I own a penis pump. And you know what? You're proud to pump. It works. It does. And it feels good. It, and you sit there, and you're pumping it, and your wean's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and thicker. You see, yeah, the, you see the potential of and then it. You right. look, and then you look at it, and you're like, you're like, oh, my God. Texturing. I mean, I, I, I naturally have that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's m- m- the material, the skin, the bone, the flesh, the cartilage, <laughs> wow. everything that your penis is made of, is all of that is on my body. <laughs> it's just that my body doesn't have the ability to pump it up like this machine can. So naturally, I probably never will look this good. I mean, right? Right. Well, well now you can. But, because when we were kids, we'd like to say, well, what could we do to make our penises bigger? Would you like tie a string and put a weight on it or something like that? Someone figured out that negative pressure, that suction expands the cavernous tissue. It makes your penis bigger. There you go. There's a doctor's version of it. I just said you put it on there, it gets bigger, and you're like, holy crap. My penis has the ability to do this? Yeah. yeah. It's you know, amazing. That'd yeah. be like if somebody gave you a pair of shoes and you could go, like, okay, Seth, you and I could never th- in a million years ever think about dunking, right? Right. A- a- like, there's just nothing, no exercises, no amount of weight, no no drills, nothing could ever make us have the ability. Our bodies are just not made to ever dunk a basketball. Right. Now, Lummy, on the other hand, Lummy used to be able to dunk. Yes. It's all about height with him yeah. but if he got in a big huge ass and you know like some basketball trainer would train him for six months and get him in shape let me you could dunk i could dunk again yeah you could dunk yeah. again so if somebody could give me and seth a pair of shoes and say when you wear these shoes you can dunk be like man i mean great well it's the same thing with the penis pump your penis doesn't have with whatever you're doing naturally on how you obtain hardness or you know or rigidness Whatever, however your body creates that to happen can never come close to mechanically doing it with this pump. This pump brings out inches that your natural body could never find, right? Yep. I mean, and it makes it harder than a rock. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, like... Cut Jesus. diamonds with it. I mean, Are you I mean, sold I mean, yet, Seth? No, so, Seth... <laughs> I'm Only just, for thirty bucks too, but you're getting you get one for no, free. No, no, this show, the show's gonna buy That's it. That's what I'm saying, but it's free. I was trying She's to advertise gonna, for other people. So, Rhett, it's for Scout and Big Old now, 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 Dan, <laughs> Dan, Dan, will you and Lummy agree and admit with me that it is pretty? It's pretty damn. It's pretty phenomenal. Oh yes. Like and and I like. It. Oh God. Dan, what about you? Uh, thumbs up. Two yeah. thumbs up. Yeah. I love it. Three two, thumbs up. I mean, it makes my penis in from like a one-fister to almost a two-fister. Yeah. I'm I mean, telling you. I feel like a sledgehammer, you know? And then, then, then and so. <laughs> Dan my, Holmes. For, for Dan Holmes. <laughs> Jesus. That's how I feel. I don't even know what to do with it, man. <laughs> I mean, that's on Dan Holmes. The C Morning Zoo on C100. All right, so Rhett, knowing you, you you've been with this show, you know, I mean, longer than Seth. What what is your opinion of us potentially buying you uh, one of these one one of these penis pumps? Do you yeah. want Do you want one? Yeah, absolutely. You do. Yeah, yeah I'll take two. After All right, that. So, smart guy. But hold on now. The other aspect of when I buy this for you, you have to openly talk about it on the air. Yeah. Because I mean, you, I'm just I just can't give it to you, and you'd be like, "Yeah, I used it; and it was real good." Well, give us some particulars. No, you know, I, I, I really don't. Oh, no, that's not how it goes. You have to be totally transparent. You're like, you know, I took it out, put my penis in it, mm-hmm. hit the button, mm-hmm. and and let me let me take take red under your wing. Of course. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, please don't. Take take, take please take, take, don't. Hold on. Love take me. take yes. take red under, under your wing. No problem. Problem. I'm not yep. talking about like actually getting your penis out and showing them, but that's all, the only way to do it. No, 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 no. Yeah, but, but Seth, you're under my wing, no, dude. No, no, no. I'm going to show you. <laughs> but hold on, okay, Seth. This is how you do it. Show I can't on. be under Dan's wing because no. he, he's bigger than I'll, the whole machine, I'll isn't take, he? I'll take you under my wing, buddy. Okay. So listen, what you do is, I mean, we don't have to. You don't have to get the unit out and put it on your penis but you can say okay listen what you do is you when it come when it comes 
to the st- to the studios. We'll take it a- maybe on the air. Yeah, we'll, we'll show Seth. Do like a tutorial. I mean, we'll show we'll show Rhett. Okay, listen. Here's the unit. This is the unit we have. You put this little suction sleeve on the bottom, and then up top you got the settings. And the best you want to do it for what is it like three minutes? Uh, well, it has a countdown to it. Yeah, it does. You yeah. want to do like five three minute sessions. Oh, it's electronic. Yes, no, it's, it's digital. Yeah, it's like oh, oh yeah. timer pressure. Yeah, hold on yards. It's digital and everything. Yeah, but I, I sent you a, a picture, uh, the link to ours that we have. Yeah, uh, I don't know if we can show. Can we do a demonstration put... with like a carrot or something like so that, it, or would that be bad? <laughs> so it doesn't be like a carrot. It? Watch a carrot turn well, into I mean, a, to a cucumber. More like a <laughs> my, probably more like a bratwurst or a cucumber. Not not a carrot. A bratwurst yeah. would be perfect because it would expand. I know. Bubba, well, a go. bratwurst would be perfect. One thing I said, bitch, about to get mine. Dan, yeah. what if you got one of those mini baby carrots on to turn into a giant regular carrot? That's I what mean, I'm saying. Yeah, but mean, the bratwurst would turn into an Italian yeah, sausage. Yeah. Did you send it to you me? Give a little German bratwurst to an Italian sausage. Hold on here. Lummy sends me this. <laughs> the real life. That's how it works. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So, yeah, I... I I think we could probably show this. Okay, maybe I don't. I don't know. Let's. Well, not. there's other. There's another picture. If you just hit the second one, maybe. Well, I mean, if there's an actual penis on screen, no, then no, no, we no. Cannot. it's a cartoon. It's not. It's a cartoon penis. Oh, okay. is it a good like? Well, there's another picture. Right? Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me let me show it to you. Don't don't broadcast it, and then you tell me whether we can put it on the air or not. Okay, ready? Okay. So hold on here. Uh, They're probably not, dear. just to be safe. Oh, but there's a video, too. But wow. it does. Yeah, that's oh, a little too pink. It has a, it has a oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. That drawer is just as good as my other stamp drawer. It's just separate. Yeah, that doing this? mixing of the stamps no. in my house. It's oh, plain. separate. Oh, yeah. 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 I, look, 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 my wife. What the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was an old, that was an old Ned call. Did you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. But about a stamp collection yeah, or something great like timing. that. All right, here we go. The, so this... The, this is this is the penis pump video, okay? Yeah. Maybe this is all Seth and Rhett would need. Yeah. Right here. Mm. Adore me. Oh, I do. I do. Here we go. Uh, is. Jesus oh. Christ, man! Look at that <laughs> power machine, silicone sleeves, two sizes. Dan uses the, the one. Now, Dan, right. are you? No, <laughs> I, like think, I think I think I think you said, Dan. I think you've said, and you can just be honest. That you're all the way up here, like you're like you're the, nineteen. You're yeah, so like right yeah, at nineteen. Right, that, it tickles that, nineteen. Sometimes it goes past nineteen. So I mean, it it almost goes to <laughs> the top. The bell. Almost, it yeah, almost yeah, goes to the top of the unit. You're, I mean, you're almost maxed out. Yeah, and well, I'm not lying either. I'm, I tell you where I'm at. I'm about I'm about right here. That's good. That's strong. I think I'm like a I'm fourteen. Yeah, you're fi- 15. 15. fifteen. No, you know what? I think I'm like a. I actually remember we just did it about. A week ago, I think I'm a six, like right up in like here. It'll start off at like a 16, and then it'll grow no, to I 17. Like a, you I watch start it. out like a four. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it goes like four, and then boom. Next thing you know, I'm a 16. Mm-hmm. And then you know, then what you do, Seth, is you take one of these silicone sleeves yep. and you put it at the base, and then now you're locked in at 16. Yep. And when you're giving it to your girl, you're giving it to her. You know, instead of you're giving still it, 15 instead and three quarters, instead of giving it to her at se- like natural at seven, which is what you could probably produce. You're giving her, you know, you're giving a pumped up 16. Yep. And you don't think she's feel like, think, oh my God, this is like a. I, How long does the pump last? Like, could I take, could I pump here and then drive home and then go to town so I didn't actually have to keep the pump at my house? Well, well you probably have to pump uh, on the way home. Yeah, think? But, okay. yeah, put the pump oh, in the yeah. car. Yeah. yeah. Put it in your glove box and like maybe go around the corner, pump, and then then pull in. Yeah, I can do it in the driveway. It really only takes a minute or two to okay. go from, yeah, the, from zero to 100. Literally, it only takes like, like Seth, if you did it for like three minutes. Which is which is you know they 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 suggest what three five minute sessions or five five three, three minute sessions. Yeah. You don't want to do more than fifteen minutes at a time. You don't want to do more than three minutes at a specific. So Seth, you could pump for three minutes, tie it off with the silicone you know deal. And tell tell Phoebe be ready. <laughs> yep. And then just roll up in there and just bl- I mean like a god like a, like, like a god dang rock star mm-hmm. i mean like literally like what in the hell oh. it may be a little cumbersome running from your car to the house and you gotta take you gotta take it off and make sure the kids not home let me let me that's how i want bubba alpha to be like bubba alpha, bubba alpha. I don't, it, 24 see how they put it in there listen hold on Kiss me. Real. So Seth, you put that 
Now, that's very important that you put that on there because that inevitably is what, when you take this unit off of your penis, that stays on your penis. That locks you in. Wait, what? That that stays on your penis. That big big black top? You don't have to leave it on there, but he's talking about to maintain. Yeah, to maintain. Okay. So I, you, you, you can keep that on if you want, or you can take it off. Okay. But if you ta- but if you take it off, you know, after about a minute or two, your penis is kind of kind of go back to its original, you know. Oh God, we don't want that. But it's easy, easy, easy to install. Yep, right there. That's... Like, hold on, yeah, look, this yep. is how it, this is how I look. Come on. It is. No, for real. I can't, but I can't watch this penis grow. Oh, no, God. But, that, but this is exactly what happens. <laughs> this is what they show this stuff at school? Yes, yeah, rechargeable. They should. Yeah. They should. <laughs> Every I mean, kid should get should. one during sex ed. I mean, listen, Dan. And the charge Dan. lasts for weeks. Dan. <laughs> Dan. Oh, my God. Would it not have been an absolute life changer if we got one of these when we were in eighth grade? Oh, my God. I can't imagine, <laughs> man. Be mad at 30 year olds and, as a 12 year old. No, no, but instead of being Val Victorian, you would have never read one book. You would have been, you would have been Johnny Biggest Penis mm. Award instead of the smartest kid at Northeast. Right. You would have been the guy that had the biggest penis. Yep. Then it would have been just as much fun. Just plug it in. Yeah, and by the way, the Simple. charge lasts forever. We're talking about this penis pump. Now, Lummy, don't we have this penis pump list, list, listed yes, on our do. Amazon account? Yes, we do. What's that? I mean, what's the... Amazon.BubbaArmyHQ.com. So, Amazon.BubbaArmy.HQ.com. Mm-hmm. And that's our Amazon wish list. And it or things that we've talked about on the show yes. list. Yep. It's, 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 it's that much... It's that easy, Seth, to have extra happiness at home. So, and so, extra confidence. So when on. you when so, you know so, that you got everyone, this review is for the Adorami penis pump and oh. this thing is freaking awesome. See, so, hold see? On. This guy. Look at that guy. That's the next thing that comes up. So Seth and the and the information that you now have gathered, Rhett, Rhett ought just automatically said, Yeah, get, absolutely get he me went, in. He went too. I'm getting Yeah, get me too. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> one for me and one for for for, for Scout. What? <laughs> what the hell? It works on women. Rumor Don't misgender his dog. Rumor has it that, uh, he likes that, that. that a veterinarian may have insisted or always referred to Scout as a boy so many times that you uh, are mad at that veterinarian and you're changing veterinarians. Yeah, normally it doesn't bother me, but you'd think of the people who should know what gender your dog is, the vet would be up there. Maybe he's like Bubba and he's just scatterbrained. You know, a dog looks like a man. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. You about gender that, misappropriation. You don't want that. Doctor working on your dog? Okay. So anyway, uh, Rhett's locked in on the penis pump. Now, Seth, if I give you the penis pump, it's 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 expensive. It's like 80 bucks. Jeez. Okay? But if I give it to you, are you going to use it? Because if you don't use it and you can't come in here and give us some pumping tails. I mean, just at least one time? No, I mean, not just Well, I mean, one. I'm not going to give, I don't want to, you know, dong updates, you know. Well, I don't do no, it that no, much. No. It'll only be like once a month. Yeah, I mean, like, we, and so we we don't, me, Dan, and Lummy don't give dong updates, but organically when the topic comes up, we can refer to it because yeah. we do it. Because I want the new set to be long dong Seth. I want Seth to have, like, just monster penis walking around like king and, of and the it, world. And it gives you a whole different swagger when yep. your penis is a little bigger. Uh, I, w- I mean, I wouldn't, know. I, I wouldn't little, know. Your little elevator button right now mentally is keeping you down. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you if, you, if, if, if right now you had, like, one and a half just, just hanging there. To the side, one and a half, instead of being elevated in. Yeah, you'd have a little bit. You'd, be, you'd have a little pep in your step, I, no, knowing that you're a little bit. You know, you'd actually look pretty good, soft. I, yeah, no, I think going into the weekend, you know, got paid yesterday, got an extra inch and a half. I mean, what what could be holding me down at that <laughs> I point? Don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's the peak of life. There, yeah, well, I'm, I'm so, gonna order, I'm gonna order two, and uh, Macho Man, do, do do you want one? I don't know that I if you were here or we or you. No, he said yes. Oh, he wants one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right, so three, three. <laughs> pe- yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I get something? Hold on. But hold on. Symmetrical. But Macho Man. I mean, you gotta like. Use you know, it. when we start talking about well, it, I actually you know, had you're, one. You're, it broke. You're gonna. Oh, have, I broke mine. All right, so you're gonna have to get, like you know. <laughs> yeah, you I, know you, I know how you get. It. I know how you get sometimes where you just won't talk to me, which I hate. Like when I throw it over to you, and I like you know, I pumped like I pumped you this. I'd be like, I'd be like, Lummy, did you pump this weekend? Pip. No, Lummy. Oh, did yes. You? Of course I yeah. did, I mean, I'd be like, yeah. I, I pumped. Dan, when's that? You, you pump recently? Last weekend. Sure. 
Uh, Macho Man, you pump? Oh, yeah, I'd prefer not to answer that question. Oh, yeah. like, I mean, you got to step up and say, yeah, yeah, I pumped. It was pretty good. Just make sure you follow directions. Oh, Jesus. What, what do you mean? He's an expert on it. What did you do wrong? What? What? I mean, I, I can't see <laughs> How where. How did you mess it up? I don't. I think the only reason you. I mean, the only way you make could, sure you follow the recommended pressure. Yeah. Or you can put it out of commission for a couple days. Yeah, you can hurt yourself. <laughs> you leave it on too long. I believe uh, Matra said we need to put a disclaimer as uh, we're not responsible for penis blistering or blood vessel damage. Hold on, guys. This was not <laughs> part of any of the discussion. Seth, I, I think he did. If you just <laughs> follow the directions and they give you the amount of time and the pressure that rookies. Need to, they, the people that are just starting, they give you all the information. They'll be like, listen, if it's the first time you've done it, you need to do it for like two minutes but why did, at like why, three millibars. But why wasn't it enough for, why wasn't the recommended pressure enough for Macho? Look well, at no, Macho. No, because he's never big enough. Well, no, it's not always better. <laughs> no, listen, Macho's mishap probably didn't happen on his first time. He got aggressive with it and probably went a little more pressure and a little bit longer time than he was supposed to, and he had some complications on it. Bubba sounds like it's happened to him, too. <laughs> hey. I, I, got, I, I think I've gotten close to hurting myself. Yeah, on it. yeah, yeah. you can make leave sure, it on there a little too long. Make sure you're also not stuck to the side of it. Yeah. Okay, I, I, you know I, I will tell you this. Problem. I, I will tell you this, Dan. If you take a little... A mm-hmm. ring of coconut oil. Oh, that helps. And you, you t- and you lubricate the silicone sleeve with coconut oil. Mm-hmm. Then it really it takes away from that potential dry chafing mm-hmm. against the sidewall. Mm-hmm. Or you could so, just kind of do like a little swirl on the top of it with your finger with some kind of yeah. lubricant. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, like, like, like take your gland. Take take uh, like a little little olive oil or a little Astro Glide or coconut spit. Co- coconut oil or even spit and and lather up the, your <laughs> gland. Before you go through the before you you know penetrate the silicone sleeve, and that'll probably suffice as well. But Seth, I mean Seth, I promise you that if you do it, you're gonna one of these like you're gonna be like, oh my god, I don't know why I tried to fight it. All right, well I just I mean I do appreciate you know Macho bringing up that there wasn't an issue, and I'm also seeing in chat Longwood said that he had an ex- experience with it and it was effing dangerous. That's well, because I mean, his testicles got uh, sucked on. Yeah. How do, you, how do you know? Well, well you got to make sure. You got to make. You got to take your test. Listen. That's listen. why you need someone to take that's you under why, the wing. Exactly. That's why. <laughs> Dr. Dan. <laughs> that's why, Seth. Like when I'm teaching, I, I'm taking. I need a penis pump sensei. Like when Lum- exactly. Like when Lummy ta- takes Rhett underneath. That's right. Knees, like, hey, listen, buddy. First of all, you take your set. You take your testicles. <laughs> kind of pull them down a little bit. You know, you get to loosen them up. And then make sure that when you put the when you put the machine down on it, that that your testicles you kind of pull kind of pull your testicles down. You know, let me you kind of separate your testicles down a little bit That's right, right before yeah, you hit the thing. Make, so you right. don't yeah. So you make sure your testicles are kind of pulled 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 away or down. And then I'd be like, listen, start off you know easy, but with the recommended. I, I would say like start off with three millibars for a minute. And do and then do, do three reps and do three of those, and then keep your silicone sleeve on and go have sex with your girl. It just it will be an absolute game changer. Yep. And nobody's gonna get hurt on one minute at three millibars, no. you rookie. Please. And if you keep it pressed against you your pubis, hurt, you won't suck your testicle into there. Yeah. And and if you do get hurt, <laughs> and if you are like if you're Johnny sensitive puss boy, where you came in here <laughs> and said, "Oh my God, Spongeo!" So I went a minute on three millibars, and it was just, "Oh my God, I'm so scared of it." I I don't think I want to do. What's wrong it. if I'm scared of something that is not human? That is. Pleasuring my wiener, like what? What? Not, that is freaking me out. It's not pleasuring you. It's medically it's helping you. We're not ever. None of us. It's therapy. And not none of this conversation about this penis pump. And I'm and I and I own this network and mm-hmm. I'm the ho- host of this program. And let me just go ahead and to backfill this: that none of our talk involving this penis pump has been under the guise of pleasure. It's been under the guise Beauty of is pain of of, of, of a medical. A medical option that you have to increase the size of your penis, penis p- while, now hold on, not only is it, but I have a real doctor in here verifying of said treatment. Mm-hmm. So this is your zookeeper show with a couple nut huts that have no medical experience and we're talking about our penis pumps. We're talking about our penis pumps medically with a doctor. So I right. think that even further insulates us even more. So, Seth, never pleasure, always treatment, okay? Never pleasure, always treatment. Yes. And I think you would come to me and you'd take me aside and you'd go, Hey, Spongeo, 
Uh, mm -hmm. What's the resale value on this? <sighs> a, a one to you, Seth. Oh my penis God. Pump, it's gently, gently Someone gently in <laughs> stuck in it. I mean, I'm like every time I try to do something nice for the guy. It's gently used. It's always about money. It's about resale. flipping something. It's about more hours. I'm it's sorry. About... I'm just trying to scroll you off talking about my penis. I'll use it. I'll use it and abuse it, baby. Give it to me. 80 bucks. Give me the top of the line one now. If you want 24-7 on-demand Bubba and the crew, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. I had to wipe mine down. I had to just yeah. save his uh, shirt. I had to wipe mine down with paper towel. Peter, it's a sanitizing they were kind of They were kind of wrecked with it. Hey, Dan, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. They're oh, good, aren't they? May I just have a paper towel for Dr. Dan? Mm hmm Thank you. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. How did you, how did you discover this place? Um, I think Romina told me about it. Is it is it kind of down by your house? Yeah, it's off of McDill near my house. And it's, you know, it's like 100 grams of protein, no calories, no fat, no sugar. Well, it's plant protein, too. Plant-based protein. Hold on. For the one I'm drinking? Yeah. For it's real? It's as healthy as it gets. I got shit every fucking way. Yeah, but it's, it's very How many nice. calories, though? Probably a lot. None. Zero. All protein calories. They don't count. <laughs> That's coming from a doctor. Yeah. But the one from the one from Smoothie King has got a lot of calories and gives you a stomach ache. This one doesn't. It's really really good for you. God damn it. Did it drip out of the cap? Yeah, that's... Is hey, that what it is? The cap's yeah. dripping? Yeah. Oh, you motherfucker. That's exactly what it is, yeah? What is oh, it? Yeah. The cap dripped. You know, since you order so much... What is it? Tone. The cap. The cap dripped. Here's your tone. Oh, okay. Do you need to... Do you need to... Uh, <clears throat> is that Uber Eats? You need to tape the top. Tape it? It happens every time, Dr. Bad. Tape the top? Put a little piece of tape over it, because this comes loose. Is that what's happening? The cap's coming loose? Because when I got my... When, when I just take the bag... Mm -hmm. Mine was like this, and it's going like, you know, like this, so full, and it breathes. And you like just have a little tape over the top. I mean, they didn't prove what they did. They were just putting the paper on the straw yeah. and the plastic straw. I mean, they're trying to. But I mean, they should listen to you. I mean, you're probably their best yeah. customer. I am the best customer. She even said it. She was usually our best customer. So they should listen to the tape. I can call in and say, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Just have one ready for me. Well, yeah, so you, if you tell them, like, hey, will you see my name? Just have a piece of tape. <clears throat> I saved my shirt. I saved my $500 shirt. Fuck. Well, but Dr. Dan stained his uh, $1,000 outfit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> What's that now? He stained his $1,000 outfit. I got chocolate all over myself. His pants, his shirt. He did? Yeah. yeah that's all right. His pants are about $400. Shirt, 400 the whole thing, the whole reason I brought up Seth was, I was going to, is he not in the room? No. Yeah. I was going to say, man, you should do a weight challenge with him. Because he'll do his weight. If you offer him 40, 50 bucks to lose the weight, he'll lose it. Put money on it. True. Dollar or pound? I don't know who's paying it. I ain't paying it. <clears throat> Dr. Ben. What's up, Buzzer Bob? Yes, no, no, help me, 199 tonight. I'm zooming in, baby. Which one in the next? <clears throat> I appreciate I'm it. Let me do that. I'm going to do a um, heart, heart chew. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Seth's going to grease me about 199. I'm just going to bring up, let's see, Seth, you got a, a 199 question. And then we'll go into that. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Then we got a what a nine fifteen. We got a nine fifteen Don Miller. Yes, we do. And we got to still talk about. <clears throat> we got to talk about immigrants. The illegal immigrants flocking to the border, busting through. They want penis bumps. They want penis. Can't get them in Mexico. More in organic gene. Oh, wow. Well, China is making everything in Mexico. Yeah, I'm going Mexico. But you're talking about China. CC, where have you been all day? China bought a ship that was shipping a plant in Mexico. Oh, I see. I see. Ah. What's up, Zerxies? Absolutely. <clears throat> Good morning, Xerxes 69. CC Hall. Yeah, I wasn't holding out my Twitter. Where's CC? Where's CC? Where's CC? Look at over chat. Go back and you can see it. Thank you, Bob Army Grunt. What, what up, Lunger? <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to Bubba Army HQ. Otherwise, Bubba will have to take action. And there's a lot of power behind those short arms. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Now back to the BRN. Not a lot of power on those short arms when I was trying to take a hack at Seth and he used my short armness against me. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of quick, though. Yeah, you are kind of quick, yeah. Justin Fields quick. R.I.P. He was a he was quick as one of the arguably one of the quickest quarterbacks in the league. It's one of the fastest players in the league. I like the guy. I always saw his class act. Go Steelers! How, well, man, the Steelers. Let me. I'll just do my. I'm gonna do my endorsement next time. I got plenty of time. By the way, Don Miller, the midday guy for probably about 15 minutes, 9:15, 9:30, uh, <clears throat> via the Comrex which is the instrument that Shannon Burke uses, and it sounds like literally, like it's golden sounding, is it not? Yes, it is. It very much is. Don Miller will be on the on the phone about 9, on the, on the Comrex about 9.15. He's the midday guy on Florida Man Radio, Fort Walton Beach, Ocala, Orlando, 1031. What's up, Orlando? Can't wait to bring my Diaco Law, Tarpon Mark, uh, Clem's Cash Cube. <clears throat> Let me, we're getting, I mean, let me now, up and beyond the 10,000, I got a coupon. That's, uh, there's going to be a Mike's Lawnmower from Ocala coupon floating around in there. That with its, uh, If you get, it's, it's your choice of a weed whacker or chainsaw. I mean, a nice chainsaw is like, what, six, seven bucks, like four or five hundred bucks? Yeah. A nice one? A nice steel, you know, a chainsaw? Yeah. It, yep. that, I like chainsaws, but I'm not allowed to touch them. No, you're no, you you're not. No, but they are. They do kick They're ass. They're cool. But They're I think so cool. I think most dudes would probably. It's your choice of a weed whacker or a chainsaw. I want the chainsaw. Sure, I want something that you're not allowed to use. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I want to cut down a giant tree. I think that'd be so much fun to do. We need to do the V cuts in there, and you get that thing to go down. I think that'd be so much fun. I'll never ever do it as long as I'm a surgeon. You you could do it at my track. I could get some. I know some trees we could cut down, and really? I could we could do it like Bubba teaches. Down. I know how to cut down trees. I used do to you? cut down trees. Yeah, all really? the time with I'd my love dad. To do that. It's you got my fantasy. You gotta, first of all, you got to viet out. Mm -hmm. First of all, you got to first of all, you have to determine what direction you want it to fall in. Right. Then, On set. Then, then, <laughs> then, then you, then you, you viet out, and then, but you don't viet out so deep so that it automatically cracks while you're viet it. You want to leave a little bit of real estate at the very, very back end that just barely keeps it sturdy so, so that, these the direction is going to fall because you don't want it to kick out on you while if when you're taking that v out 
and it's too aggressive of a V chunk, if it's too aggressive, it'll actually start collapsing while you're down there working on the V, which could bind your chainsaw or kick that V out or, you know, just it could be bad. So what you do is you cut an an aggressive V, but then, Dan, you get on the backside of the V where the meat is, and then that's when you start, and you just start very slowly cutting, and then eventually the weight of the tree will will take itself out. Do you let it go? Like, do you cut and you hear it, like, kind of cracking a little bit, and then you walk away? Yep. Do you have to yell, timber? Yeah. Yep, I think you do. Uh, so I've always wanted to do that. It, with it, with, <laughs> so I just can't wait to Orla- for us to take the cash cube, the Diaco Law uh, cash cube out to Orlando because not only do we have ten thousand in cash, not only do we have a Mike's, I'm sorry, a Mike's lawnmower gift certificate worth a chainsaw or a weed whacker. Let me. It's looking like we might get that generator from the generator company. Yes, yeah. Uh, and um, there was one other thing we were going to throw in there. The boob job. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doctor D- a Doctor Dan eight thousand dollar boob job. And then let me anybody else that has any type of you know that wants to throw it in there. You're gonna get you're gonna get a mentions right. Of course. And it just make, business. And you do you. It just makes it so much cooler. So I just can't wait to t- to take it to Orlando and have so much fun with it. We got to make it a big deal. Hopefully, we, hopefully, so the, ho- hopefully, the, hopefully the ratings come back in in April, and we've all, we've just really made a huge <sighs> dent in talk radio of Orlando because it's because what we do on Florida Man Radio is far different than what they're doing over there. There are a bunch of pussies over there. Bunch of snowflake woke jokers. Yes. Oh, I wow. thought we weren't name calling on this one. We're not. We're, oh, okay. we're, just, we're, we're just, talking about the other people. We're just talking about. We're not name calling specifics. We're okay. just saying their format's a little different than ours. We're a little bit more, you know, red Maggie. and conservative. They're a little bit more woke and bitchy. <clears throat> Nothing. It's not a bad thing. People are into that. So speaking of woke and bitchy, now, Seth, you said that <laughs> you'd like to speak to me <laughs> about something. About Bubba yeah. 199, because you're, you're coming to Bubba 199. Yeah, well, I was just because well. it seemed like parking was going to be, you know, some of an issue. So I was going to see if I could just, like, zoom it on in like Stein does and just be like kind of be like A.J. Hawk when he's on McAfee and just kind of hang out there on screen next to you. What, from your car? Or no, 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 from home. my house. Oh. Yeah, in his car. <laughs> what the hell's wrong so with you? And so instead of, com- <clears throat> instead of coming to the studios for the highly coveted, Bubba 199, which, by the way, was tonight, 8 to 10, which, by the way, one of the things, like a little kid, like a Beavis and Butthead kind of, kind of thing, is you've been like, I can't wait to see the titties. I can't wait to see the titties. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be all kind of titties. <laughs> have you not, ha, no, hold on. I, Lummy, have you not heard him act kind of, kind of yes. do that? Yes. Beavis and Butthead. Like, so. I'm coming to one. Of, <laughs> Hi, it's Sethy, <laughs> F-boy, and I'm coming to Bubba, Bubba 199 because there's going to be some titties. Oh. I remember when we couldn't say that word like an hour ago. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, said it eight times. So Seth, don't, oh, don't don't all don't all of a sudden say that you wanna that you wanna zoom in because you've made it very evidently known that you really are looking to, for the uh, a large amount of is that are gonna be at Bubba Did you just say it in French and you thought no one would know? At Bubba 199. So the answer is, are you kidding me? You think to do you, you should you should know better to even ask me that question that I'm gonna allow you to zoom yourself in for Bubba 199. Being in the studio and in the moment and in the vibe is what Bubba 199 is all about. Not you looking at, you know. What if I cut my appearance fee in half? No, no. Okay. It would be kind of funny just to see him on screen. Uh, from what you, Thank you. <laughs> she knows content. Uh, you know what? I'll uh, I'll disinvite both of you. All two. right, all right, all right. It's, don't take away from Anna. <clears throat> take. Please, uh, you've already taken uh, away uh, my well, DJ hum sauce. Know, don't take if, this if away If you're gonna bring it, if you're gonna if you're gonna go, tr- you, anti, I'm just throwing out an, ideas. You can shoot them down like you, you do. And an, they're always anti-company ideas. Anti-company? Think, yeah. What about uh, 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 and just half of his fee? I mean, would be. No, bitch. It's not your money. It's mine. If you want your full fee, you're gonna be right in that little chair, <laughs> and you're gonna be looking, and you're gonna be, 
Thereby, you're going to be there no later than seven. No later than seven fifty-five. Okay. <laughs> and at ten ten, after you've spent ten minutes mingling with the great people, the great royalty that will be here, you are dismissed. You will get your talent fee. You know what that is? It's the same talent fee that I pay everybody. Yes. Except for the guy that spends. Of course. Who gets double? As he should. All right. I'll, I'll so show up tonight. It's not. It's not zoomable. Okay. You idiot. Just checking. Thank you. Hope I'm glad we're clarifying. You think Pat McAfee told that to AJ Hawk? I don't care what Pat McAfee told AJ Hawk. He's not Bubba the Love Sponge. Yeah, he's not Bubba the Love Sponge. And guess what? Newsflash, bitch. You ain't AJ Hawk. Oh come on, man. And AJ Hawk didn't get an appearance fee. Oh no, AJ Hawk's probably have a contract. Yeah. I mean, he's got at least a million for that. Should I should I go into words, or should we get into this immigration breaking through the razy, razor wire? Uh, El Paso is burning. Uh, they're having a ma- major, major, major immigration issues in El Paso. I think that's good. That, that's kind of a long form monologue, mm-hmm. and that we probably should be responsible. Let me do a break and then do that on the backside. Come back with it. Yep. Due to the fact that we got Don Miller midday, Mike is going to start firing off sounders. So exactly. There you go. If you want to deep dive into the Bubba the Love Sponge show from the past, go to bubbaarmyhq.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge show. We'll be back after these words. Sometimes, CC, sometimes. I got my cousin in town tonight, so I'll be able to. From Philly? Or from yeah. New Jersey? Mm-hmm. My cousin's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, way back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, back here is really the last place I, I would worry about getting my car towed. Just in this area. What up, Internet Fred? Seth, my car was parked across the street for like two days after BARP and it was fine. Yeah. One show pad, 100 bits. Thank you. This is gonna be, I want to shut it down tonight. Now I'm ready. Titties. Titties. The titties are always on display. I mean, not mine, but the others. <clears throat> Drums. What's up, big lunger? Thanks, thanks, Bowler. I appreciate it, man. Chesticles. Who's got chesticles? One of the five shirts I have right now. I gotta get. I gotta get some in rotation. Chesticles. Yeah, you just call. Like I've called my boobs chesticles. Just gotta get some cheap T-shirts. It's about to get sticky. See you tonight, Maria. (laughs) I'm excited to see you, your cake, and your titties. Oh, I got that uh, Tom Brady license plate. I tell you about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I was doing Sophia's car. Um, she wanted a fucking airplane. So I go on to downtown. Get the you might airplane. be Longwood. And I don't even know how many I have anymore. Out of the like, what the fuck did I have the other one? Well, I got one three weeks ago. Yeah, but they're changing it. So they're out of production right now. I'd never go head to head with 199. I only do my little. I only do my little uh, Instagram shows when. Um, Tom Brady was doing some kind of like TV 12 or some bullshit. I feel like Instagram needs to be loved. It's about like once or twice a week. That, that was just. I think I know you talk about. But What's I up, Bubba? Isabel, well, she she gets up and talks to her lady, a little lady back. She's now we don't have them yet. See you tonight, you big stud. You just got a box of these new places. I think it may be what you're talking about. So if you look at the license tag, it's a silhouette. It's like a black, it's just like a white, very simple drawing of Tom Brady with 12 on it. 
and Florida the number. Is Nash, I need you to escort me out tonight, out tonight the, at 10 10. Covers it. Just, awesome. just jump on your back and just carry me through wherever the fuck I can put my car. Oh, that's freaking awesome. So, yeah, she loves the play. Dan's like, I want that light. Like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you. Yeah, I forgot I did that. I'm a man, Longwood. Shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dan's like, I get her license on her birthday? She can get it for another two weeks. Oh, okay. A week or so. Like, ten days or so. Because she's got the restricted on her birthday. They make it awful long time. Mm. I'll see you here, Chris. Wait, I'll be she, right here. Car, she, she's obviously got her own car. That's my car. Oh, okay. I just got past it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, it's, it's a, uh, actually, Big Country's bringing his cards tonight. I'm going to bring my cards, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I don't think I'm going to have anything to open, but there's a card There's a card show going on across the street this weekend. I, I was just across the street. At the hotel on the corner of uh, West Shore and Cypress. The hotel. They have a card show there. But I'm just happy to fucking roll around town when I was off, like, when I What's up, Brian? She was awesome. Now we'll be pretty pretty well attended. So yeah, they normally are. The TV, uh... The TV talk, right? Because my uh, kind of a little awkward if there's nobody in there, but I, you know, I make sure there's people in there. Oh, yeah, no problem, Yoko. Actually, Lummy just told me that Walker's getting into Blippy. Blippy bad. Blippy bad. You have your Lambo, right? Like, I don't have it wrapped yet, so I don't want to drive it in the shade weather. It wasn't. Ah, uh, someone's got to watch the little pickpocket or curve for just the front. And then once I got the paint, I was looking at it. I mean, I'd I'd say get your hands on any Marvin Jr. you can. Those Marvin Harrison Jr. Bowman cards are great. Is that going to change, like, the the way it looks? No, it doesn't look change at all. Oh, okay. Uh, It's just a clear, but it's it's a stealth wrap. Mm. It's it's, it's also a a, a wrap made for that. I have to shift my collecting from Justin Fields to Caleb Williams now. Yeah, because that paint is probably really easy to scratch. Mm. It'll show. It's, 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 yeah. Man, Pedroia, he hung on for a long time at the end of his career. He was just hurt every year. <clears throat> Boston legend, though. <laughs> Listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. After the show, make sure to check out BubbaArmyHQ.com. It's all things Bubba 24 7. And now back to the BRN. Man, today has flown by, has it not? Jesus Lord. We're having fun. Penis pumping and Seth trying to make car deals for Bubba 199 is going to go from a music festival to a card show. <clears throat> Be all off air. All transactions will be off air. Everything's gonna Thanks. be off air. Just big countries bringing his cards tonight. I'll bring some cards. Thanks. What if Big Red had some cards? He, he, big Red does have some cards. He's did, got those cards for the break that he won. Didn't he like put in eighty and won like five hundred? Wouldn't it, didn't he? Didn't he win the break better than anybody? Yeah. Yeah. He had a great break. Seventy-five bucks. Yeah. And he. I don't know. Probably won. Yeah. Three, four hundred dollars worth of cards. Uh, we often think. Of living a more healthy lifestyle, uh, Lummy, and it means it isn't necessary. We all we assume it means big, subs- unsustainable changes. Well, not with Super B Heart Chews. You can get a daily blood blood pressure support in two in just two tasty chews, and they even promote heart healthy energy without the stimulants. They taste great. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants of Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting norm- normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle in itself. Uh, from Super Beats, it's the number one doctor, pharmaceutical, and cardiologist recommended beat brand for cardiovascular health support. You can double your potential of Super Beat Heart Chews and get a free month supply of Super Beat Heart Chews on all bundles. You're also going to get a free full size bag of turmeric. Yes, you get all of that, all of that on a bundle, and it's valued at $25. And it starts and stops by going to BubbaLovesBeats.com. Again, 
Get this exclusive offer at BubbaLovesBeats.com. We've been we've been at them what almost a year, maybe two I, I years. This is going on two years. Um, the big crisis that we're fighting right now. Maybe I'll ask Don Miller about it yesterday. I did. I'll tell you one thing. I did enjoy the Shannon and Brian little mini battle. That was fun. I like that. Brett, may, can just a suggestion? Can we make that a, maybe a standalone? Uh, blue, blue, blue snowflake boy. Uh, uh, Brian, the baby face from a Trony verse. Hardcore red Shannon. Yeah. Do you know what I noticed when I listened to that? I did listen to part of that. That Shannon's got the voice of a god? Yes, and also he has the intelligence, background, education, and prep of a god. And that Brian well, Nobody looked, out-preps him. He Brian pre- just looked like, you know, just outclassed, out, out, <laughs> out-researched, just completely outmaneuvered. I mean, he really looked like... Uh, he just got like bitch slapped, like a sa- like really? a big killer whale yeah, slapping around down. a little baby seal. Yeah, it was ugly. Down. It was almost not even fair. <laughs> he couldn't even answer the questions. He tried to answer them with different questions. It was like watching. <laughs> it was like watching a bunch of liberals trying to talk smack on on like MSNBC, and they couldn't. He could not <laughs> rebuke or challenge what Shannon was saying. Shannon owned his ass. It tells how you really feel. Bitch. Are you done, buddy? <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Shot fire. Uh, wild, wild moments uh, as hundreds of migrants make a dash for the border in El Paso after breaching te- uh, Texas razor wire. Now, I've seen some of that razor wire up close, and it is like, I don't know how you can get through it. And I got to think, man, as soon as it nicks you, it, it, I mean, it's, uh, you better have long pants or something on because you can't go through with flip flops and shorts. And I think a lot of people do. Do they not? No, yeah. the two guys on the side you'll see in black hoodies are pulling it apart. Yeah. All right. Well, so, but, yeah. Uh, razor wire is devastating. I, one of the worst injuries I ever took care of was a guy that broke out of prison and he jumped through razor wire. And it's like a letter opener. It gets <gasps> underneath your skin and it makes these like 10 and 14 inch long cuts. It's oh, unbelievable how, how devastating. Just skin deep. It just like oh. grabs the end of the skin and cuts. It's designed not <laughs> to permanently injure you, but make you bleed, hurt, and slow you down. And it works. It is catastrophic. Don't cross razor wire, dumbasses. Well, that's why they put it up, but man, it, razor wire doesn't seem to work. Because, I mean, hundreds and thousands, hundreds of migrants broke through razor wire today at the wall of El Paso, Texas. Now, can, can we start shooting them? That's well, no, see, thinking. the problem is, is that uh, when, once they, they were trying to breach the razor wire to get to the uh, National the Guard. Yeah, I saw that. So they could get processed. <laughs> Technically. If we laid a few rounds of those up in the air. They'd all hit the deck and, and then turn around, don't you think? Might solve the whole problem. Nope, nope that's not going to stop them. They're boldened. They don't care. Shoot, shoot in the air all you want. They're still coming. Yeah, because they know I mean, that the National Guard them. behind them is going to uh, <laughs> have their back. Hours later, they breached the, uh, the, the, the area and made a rush for the border in El, El Paso, Texas. Here's various pictures. There should be a video in uh, there. As, wait, I, I tried to find the video. Um, let me see here. Is it, okay, right here. I think. Thank you. Uh, I think yeah. this is it. It's a different angle. Now, is this? Let me ask you a question. The border's like the number one tourist attraction in the world right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really is. Mm-hmm. Now, listen. Is this the wall for America? Yes. And before the wall, which I'm assuming that's the border, they put up this preliminary appetizer, other deterrents to try to just even so that you don't even get up to the wall. Well, that's Texas. Texas put that up. But once they but get now, to now, the wall. But hold on. Once they, is, is this still Texas and they've actually built the wall a little bit into Texas? Correct. Okay. So that's actually smarter because we can't really probably put anything in Mexico. They're not going to let us go over there and install razor wire on their Every, side of the fence. So, 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 we, so we have to have, we have to build the wall, maybe a couple football fields in on the border, right, Lummy? And then if we're going to have anything, you know, like an appetizer before the wall, which is like razor wire or something like that, well, then that's going to have to be on our land. Yeah, but it used to not be that way. It used to just be the wall when it was governed correctly. But then when obviously Snack Texas uh, got a, got involved, they had to put it on Texas land and not federal land. 
So they had to move the wall? <laughs> no, no, the point? wall is still where it is, but that's where the National Guard is. And that's why they broke through the Texas National Guard to get to the National Guard or the Border Patrol on the wall so then they can and get the, processed. And, the, and this is all because what? We we cannot seem – and do we, do, do we have the resources to have this wall more fortified – and less people being able to penetrate it. Do we have those resources and it's just a struggle between the feds saying that we're going to do less and the governor of Texas who's a, who's a Republican and, and Texas who is conservative and, and has a different... Listen, that's the, the problem in itself that both parties have different views on the wall. Well, Texas started building their own wall because the federal government well, uh, I know. started selling the wall. So what I'm saying is this, though. It fundamentally starts with each party having a different opinion. And motivation. And, and mm-hmm. immig- about how we handle immigration. Correct. Yes. One party's a little stricter about it. They want to really enforce that wall. They want to. They want to bust the coyotes. They want a lot. They they want to only let the best people in. And then there's another. I'm not telling you which one's which. And then there seems to be another party right now, this current party that says, "Man, we're going to let these people in as much as we can. Uh, we're going to give you money. We're going to give you t- t- tickets to whatever city you want to get to go to." Once you get to that city, we're going to have accommodations for you. If you go to New York, we can maybe you can stay at the at the Roosevelt. Yeah. We're going to have sanctuary Stipe cities. Stay the phone. You know, you can even be a, you can even be an illegal immigrant and make it and and cause trouble in New York. Get arrested. We're going to let you go, and then go down to Georgia and rape and kill a girl with a gun. After you got in trouble in Georgia, and we let you go. So there's two different mindsets here, right? Yes. <laughs> and and right now. I mean, this is, I think, I don't care what political affiliation you are, I think this is probably the number one issue that Americans Americans are talking about. Nope. Abortion. Nope. It's not that. There's, there, there, it does matter what side you're on, because the point is, by allowing 8 million people extra into the country, it's going to shift the um, electoral votes for each state. And so this is absolutely a play to increase the power of the Democrats in the federal government. 100%. Well, it's, it's what they're doing. <clears throat> Eight million people have to go somewhere. It's as much as a state. It's unbelievable the number. We're talking about 21 or 22 electoral votes. That's how much 8 million people represent. So if you shift 8 million. I mean, twenty-one or twenty-two electoral votes, especially in red states, to these from red states to blue states, the you know sanctuary states. Suddenly, if if a candidate wins that state, then they get that I mean, many more votes, I mean, and they get that many more re- just, congressmen in Congress. Just three states. Want, well, first of all, California is not in play because California is always blue. But when so, it gets three more I, delegates, I, I, listen, just hear me out. It's much bluer. Listen, Dan. <laughs> I, I know you like to suck the red D. I'm trying. I'm trying I'm to. I'm not sucking red D. I'm talking you, that's facts. That's all you do is suck red D. That's not true. It's, it is true. Pink D. No, it's red. It's as red as red can be. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to be right down the middle here. Purple. But sometimes it's tough for me to be red right down the middle. And you're just so violently red. <laughs> I mean, just so just chill out a little bit. Everybody gets it. And I agree with you. Oh, is that Jay? No, it's no. a red shirt. Oh, is Jay coming in today? I don't think he's he got is. A, he's got a. Uh, Huge deposition. All right. Well, make sure you tell me that. I'm sorry. I meant to tell you this this morning. That's on you. Stocked up on the drinks. And so, and so, let's take follow my reasoning here. Mm -hmm. Let's take California out of the equation because it's never. I can't. Probably the last time California was red was with Ronald Reagan. Okay. Yeah. That's that's probably it. Pretty yeah, much. Maybe with Schwarzenegger. And, sort and, of I, and, I, and I think, and I think that you know, like it's locked in. It's red. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's blue. It's yeah, blue it's as blue, blue can be. Mm-hmm. Now, but if you take Arizona and Texas, just those two, mm-hmm. Arizona and Texas, which historically the 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 GOP can say we got we got we got that's we got a stranglehold for years. You know, Texas and Arizona were always um, were always red. Well, as you let more of these migrant or immigrant illegal immigrants into the country then now if you can now turn texas and an arizona into blue or sometimes blue 
I mean, there's obviously a motive to do this. There's no they all come other, in and have there, 50 kids. There, there's no other way. There's nothing. Uh, listen, I would like for as 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 much of a open mind as I could potentially keep for somebody, whether it's Gary, whether it's Seth, whether it's Brian, to 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 give me an explanation on why this is good for our country. Yes, yeah, Seth, tell us why. <clears throat> Like, like, I mean, like what? Because because I'm open to it. Like, hey, letting, uh, you know, three million illegal immigrants into our country is good because blah, 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 blah. Oh, blah. you want me to give you like the standard talking point? Oh, I, I want to know. I want to know. Because for, this country was built on immigrants, Bubba. That's why it's the melting pot of America. It's the American dream to come here. And we with open arms, we'll take, you know, you're poor, you're tired, whatever. And they can come here and, you know, contribute to America's greatness. All right, thank you. Yeah, and 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 I appreciate that excuse. I like My, that one. I like the whole thing where they they'll do jobs that we won't do. I love that one too. All right, that's a, that's one of my but favorites. I would say, listen, there come situations and and eras of during our our during our countryness ship since being for for you know us being a country, we've had to make some pivotal changes on what we fundamentally used to believe in or what our country was built upon. We've had to make some changes. And, and we need to make some changes on this because we are full of a bunch of great people. We don't need the sick and the tired and the ones you don't want anymore because you know <laughs> what? We now got sick, tired, and people that don't want to be here. <clears throat> so, like, who's going to be the place that we immigrate to? Where Mars. do we Where do we immigrate? Mars? I think that's where do we get immigrate to? We've officially now become a country that's sick, tired, and has poor and so we can no longer be the breath of fresh air when we aren't sucking fresh air ourselves. Now I know that's very rudimentary, very Indiana like if you will, but I mean other than migrant crop farming, I can't think of why we are doing this. I just don't understand because we are at a such a tipping point of just regular Americans. Regular, single family, regular Americans, white, black, Latin, you know, doesn't matter. Midwestern, South, uh, Mon- live in Montana, New Jersey, Florida, just regular mom and dads with a kid that can't make it, that, that, that are having a problem of, 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 of both spouses working because jobs really aren't as plentiful as, they, as people say they are. They're really not. And so there's a lot of people in our country that are that that need help, and the hundreds of millions of dollars that we have spent on these on these migrants to to be welcome into our country could have been arguably spent on people that are really Americans, people that you know have were born here, people that have children here, like Ooh, us, veterans, real real Americans. We're uh, every one of us are real about. Well, on this not. What the hell? You're not. No, she's not. You, yes, I am. You, you're no, you're not. not. Papers, you did not take. Right, listen papers. to me. Everybody else that I speak of took their first breath on American soil. Well, are you an American if you're born abroad on a base on American base? Uh, yeah, but you, you weren't, weren't on an American. Base. I know, but I'm just trying to say that you don't so? necessarily don't, no, no, have no, no, to no, be no, born. American. Don't throw me a curveball when it doesn't apply to you. Why not? Because. We're talking about you. I was like a baby born abroad. My mom was American. She took her first breath in in, in Los Angeles. Your mom was American. Your dad was Israeli. And you were born. No, he's not. He's South African. He never had Israeli citizenship. Your first breath was in Israel. Sure. Right? But from but, the and, from an American uh, womb. From from an American womb with, with a South American penis. What the hell? So you're not. <laughs> yeah, my pure, dad's Colombian. You're not purebred American what the like hell me. Does that mean? Seth Kusher. Get out, bitch. It means, it means Seth Kusher is a purebred and American. Yeah. Oh, Dan Diaco. Purebred. Dan Diaco is a purebred and American. Yeah. Lummy, rat, macho, me, the merch crew. I'm a hybrid. God bless Be- America. Bella. God bless America. Scout. We're all Americans. Me too. We're a, no, you're not. I got a, a, you're an not American a, passport. You're an American Rich. because you got paperwork saying you're American. So do you. We do, yeah, but guess what? You can be I, deported. My, no, my, I can't. My paper, yes. I was born with my paperwork. I didn't have to go through a court system to get my paperwork. I was born with my That's paperwork. That's nice. Are you a citizen, Anna? 
Yes, Dan. She's oh, so not even an American. I have American dual citizen. citizenship. Yeah, but you okay. could you be don't hold it against me. You're you not a deported. real American. I mean, listen, no. you can say you're, you're not mean? a real American. I mean, you didn't crawl through razor, razor wire and you weren't born here. That's yeah. right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need, if you, uh, you're not a real American. We are. And you know what? All maybe, maybe, maybe except for Dan, every one of us, none of us are killing it. And, and every one of us could use uh, use a little bit of help. Of course. I mean, can, can you imagine if the money that we're giving these migrants for cell phones and housing and food and travel and all that kind of deal, if we were able to somehow, I don't know, make that a tax break for, you know, maybe you can, maybe, maybe, maybe you, you get more, you know, instead of your... Is it, if you have a kid, isn't it like seventy five hundred bucks dependent, like uh, for the yeah, taxes? Kind of, yeah. Right, so what if it was fifteen thousand? Yeah, what what I, if your child now represented a fifteen thousand dollar deduction on your taxes instead of seventy five hundred? That would really help a family. That would really, yep. re- that would really, really help everybody. Black, white, mm-hmm. uh, 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 affluent, non affluent. If little Sethy ta- uh, Seth, uh, Seth on your taxes gets you seventy five dollars off your gross, you know what you made, but next year because we're not letting so many immigrants in, little Sethy now gets you fifteen k off. <laughs> Sign me up. I mean, I'll have eleven more kids at that point. Exactly. <laughs> But that's what the immigrants are doing. That's what the migrants Phoebe, are doing. You're going to be pregnant for the next 10 years, bitch. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah, they're going to have more kids that's here their and they're going to start taking people's houses. That's their template. I'm just yeah. saying, man. I just don't. I just wish, other than, you know, other than, uh, uh, you know, crop migration and delegate patty, oh, you know, changing states around politically, I just can't wrap my head around why, why we are. Do we, just, I, I, I just cannot understand it, and it's such dirty politics. I think so. I think one of the reasons it's dirty politics is I think both parties like them for their labor. And I think cheap labor is something that's always been part of America in every country. Um, if you can't get cheap labor from immigrants, you, you have slaves. And that's how, that's the history of the world for the last 3,000 years. But Yeah, but these people aren't working. <laughs> I, but but, but that's, that, was the, that was the, I think, motivation up until about four years ago, three years ago. Now I really do believe it's to shift the Electoral College. All right, hold on. Let me play a little bit of this. Okay, here what I hear. I can't even know you're playing. Where's the play button at? It's right, right in the on center. His chest. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this video. This happened uh, just a few hours ago here. Hey, on- Josh, Josh Rojas' uh, 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 fat Mexican cousin. <clears throat> Sorry, very inside. The eastern side of El Paso, see you can see back. behind me, uh, the large border wall, and beyond it, uh, several hundred more oh yards God, before you so get scary. to the Rio Grande. And beyond that, which you really can't really see from this vantage point, is another long line of chain link fence and razor wire that has been put in place by uh, Texas National Guard soldiers over the last uh, several months. And what happens... And, and, are so, they even armed? So, 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 no, I don't think they are. So let me ask you a question. These people that are, are not Americans... Are fighting like animals to get into our country against you know U.S. you know decorated soldiers or or at least you know crossing workers or it's the National Guard, no, Texas National know, Guard. Yeah, but they're Americans. Yeah, of course. And they're, they're I mean, the, like this person, like this guy right here, that like they can go on to be productive in our country. You're, you're you're acting like a wild hyena to get into our country. You think you're going to be able to calm down and go work a jewelry store in, store in Chicago? <laughs> no. No, you're not. You're going to get here because you want free money and you want to be able to act like an animal. That's how you got here. We're letting animals in. Several hours ago is that we were told by uh, CBP officials uh, that there were a, a number, several hundred migrants Dude, uh, that essentially like overwhelmed the number of uh, Texas National Guard soldiers that were there. We're also told that, and we witnessed this uh, when, we, when we arrived here at the scene, uh, all of these migrants were then uh, taken into uh, Border Patrol custody, and they are right now in the process of being uh, processed by Border Patrol. They were put on buses. What we saw is uh, mostly a, lo- a massive group of uh, young men, also women and children, part of this group. Now, bus where? As well. Um, and all of this, you know, we should be very clear is uh, we're not exactly sure what what instigated this or what what sparked uh, this particular tension to arise at this moment. We were told. Let me. I know that the next viral sensation that I have come up with is the Diaco Law, Tarpon Mark, uh, Mike's Lawnmower, Diaco's Diaco Plastic Institute is technology, $10,000 uh, a, a cash cube. Right. Yeah. I, I know I've come up with that. But Lumpy, I think one of our, I think we should fly you like down to Mexico, okay? Okay. 
<clears throat> and you g- document yourself live trying to make it through the border. Perfect. And, and like saying, I'm an American. I just, you know, I, I'm just see and see the trials and tribulations of what these people have to go through, like processing and jumping the river and all of that. Perfect. Wouldn't that be cool if, yeah. we, if we bet embedded a lummy into the migrant, you know, the, the migrant scene? Uh, awesome. By Border Patrol officials here in this region that uh, there hasn't been any kind of sign of rising tensions between migrants and Border Patrol officials and National Guard soldiers uh, over the last few days leading up to this. So the circumstances of what led to it and what sparked all of this is unclear at this moment. So, so they had a so they had a little outburst yesterday, right? Wait, so let me just ask this question: Hi, If I'm Tom, hi Tom. If an American were to push a police officer like that, isn't that like a felony? Oh hell yes! Well, one, but, one immigrant got arrested. Oh okay, but the rest of them were processed and let in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, let me let me do words, and then we'll do Don Miller next. Sounds good. All right, cool. It's the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Want to listen to the show on demand and on the go? Enlist today at BubbaArmyHQ.com and sign up and start listening. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. Thank you for the uh, wipes. Trying. I'll get you some Tide pens. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Bye, Dan. Have a good one. Okay, Danny. Bye, Danny. You got the guest? Yep, I got it. Oh, okay. See you guys. Have a Bye, Danny, man. Bye. Bye. I'm going to text you, you something. I'm going to text you something. I'm not doing anything. Yes, sir. Uh, let I'm me, I'm going to text I mean, Anna, I'm going to text you something. Yes, sir. Can you, IM, can you get that to your IM to me? Sure. Okay. No problem. <clears throat> no problem. <clears throat> He wants to do a, a check with him, make sure he can hear him and everything. You just talk to him real quick. Can you hear him? Stevie, can you hear me? I sent it. Tell me he's correct. You need to turn up your volume a little bit, bud. Hey, Bubba. There we go. Oh, that's good right there. That's really good. Well, hang on a second. Let me put Don on because he talks way louder to me. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hello. Don, how are you? Don, how are you, bud? Hey, what's going on, babe? All right, so we got you in about four minutes and 30 seconds, okay? I'm here. Okay, buddy. We'll see you in a little bit. All right. Send you that article. I don't know if you got it. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> Moment. Stick with Sports Pulse, your heartbeat to what's trending in sports. This is March. The mid-
Bubba 199 is always at 8 p.m. Camp Terry. I will, Berto. Sorry, I said it's you, Paul. Uh, I'm not sure if the, phone, uh, if the phone lines are open. Yeah, they are. Oh, they're open. The Love Sponge Show. Miss part of the show? We got you covered at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to Bubba Live Worldwide. Uh, standing by on the um, studio to studio Comrex, which has great quality. Shannon has one at his house, and of course, JVC has one uh, there at the studios, and I think that's what Don, Don is using right now. Uh, it's the midday guy uh, for Florida Man Radio, and I've quickly become a fan. I really like this guy's swagger. This guy says some stuff that I wish I could say. Uh, and uh, well, Don, well, welcome. How are you, my friend? Good morning, Bubba. Uh, how you doing? Uh, what's the average Don Miller day? Like, is, is, is being on the radio your only job, Don? Like, the guy before you was like a lawyer and like a couple other things. Or is this the Don Miller? Or is he just straight a radio personnel? Bubba, you know you can't be on the damn radio for one that's your only job. Damn, hell no. I got to go to work when I leave here. What Now, where, what's Don Miller do? <laughs> Uh, I put out fires. Oh, okay. I get you. All right. I understand. <laughs> I have been uh, putting out fires for probably the better part of 30 years. I've worked in public relations, a little crisis management. Uh, but, yep, for about 30 years, and I'm still doing it. And uh, Now, how did, you, how did you first get your start in radio? Was it the vision of, of the great, of the great let me, I mean, uh, Seth, you're a big uh, Stevie DeMann fan, are you Oh, not? Yeah. Was it was it where you did did Stevie Demand uh, find you or had you been dabbling around in radio a little bit before? I've been in radio a long time. Uh, Stevie Demand, I found Stevie, and uh, <laughs> there's Stevie. I, I found Stevie, and they needed a Negro. Oh, and it's called the Nan program. Need a Negro, right? Wow, hold on. Oh, I, wow. I, I, I haven't heard of that I, one. I, I, I love that, and I think Stevie might be onto something. I think all big corporations need yes. to need to have that program. Yeah, I think you go away from DEI and just go straight to the Nan program. Need a Negro, but you got to also understand the process of pan. Pick a Negro as well. Oh, okay. Well, I think it looks like we're killing it there on one zero three one. We pick, we found one and we picked one, and that that and that that guy is killing it. I mean, I was I was listening to your take on the um, who's the Fonnie Willis. Yeah, I was driving to to Gainesville a few weeks ago, and I was going through Ocala, and I was listening to your take on the, what's her name? Let me Fonnie Willis. Fonnie Willis, and you were like, listen, man. We got to stop playing the black card, and sometimes we just got to take L's. We just got to take some losses around here instead of thinking that we can always just win. Well, well, Fanny Willis, I call, I like to call her Fanny Willing, okay, because one thing I learned as a young kid growing up on the south side of Chicago, oh, God. Hey, Seth, Mr. how about that, south side of Chicago? There you oh, go. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, Mr. Willie, he's a pimp. He told me. Baby boy, you can't turn a trick into a treat. <laughs> I see that. Can't turn a trick into the treat. Can't hey, turn I, a trick into a treat. I, 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 I used to work at B96, 
and I actually was one of the very few white guys that would take the B96 van down to Cabrini Green, and, <laughs> and, and I would go out there and hand out all these free handouts to all the you know, Cabrini Green people. Uh-huh. Now, you know the Cabrini Green, I mean, there's some hardcore brothers up in there, right? Yeah, it used to be as gentrified. Of one bedroom, one bath cost 840000 <laughs> So oh, wow. now, is, is Cabrini Green still a thing in Chicago? Uh, no, it's gone now, uh, but that area, Bubba, I'm telling you, is one of the most beautiful areas you've ever seen uh, as you remember uh, when you were there well uh, when you, i was there it was one of it the, was bad it was one of the like it was like the it was the worst most violent place in chicago and so i went down there as a white guy and i would <laughs> hand out like free concert tickets and cds and stuff like that and it got to be that anytime that b96 had to, i was like the only white dude down there and they loved me they absolutely loved me yeah you, the, the issue with cabrini green was never about race it was about people who everybody there, nobody had anything. And I think when you stack, like the, the number at one point was 19,000 tenants within a quarter of a mile radius. So the issue wasn't about race. The white people went over. That's where they got the good cocaine from. You know that. Yeah, the white people wanted some man. If you want some good coke, you can go to uh, maybe you can go to Naperville. But if you want the stuff, but if you want the stuff that the, you got to get what the brothers are slinging in, in Cabrini Green because that stuff is uncut and good. And now you might get stabbed down there. Absolutely, you might get rolled. But man, you're gonna get some good coke back in yeah. the day. Yeah, Bubba, you know, I, I, I remember growing listening, you know, you you were, you and I may be around the same age, you may be a little younger, but I remember those days when you were at B96, and uh, you had a large audience, and I just want to say how much I appreciate oh, what you've well, thank done. Me and well, Bad Boy Bill. Remember and, Bill? I mean, hold on, Julian <laughs> Jumping Perez, Tim, yes. Tim Spinning Schomer, yes. Frankie Knuckles Rodriguez, all part of the Hit Mix 5, remember the hot, that? Yeah, the Hot Mix 5, the hot Frankie, mix. Farley, Julian, yes, yeah. all those guys. Julian Jumping Perez, still, I think he actually signed up, like, ran to be a, an alderman or a council member yeah. or yes, something like that. Yes, he did. He ran for the city council, and and he didn't win, but Julian is still spinning records. Uh, Frankie, Frankie passed away. Uh, but Bubba, I remember there were people who thought you were a black guy for a long ass oh, time. Oh, there would be there would be <laughs> year. Yeah, people would be sometimes disappointed when they would meet me and they they would see a fat white guy and they'd be like, "I thought that was a cool ass brother on the on the radio." Absolutely, man. Those were some good old days. I was the first black assistant manager at Mother's. Remember Mother's, Bubba? It was the white club on Rush Street. Yeah. And they again, the NAM program, they needed a Negro. And they found it, too. <laughs> so what? Like, what's on the Don Miller show today? Got a lot to get to. Of course, I want to get to why none of the migrant illegals were shot at. Okay? If, if we did that over here, uh, somebody's going to get shot. If we rush the National Guard, we rush the police, somebody's going to get shot. I want to talk about that uh, because I'm, what I'm seeing, Bubble, is uh, you guys just alluded to it. Uh, this is a problem. This is a great replacement. And the arrogance of uh, this administration to drop 4,000, 5,000 illegals. When I say illegals, I mean people who have circumvented the system, who have walked into this country and are living off other people's work. And so when they come in this country, you drop four, four or 5,000 on the west side of Chicago and the south side of Chicago. That's a different level of arrogance. And so, uh, yeah, I want to hit on that for sure. And, you know, you know and, and here's the thing. So we're dropping all these migrants, all these immigrants that don't know their way around town. They're not maybe not necessarily the, the nicest or the best people. Mm-hmm. And Chicago already has a problem with, uh, with Americans, the, Americans <laughs> that were born in Chicago fighting and killing each other. Absolutely. I mean, like, like 17, 18. No, doesn't Chicago have anywhere between like 15 and 20 shootings a weekend? Uh, probably the average right now, maybe at, at 23, 24. There, yeah, I, I follow it every week as a website that's amazing uh, that I go to called HeyJackass.com. It can pinpoint where the person was shot on their body to, to the second in which but it But when happened. does the Chicago's and the L.A.'s and the Philadelphia's and the New York cities? when do they put in a guy like Grady Judd or, you know, they put on a, you know, they put in a, in a, con, a, a conservative, very pro police type guy or because isn't it just going to continue just to continue to deteriorate if, if you put the, the, these, these, these liberal woke ass mayors that are ruining the San Francisco's, you know, the ruining the Chicago's. I mean, 
wasn't Laura. What was that girl, Lori La- Lightfoot? Oh, you mean that? that yeah. You mean that uh, that guy, Beetlejuice? Yeah, Beetlejuice. Yeah, yeah, she but, but, needs. She <laughs> needs. Honest to God, like yeah. how can the people of Chicago be be there? Chicago is about grit. Chicago is about Absolutely. the working man. And and how can those people that live in inner city Chicago, black, white, or whatever, how can they put these buffoons in there, knowing that they're anti-police, they're woke? That they're, 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 how can they do the, that? The great Biggest problem in America today is woke as white people. And <laughs> let's be clear. If we want to have a real conversation, woke whites are ruining our country. Okay? I'm just telling you, Bob. Yeah, we need to get on the N. Was it N E N program? <laughs> Nan, need a Negro. But you know what? I, can I can I can I can I put a can I put the word good in there? Oh, absolutely. Please put that in there. Can, oh, I smart. Mean, or smart or intelligent yeah. or non-woke. Just, just like if I'm going to hire a white guy, I want him to be smart and intelligent. Yes. Well, yes. if I want to hire a black guy, I want him to have the same you know, attributes. Absolutely, 100%. Right. But when you look at the city right now, just we, since we're talking about Chicago, the mayor, I call him bitch-ass Brandon Johnson. We are raising a, a, an, an entire uh, community uh, in a in this country of bitch ass men, soft men. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened to the old guys who took care look, that we looked up to, but these are the softest bitch ass men I've ever seen. I mean, we don't have. I mean, we don't have real. We 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 were taught to go to work at 18, either go to college or go to work. Yes. You know, we we made our way. Yes. Our parents helped us a little bit if we needed it, but you know, get your ass out there and pull yourself up and 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 get and get to and get to and, contributing or or get get to. Get to contribute or being self-sufficient, and nonetheless, there's 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 yeah. kids now that are living with their parents till they're thirty years old. Yeah, and, and they are total. They always complain. Okay, it's everybody else's fault, man. We got to shut them down, man. Look, man, if you got a raggedy ass kid hanging around the house at twenty seven, you might be one to ask that child to get out of your damn house. My mama told me, look, if you're not bringing money in by the time you're twenty, you got to find somewhere else to go. <laughs> now, and they, I mean, and if we were to further. Sag fragmented into the African American community. Mm-hmm. I think, in my personal opinion, and I've heard you talk about it. The only reason I'm bringing it up is because I heard you talk about it. Yep. But that's the absence of a strong black ma- a black dad. That's the the, the the absence of that. That's yes, where that's where a lot of the African American community is deteriorating. Is the fact that these these men are not raising their sons and their daughters. They're going out and you know doing whatever. Which now these sons and daughters are being being raised by grandmas and grandpas. Absolutely. And that's one of that's one of the one of the big big issue. And I hear you talk about it on the show all the time. Well, Bubba, it, it used to be the sons and daughters were raised by grandmothers when we were coming up. If there was a fail you or a glitch in the family structure absolutely big mama was gonna step right in or somebody's auntie the problem is now the grandmama's 34 okay so <laughs> damn okay <laughs> grandma's 34 and she's going to the club to friday night right uh, right <laughs> she's on the pole grandma's 34 she's on the pole and she's selling right she's selling crack on saturdays it, that's the problem grandma's I'm not even 40. You know, I know a young lady's got two grandkids. She's 38 years old. She can't help herself. And so, and the, and the and her daughter or her son yes. who produce these, are they together as a family unit? Hell the, no. They, Come on, they, Bubba. They, you know they ain't together, man. Why are you trying to be funny, man? Don't disrespect me like that. Hell I'm, no, I'm man. Just, I'm just asking, man. Jesus, trying to no, get the stats, Bubba, brother. I'm still trying to find my daddy. If he walked up now, I'd hit him in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bubba. Bubba, you get on this damn radio act like you some high-faluted white dude. You from middle America. You know the system, I'm bro. I'm from Warsaw, Indiana. We only had three black guys in the entire town, and, and they, were all, they were all, you know, like, when you only have three black guys in your entire town of 7,000, mm-hmm. then those black guys aren't even black guys. They're just white guys. They're okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. We didn't have no problem with them. In fact, they were all really smart, did really well in school, uh, didn't, one of them played basketball, the other two, you know, whatever. The, the, they were the the, fa- the the two families were the Cooks and the Churchills, mm-hmm. and the Cooks were a little more affluent. The mm-hmm. Churchills were a little more rough around the edges, but the <laughs> Churchills, man, their dad was a badass, and like Sammy Churchill went to school with me, and Sammy was the most well-behaved guy, not white or black. He was the most well-behaved because Sammy Churchill's dad, Jerome Churchill, that was he looked like the guy from a, uh, from um, Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> but, but if your daddy named Jerome, you know you go. 
going to get your ass toe up, okay? <laughs> I mean, his dad looked like the guy from Shawshank Redemption, and we were like, Absolutely. man, we, we wouldn't even go to Sam's house to play, not because he was a black guy, because his dad was like 6'4", 260. <laughs> and we were afraid that, you know, he just, get, just and he could whip, and Sammy Churchill's dad, Jerome, he could whip all of our dad's asses. So if we would do something, our dads couldn't even go over there and do, like, they'd get their ass whipped. Right. You know what's funny, though, Bubba, you, when you talk about uh, growing I'm looking at America today in this conversation about race that's being driven directly. Uh, it's a to- total narrative. You know, anybody you grew up with in that era and that era of the country, uh, there was not, the conversation about race wasn't even on the on the it wasn't even in the conversation. Sammy Churchill could date <laughs> Megan Korshak. You know what I mean? She, he could. <laughs> Nobody but, gave a damn. I mean, well, I mean, it was a little. I mean, Megan Korshak may have got a little flack, but <laughs> but but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Sammy Churchill didn't have to get worried about getting hung or getting right, you know like he was. Sammy Churchill was just a smooth ass <laughs> brother at that point. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Absolutely. Now what now what what do you think about you know the the Black Lives Matter movement? Come on, Bubba man, why you you know what I. Think think about black lives marketing try, but hold on I'm it's trying, black hold, lives marketing hold on, that's I'm, what it don was. i'm trying to introduce my audience to you <laughs> so i'm asking you softball questions uh, okay, okay. so that my audience can be like god dang that is the coolest black guy okay. i've ever heard so when i get done listening to bubba i'm gonna go find the florida okay. man okay. radio let, let me, app let me turn man, it on uh, so anybody like right. for my audience right now let's say well, it's listening well, bubba, to me black lives count. matter what's a black lives matter was a con bubba it was a total con just like george floyd was was not a hero. Let's be clear. All right. Let's be clear. That's what I talk about on the Don Miller show. Black Lives Matter was a con, but it was supported by some woke ass white people <clears throat> and white guilt at the time. This is where the whole DEI conversation came at. George Floyd wasn't the first time he was the film time. So everybody felt guilty Ooh, about what they I saw. I like that. It wasn't the first time. It was the first filmed time. Yes, sir. Wow. That's strong. Yes. And, and and so like with regards to the uh, you know the black the Black Lives Matter are these girls are they any of them going to get prosecuted are they going to are they going to get prosecuted this isn't like six million dollars uh, if I think it happens if we get President Trump back in I think that the Department of Justice right now is all over the place uh, they stole a lot of money a lot more than six million dollars they bought a six million dollar house yeah right uh, but again a bunch of lesbians Black Lives Matter came out of the LGBT conversation. A bunch of lesbians saw inroads, and if you look at the black community, and those how, lesbians are always smart. They're always on the. I'm on, telling you, on the man, they always hell. and they know how to co-op. So everybody co-ops black people. Hey, let's get over there to the black people. They'll support it, but they didn't care about what happened in Minnesota because if they cared about what happened in Minnesota, the problem wouldn't have been the cop as much as it would have been Amy Klobuchar, who was the district attorney when this cop came before her nine or ten times for <clears throat> for just engaging in this kind of behavior. But these so same say, people. So you're saying that Amy Klobuchar had an opportunity to get what, what was that? Jared Chauvin. To, get in, yes. To, in order to get to show, get Chauvin's off right. the force, or at least get him on the radar of being mm-hmm. a bad cop, so yep. that woman could have stopped this whole scenario. Absolutely. And Bubba, in the midst of this case, in the midst of this American, where everybody in the world is looking at Minnesota, Amy Klobuchar, the arrogant bitch, is running for president of the United States. Does anybody remember that? No. And nobody attached her to this. Amy Cho, she was the district attorney in Hennepin County when this guy got in trouble over and over and over again, yet she did nothing about it, and she runs as a Democrat for, she puts her name in the hat for president, and nobody says anything. Now, does does Biden or does the Democratic Party know just how i mean you're an african-american man you're a talk show host you have you know pretty good ties to the african-american community you are you know very very much a breath of 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 fresh air in the in 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 the whole conservative talk show arena but like do the democrats know that african-americans for the most part are no longer just a shoe in for them to vote for the current guy they got in there and that after there's a lot of african-americans that are like listen man we need a change and now you know that doesn't mean we're going to go blow you know, vote blue right on down the line. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna make a change here. Does the does the Democrats know that their African American numbers have slipped like nearly fifty percent since uh, since the election? Let, let me tell you how bad, how much they know. They just had a uh, Glorilla at the White House. Okay, Glorilla. I don't know if you guys know. Let me got to know who Glorilla is. Oh, yeah. Right, Glorilla is horrible. She she's got a fourth grade education. 
Yep. They just had the vice president sitting with Sexy Red. Sexy oh Red my God. is horrible. Sexy Red got a third grade education, and her number one selling lipstick is gonorrhea green. Yes, they know. They're desperate. <laughs> No, for real. She's got a uh, she's got a cosmetic. I'm looking line. up right now. Well, yeah, real, though, she does, her yeah, cousin on. is Cardi B. So, yeah, hold on. Yeah, so so uh, was it illegal reds on her name? Yeah, that's uh, one. No, of the, yeah. yeah, sexy red who Se- has, yeah. a, sexy has a sexy red se- has a lipstick line. Her gonorrhea green is one of her most popular colors. And, and so, dis- discharge so when, yellow. So when does <laughs> when does the African American community say no? We ain't doing this. We're, we're not we're not making a, a woman that wants to come up with STD you know based lipsticks. We're, that doesn't represent Don Miller. That doesn't represent the average you know uh, American. Before I put African in there, the average you know you know dark. Yeah, I'm dark, American. I'm an American. Bro. Right. I'm sorry, but you know the average you know dark you know black or American American. But you know, dark, you know, darker skinned American yeah. that 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 they that they don't want that. They're not into the. But, but I'm telling you, Bubba, they see it. They don't know how to handle it because black people have been. You think uh, this is what I say all the time. Uh, black people have been the side chick to the Democratic Party historically, right? They only come see us when it's that time, right? You remember, I don't know yeah, if you know what side, a side chick Yeah, is. side ass. You got some side ass. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so now all of a sudden they see it's not working and they're in a panic. They've lost the young Do you young think we can get sure. the African Americans to be the, the GOP side ass? Do you think I, we can? I, I could tell you what's going to happen. The number's going to shift significantly. They may not go. Look, a lot of black people aren't. Republican, but they're Trumpers. And I think we have to separate the difference between the Republican Party and Trumpers. There are black people who love Trump all over this country. But of course, the media is downplaying it. You can go from Maine to Mississippi, and I'm telling you, you can find black people who support this president because they are identifying with the weaponization of the justice system against this guy as they did to Skeeter, Deontay, and Jaquan. Okay? So, again, when you weaponize a system, think about this. Think about it. Before 1972, I got a caller called in the other day. We were talking about this. The prison industrial complex was single-handedly created by Joe Biden and a couple of his racist buddies, Strom Thurmond and Robert Byrd, right? And that is his claim to fame, uh, his, his, his legislative action judicially, sending people to prison for 30 years. Uh, much for, like much like Eisenhower, absolutely. You know, he uh, you know he warned the American public in his going away speech of the yep. industry, the industry complex or the yep. military, military industry complex, in, yep, and absolutely. how that would be potentially the way that our country gets destroyed. Why we are beholden to be in a war mm-hmm. via. So now you're saying you know let's take that a step further right. uh, and 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 go with what you know what you said. You, you think about this right. Uh, Right now, there's still almost 17,000 people incarcerated in America's prison system for marijuana, for reefer, right? Yet reefer is the fastest growing. It's just, it's so not it's one, of the, it's one of the largest growing, like if you're an entrepreneur yeah. and mm-hmm. you can get in on the, uh, I, I can legally grow weed and have a dispensary deal. I mean, you're going to be printing money. You know, yes, I mean, absolutely. So, so nobody should be in jail for weed. So there's 17,000 people federally that are in jail. No, for- no, not federally. State because so just, uh, just in the state of Florida, there's seventeen thousand uh, African Americans or seventeen thousand people. Seventeen thousand people across the country. Across the country for, for marijuana. <laughs> but now listen, this is why the curveball conversation always pops out of the, the Democrats' mouth. Listen to this. Joe Biden said he pardoned people for marijuana. First of all, to be in federal prison, which is the only place he can pardon. You got to have 13,000 pounds of reefer, okay? Nobody goes to federal jail for selling small amounts of reefer. But nobody pays attention. Everybody's so excited to hear somebody acknowledge something that their struggle is. I just believe we need to start picking our struggle, man. You pick your struggle. Everything can't be your struggle. And the fact that the Democrats have just bludgeoned to death the black community. But I am so hopeful uh, that the black community is rising up. If you look at what's happening in Chicago, they are protesting to bringing uh, the Democratic nasty convention there this summer. They don't want it. Do you uh, get a lot of pushback from other black people? Yeah, like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What, what is, do they call you like a, like hell Uncle yeah. Tom and hell, stuff? Okay. Hell yeah. I, I'm an Uncle Tom. I'm a coon. I've been a bootlicker. But I also been denied interest into the NAACP. You can Google my name and the NAACP. Uh, yeah, I'm only black person I know that have been denied interest. <laughs> that's kind of bad. The only, mad, the only bad person that's on the that's got a media platform that's denied from the NAACP. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Now, on what grounds? Uh, they they didn't want me, Bubba. You have been put out of something, Bubba. 
Oh, yeah, I got been put out of a lot. But don't, okay, get started, don't, get, don't, don't get me started, Don. Don't get me started, Don. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they thought they, that they, I they was attacking them. They just you were just too, too volatile, too... No, too no, they thought I was attacking the organization. And my thing with the history of the National Association for the Advancement of, of Colored People when it started, when it was founded by the white lady, Mary Ovington, uh, a Jewish lady, might I add, who went out and got W.E.B. and Ida B. Wells and some other black people, uh, the mission was a really good, solid mission. OK, out what we've seen over the years is the National Association for the Advancement of Certain People or corporate protectionism. I can tell you it does. It gives no damn about people uh, that it was started for. So, again, they didn't want to hear that. Uh, they couldn't prove me wrong, so they denied my interest. Donald Trump needs to put you on his cabinet, uh, Don man. Miller. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> man, yeah. I can't run for student council, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> Hey, Don, maybe from time to time, every couple weeks or so, I really like your swagger. I love your show. I try to catch it as much as I can. By the way, if you're Bubba Army and you're listening to me, like, let's say in Phoenix or one of our, our other places other than Florida Man Radio, you can go get the Florida Man Radio app. Anywhere you can get your app, just type in Florida Man Radio. Get the app, and you could, Don Miller is on right after me, between me and Shannon Burke. Uh, and he really, really, he's, I, I gotta tell you, I've told, I've told Shannon privately and I've told Shane privately no less than three or four times, Don Miller, listen, me and me and Shannon may be the two established guys, whatever I said, but Don Miller is the up and right up, up and coming star on this format. You really, really are. You're a breath of fresh air, very well spoken, high, very well educated. And one of the very, very few African-American men that'll lay his balls out on the table and say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to say that, and I'm going to stand behind it. And, and not, not a lot of people are doing that, Don. Well, Bubba, I appreciate you. I'm going to keep trying to do it as long as I can. But this is what I want to tell people. If you want to take a position on the issue, don't change weed mans. Keep the same weed man, okay? I got the same weed man for 31 years. Yeah, so, so make any kind of changes you want. Zan- man, Zantavius, stick, Zantavius Johnson. Stick, stick, <laughs> stick, <laughs> stick with the same weed man, right? Yep, don't change. Because, man, when the weed man changes, you uh, probably know that somebody's up to no good trying to, trying to, trying to arrest a brother. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, my friend. Mm-hmm. Hey, Don, look, I look to talking to you soon, my friend. Tell Stevie thanks for hooking us up. Okay. And uh, don't forget, Don comes on right about 10 o'clock, 10 to 2. Uh, between me and Shannon, so on, on Florida Man Radio, go get the right. app if you want to hear the one the the, coo- the coolest brother there there is. And from time to time, Don, let's do updates, okay? All buddy? right, thank you so much. Thanks, Appreciate Don. it. Bye, bye, bye y'all. Bye, bye, bye. Bye now. Isn't it? Isn't it? Re- funny. But isn't it refreshing <laughs> to have a black guy go in there and and, and have a, a a political or or, or just a, a monologic like you know he's a monologue or he monologues and talks about the news, but. Com- as, with common sense. Not only that, as it's a black just... man with common sense, and does the furthest thing from even trying to play the black card. I think the the most refreshing thing about him is you can have an honest conversation with him without feeling like you're about to be called a racist at right. every moment of I bet the you conversation. Know, I bet you know what? I bet you that happens a lot. If you say Some anything, people... you're like, uh, maybe the bl- uh, father absence is a problem in the, in, the, in the black community. They're like, racist! You're like, okay, well, I don't know how to help. Uh, uh, Gil, 40 on the cash app, Don Miller. For, great take for Don Miller. Don Miller, man. Love that guy. Love that guy. I want, but but I wonder, like, c- could a guy like Grady Judd, or, or you know, so, or somebody like that, could could that person get elected in these larger cities, or is it just there's just not enough people to elect a guy like that? There's not enough people to elect a guy like that. Is that? I is think that, Grady Judd could be governor here. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm talking like about Chicago, like, Philly. I'm talking about like have some of these big city, metropolitan cities that are having huge problems uh, based on d- defunding the police, and you know, like like the mayor of Philadelphia. Like, if you're the mayor of Philadelphia, then you run this, you run the police department, and they enforce what laws mean more to you. See, that's where it's it's odd because they're not trying to solve the problem. They know how to. There's They're no not way, trying yeah. to. There's They're no trying way. to keep themselves in I mean, power. Can they not, hold on, but, can, but, hold on, but no, no. But hold on. Let's say, let's say Don Miller. I mean, an African American. So let's say, okay, the the voting the the voting block of Chicago is seventy per, inner city Chicago proper, not 
outlying, you know, because the city of Chicago has nothing to do with Schaumburg or Naperville or Cicero or any of these any, any of these outlying. They have their own police departments and own governmental systems. But the city of Chicago proper, you know, probably is 70, 30 African-American. So it's going to be an African-American that gets in there or a, a, a white very, very much liberal, snowflake, woke-ass white guy, which I think is the situation now. But what if Chicago would get a a brother up in there like Don Miller? African-American, but very conservative, and, you know, wants to come in through military ways and and really, really— Clamp, tough on cl- crime. clamp down on crime. You know, if you go into a jewelry store and you rob nine hundred and fifty dollars worth, I think in I think in 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 in, in New York and L A. and in San Francisco they have a threshold of yeah. if you, if if it's seven fifty or a thousand or whatever yeah, it is, like you can literally grand. go in there and pull off. Let's say in San Francisco it's a thousand. You could literally steal nine hundred dollars worth of jewelry, clothes, games, whatever. And walk straight out, and they can't do anything. Yeah, about that, my, my my sister lives in San Francisco, and she tells me that a Walgreens and CVS closes down like every week over there. So it's nine hundred fifty dollars in California, five hundred in Chicago. Mm. Okay, so so if you got Don Miller that's running for the mayor of Chicago, yeah, and he's like, I don't give a crap if you broke go in there and break in and steal a bottle of soda, I'm, we're arresting your ass. I mean, th- you could immediately make an impact. Uh, on you know the, the the mindset of of our city government, what, why aren't there more Don Millers? That because are they're getting, not electable that, in those cities. That, to, really? Yeah. Did, but I tell you that if you're slave, living in Chicago, you think they're going to vote for a guy on. who was banned if, from the NAACP? Probably not. If I'm a black guy, if I'm a black guy, and I'm trying to just work my ass off at a regular job, and I live in and I live in Chicago proper, which means I am the city of Chicago. I want my wife and my child to be able to go, to go down to the store and not worry about it getting robbed and not feel like they they might die. I don't want to. I don't want my. I don't want to. I don't want nineteen or twenty people getting shot each weekend. I want my police department going up and down the streets looking for bad guys because you know what? I'm not going to be on the streets doing stupid stuff. I'm going to be raising my family. We're going to be having dinner. My kids are hopefully going to be able to walk to and from school safely. And uh, I don't understand how any of that as the – are, are you saying that the average African-American that lives in Chicago is not a responsible man that wants good? Instead, he's some thug that wants to make ro- Robin, Robin the convenience store well, for $4.99 th- well, legal. Well, here's the thing. It's usually a package deal. So, yeah, they might be tougher on crime, and obviously that might be better for the community. But are they going to be giving out stipends and handouts and, well, you know? No, a lot of that – and I tell you that website that Don Miller – it's actually pretty interesting. But a lot of times, like, uh, the, the police chief – in uh, in Chicago wants to crack down on it, but it's the DAs, the governors, the mayors. Yeah, that are so, all so it's not just so, so yeah. Them. So you're saying okay, the mayor may want it, and he brings in the police chief to do it. Yep. And they start doing it, but they weren't able to get their type of thinking district attorney Mark Ober, and so Mark Ober is still one of those you know woke ass brothers, and he's not he's 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 like I'm not prosecuting them. So the good cops. And the great leaders can bring them in, but if they're not getting prosecuted, you're right, Lummy. Yeah, they get you're frustrated. Right. You're exactly right. We had a couple uh, Chicago PD that listened to the show that actually have moved down to Florida because they were so frustrated <laughs> with what was going on up there. This, this, this is what I'm going to show. I'm going to show. Yeah, that, I'm going to show. Um, we also have to break. We have to break real fast, okay. and then we're done. And then it's the Anna Anna Hummel show. I like Don. Did 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 everybody like Seth? Oh, yeah. Did you like Don Miller? Yeah, of course. Yeah. What is he going to say? No. <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, love me. Uh, Shannon Burke just sent me this text, and this is what I absolutely. This is what makes me hard. <laughs> so oh. he's <clears throat> so he's got a picture of us on T. Uh, here, I'll show it to you. Uh, here, Seth, can you see it? There's a there's a picture. Yes. There's a screenshot of somebody that's watching watching the show. Oh. And Shannon says, the Bagel King of Lakemont Avenue and Winter, Ca- Winter Park used to be huge monster show, mo- show, watch the monsters, now Bubba Army every morning. Ooh, send that to me. I'll post <clears throat> Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. The Bagel King, they used to watch the monsters. Not and, now, I. and now they're on us. Bitch, we're killing in Orlando. Plus, we got a Don Miller kicker. Coolest black guy known to man. That's right. Love him. <laughs> 
Yes, this is a daily telethon. We gotta keep the lights on somehow. So don't forget PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. All at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Bubba the Love Sponge. We'll be back after this. And then put it on our X, okay? Ba- uh, Bagel King used to watch the monsters. Now they want you to kind of fuck around, you know? Yeah. I don't, it's on our Instagram or you want me to put it on our Instagram? Put it on every fucking thing known to man. No, I mean, what did you tell me? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, it, it's coming your way. Okay. Oh, it's already there. I'll, I'll tell you that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those, here, those, that, and you know, I'm not a pussy. But that, I think that, I think that, that protein shake, because I've been fasting so much and stuff, I think it kind of shot, kind of gave me a little stomach ache. It gives, can, it gives you, you a stomach ache, Bobby. You, ever take, you, you just have to work through it, Bobby. Eat something Bobby. and gives Bobby. you like a little tummy ache, because it's kind of like you're not used yeah. to it. Cause that's why I only, that's why I have the same thing you eat every day. Macho stopped drinking it because he can't, he can't start to get the shits out of it. Yeah, yeah, I feel re- like, I feel like it's, I feel like it's so rich, full of, them not trying to be sugary, that it kind of, up, you know, kind of yippy you a little oh, you're bit. gonna take some nice big logs. What? You're gonna take some nice big logs here pretty soon. Oh my god. They put a lot of fiber in it. Oh. Oh shit. shit. Remember the last time? You're gonna be shitting yourself silly, but you're gonna lose a lot of weight. That's how it keeps you healthy. Okay, thanks. <laughs> me, me fucking continuing my. I got off my fast yesterday and I fucking fucked up. What do you mean? What did you do? I just fucked up. I Tell ate, me, Boobie. I ate. I last night I ate. I ate a little snack. What's a little snack? Because I have a feeling four, it's not four, little at all. Four cookies <laughs> at five o'clock, and then I'm like, fuck it. So then I got up for breakfast, and usually I don't eat at breakfast. I don't. I just have my. At like two in the morning or whatever. No, at two. No, I didn't go to the gym. I blew through my two thirty. My I blew through my two thirty alarm. Woke up at four ten, and then fucking ate a big a big breakfast. Like what? Two eggs, um, some hash browns. That's it. Two eggs and okay, and two, and two pieces of toast. Okay. Well, a piece of toast cut in half, so one okay. piece of toast. Yeah. And then, um, and so and then now the shake, and I'm fucking tore up right now. So I got to reset. You at, feel a gurgling? I, I feel. I almost feel like making myself throw up. Oh stop! Did you eat drink the whole thing? Drink, yeah, I ate drink. the whole fucking shake. Now I feel like I'm gonna have four hundred beds. Thank you. <laughs> that shit's heavy, man. So I'm. Yeah, it's heavy. So I'm gonna now. I gotta reset my fast at noon today. <clears throat> this is why I think it's good to zoom in for one ninety nine tonight. Yeah, I mean, I really, I really, I really, really appreciate you know you trying to work that angle, but I, I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't going to fucking happen. Well, I don't want to catch your, st- I don't want to catch your heavy stomach. Well, then don't show up. You won't. You, we don't need you really that much, to be honest. I'd like you. to show up virtually. That's the wave of the future. Well, like if court. if you <laughs> if you don't show up um, here. Physically, you're not going to get paid. You always get kind of sleepy, like around 9.30. Mm-hmm. He likes doing a countdown as soon as the show starts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Only an hour and 46 minutes. We're almost out of here. <laughs> that, that last 37 minutes really goes slow, though. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. Time does seem to go a little slower over there. I like it when you're trying to get the party atmosphere up, but you tell everyone you're having a horrible time. <laughs> I'm so fucking tired. What's well, up, the macho to keep the fucking to keep the vibes strong tonight? Right. Yeah. Macho I'm trying to. Say you will. I'm trying to. Um. He still has. He's still dealing with the Delt thing. I mean, he's got to get that out of his head to, to have you know, good good spin tonight, whatever it's called. Yeah. It's I set. To, I used to be a DJ. Macho. You're 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 the understudy. No, I'm not. You know his equipment blows. You know all of a sudden you run in there with the laptop. No, thank you. Bagel King of what? Well, there's a Castleberry, Lake Mary, and uh, Winter Park. I'm finding out from Shannon. I got it. Winter Do you think Park. they'll send us some bagels? I think we can go get some. I like bagels. That's where Baba's next food review should be. Is it a little far away? So, yeah. <laughs> we should hit the Orlando eateries, though. Let them know oh, that'd be fucking here. awesome. But there's nothing I love more than a fucking bagel. <gasps> 
Like a egg and cheese bagel. So good. Everything bagel with some schmear. So good. Where the fuck is Castleberry? I've never even heard of that place. Uh, I used to go to school there. Is it? It's obviously close to Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 in Orlando. They got chunky Nova schmear. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Uh, lock schmear. No, Chunky Nova. Nova's locks. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I don't... Yeah, I think it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you're probably right. I think it's a kind of locks. They got Nutella, PB&J, cinnamon sugar, honey butter. Garlic herb schmear. Oh, that's that's what I like. (laughs) You got snacks here tonight, or you got to bring your own kind of... For your own deal. There's gonna be I'm, cakes, I'm, I'm, Seth. I'm, I'm really. I, it's Friday, buddy. I'm just gonna be dead honest with you. It's Friday. I'm exhausted from working all week and dealing with your nonsense. Me too. So if I, I mean, if we just stop working me about the bubble 199 and let me just uh, say goodbye and leave without having be accosted by you, I'd certainly appreciate that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Seth will be king. <laughs> All the times Hulk Hogan or Tucker Carlson called in. We have it all for you on BubbaArmyHQ.com. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Oh, look at the time, my friends. We short spaced you yet again. Sorry, Don. Somebody was on. I don't know who the hell would this be. I'm like, I literally got one minute. Who's this? Hi, quickly. Hmm. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> Hello, yeah, you got to be real. You got to be super quick about it. I'm way, I'm way late. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I was uh, prosecuted in the state of Florida for a mere thirty-six cents to people in the South. Yep, whatever you just said. Can't. Did any? I mean, listen. I know that I'm getting old and stuff, but could anybody understand what he no. just said? I think he said something about he was being prosecuted in the state of Florida. That's about it. Well, you, I've been prosecuted four times, buddy. I'm four and <laughs> Don Miller's next. We'll see ya. <laughs> Thanks for letting me finish. You've been listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Starring me, Bubba the Love Sponge. Co-host and show historian, Lummox. Co-host, Anna Hummel. Co-host, Dr. Dan Diaco Esquire of Council. Co-host, J. Diaco Esquire, the Spitting Cobra of Council. Rhett, the Filthy Ginger video editor. Yeah, back here wearing sh- up. It's Mini Macho. The BRN agent, Thomas Buttoned Up Bean. And for everything else, go to thebubbaarmy.com. Now, time for the legal disclaimer. Exactly. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this show without express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. We must dissuade him of this delusion. Until next time, always remember. I'll repeat hello. I'm back.